My name is Eric Pasoja. Insert disclaimer here. I'm speaking for myself. Opinions expressed here do not necessarily reflect the opinions of sag after membership and leadership. This is an informational event. My name is Eric Pasoja, and I'm an actor. Acting is my first love. I'm a sag after actor. I'm a vested 25 year sag after actor, and I'm proud of it. Acting is my passion, and I love performers. To give you a little context of this discussion. My day job in New York City was designing presentation graphics and patent flows for Citibank's electronic monetary system under Sholem Rosen. And there I learned about digital currency. It was very early on in the process in the 90s. I even needed a handprint to get into my office. And I really learned what money is and I understood how it works from my boss, Sholem Rosen. When I moved to Los Angeles, I founded Seventh Planet Inc. I'm the president, creative director, and chief architect. We design boutique to mid-sized websites from site goals to site architecture, project management, design, coding, launch, email campaigns, social media, social media organic and paid, Google AdWords, Google SEO, SEM, text campaigns. We have teams here in Los Angeles, in Ukraine, um, Romania, Philippines, and India. And I've been an AI nerd ever since I was a little kid. My mother was an aeronautical engineer during the space age, and she decided to live her dream, quit that job, who quits that kind of thing, and become an internist, because that was truly what she wanted to do. My father is a quantum physicist. In fact, he's 50 feet from me right now in the guest house, and he's working on his magnum opus. He's 82 years old, and we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. I want to express to you my, my commitment, just so you understand where I'm coming from tonight. My commitment on behalf of our great union is to protect, manage, and monetize the digital identities of 170,000 SAG after performers at the dawn of artificial intelligence. Now, since we're all performers, let's have some fun, because fun is cool. Guys, I'm gonna count to three, and if you feel uncomfortable saying this, turn your camera off. You don't even have to say it. Count of three, because before legislation is a declaration, I want you to say, if you want, my digital identity is mine. How does that feel to say? We are making a declaration tonight. And I'm looking at a lot of people in this room, 203 people. On the count of three, one, two, three. My digital identity is mine. Feel that. We have to make that declaration. I'm going to start a slide show now. I've heard a lot of people speak about fear at the dawn of AI, and I completely understand it. People are worried about companies taking our digital identities. I started doing this because Activision stole from me. In 2014, while I was at Debtors Anonymous with a nine-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son, I booked Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. 
And I knew that a few thousand dollars was going to come in and pay the rent and take care of my family. I'm not a star. As we all say, not yet. In 2014, I was hired as an actor. I got to work with a two-time Oscar-winning actor as a Belgian geneticist named Doc. We did performance capture on the original Avatar set. Can I just tell you what it's like to show up on the Avatar set and get all dotted up because that's what we did back then and people were all milling about. And after we got ready, they said, okay, we're gonna sign the contracts now. Chung, and it, we didn't have VeriSign or DigiSign or, oh boy, there goes my tech day. I signed what I thought to be a sag after contract that was gonna take care of me. After the game came out, a friend called me and said, hey, Eric, my son just shot you. I said, what? Turns out Activision had taken my face from performance capture and put it on a PVP player. So I, I was walking around shooting people, shooting children. The last thing children saw was my face shooting at them and they were shooting at me. I don't let my children play these games because I believe we need to do away with violence in this world instead of perpetuating even fantasy. They did not have my informed consent. Activision didn't pay me a dime more and they charged an additional monthly fee for this P PVP game. Activision made more than a billion dollars on this game. In 2014, it was a number one entertainment property of the year. The game's total earnings were more than Taylor Swift's 1989, Disney's Frozen, and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy combined. I earned two scan fees and my session fees. Completely legal. Because of the abusive contracts that we signed. I've heard a lot of SAG members, SAG after member concerns. What happens if my scan is stolen? What if it's sold unlawfully, pirated, used without my consent? Why can they force us to consent to scan as a condition of hire? Is every scan training our replacements down the road? A digital replica being done of a star? Will they even need stunt people anymore? The studios will never honor our contractual agreements, protections. 48 hours may not be enough time to review. Again, our contracts must have all of the nuanced details. I hear you. I've been talking on the picket lines. I've been making phone calls. I'm working tirelessly about on this. And I want you to understand where AI is now and how to answer these questions. I think there is a solution for our fears. I hope by the end of this, we can shift our conversation from they're gonna take me, they're gonna use me forever. I'm never gonna work again. I'm gonna be fed into generative AI to please scan me please, I'm digitally watermarked, just use my digital identity as much as possible because it's being transferred to the blockchain so I can collect residuals like we used to when we did network commercials. Right now we're a mess. And I wanna talk about AI with you because I don't think we've really covered AI in, in the question and answer sessions and I'm a nerd. I just want to talk about the nature of AI. There's narrow and weak AI, and it's what we've been using. It's actually been around since the 50s. It's very specific. You tell it what to do. It doesn't adapt. It's very explicit, the programming. And we see it all the time. ATMs, chess programs, uh, even automated cars, traffic lights, email filtering, your phone, Siri and Alexa. Notice how dumb they are? Not for long. And we also have AI and Hollywood effects. Rotoscoping background removal, facial recognition, replacement, crowd sim, de-aging, aging effects, weather. And there's a new kind of AI that's actually been around a long time. It's called generative AI. It's been around since the 60s. There's a program, Eliza, who would be your therapist. When I was uh, a kid, uh, by the way, I just want to tell you, uh, my family computer was a 9845C, Hewlett Packard. It had 4,000 colors and a 13-inch screen. I learned computer graphics on that. And I used to play with Lisp when I was a little kid. It was one of the first AI programming languages. The, the thing about generative AI is things that aren't programmed can still be generated. It can produce, produce new, although whether it's new or whether it's derivative is really up in the air. Original content, it's not up in the air. It's actually a fact. It's derivative. 
We'll talk about that later. It adapts and learns from new data, deep learning. And there's been this huge explosive growth, which we're going to explain soon. Large language models, scaling, advanced training. We've had computational power increase, and that's also going to be discussed. It's got broadening applications. It's not just pictures. It's not just chat. And it's being commercialized. Chat GPT and OpenAI now are able to use API calls. Generative AI is a real, is a real conversation here. And if you look in the handout, there is a link to it. Uh, this article from uh, an online magazine. I'm not gonna explain it in detail. We can talk about it later, but just understand that it just takes lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of pictures. Cat, 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 10,000 and they go cat. I put another one in, go cat, go cat, go cat. And you see, you see the white image on the right. It takes the cat and it boils it down to random noise, random noise, random noise, random noise. And then it uses words association to build things back up from random noise to images. ChatGPT works in a similar way, but it uses language in the same way. Let's talk about artificial general intelligence. This is what scientists have been talking about for a long time. Uh, a gentleman named Ben Gertzel, whom I've had the pleasure of speaking with on the phone, he is the CEO of Singularity Net, and uh, he's been talking a lot about this lately. If you're an AI nerd like I am, you probably read this book as a kid, or these books as a kid. Isaac Asimov started writing uh, uh, about artificial intelligence in 1940 with a short story named Robbie. And then he came out with iRobot and a whole bunch of other books that followed an idea, a dream he had of ethical AI. Every robot in his books had a positronic brain. And before that brain was put in its skull, it had to have programmed the three laws of robotics. The first law was a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. A robot had to protect human life. The second law is a robot had to obey the orders you gave it unless it conflicts with preserving a human life. And the third law is a robot must protect itself as long as it doesn't conf conflict with obeying the orders of a human, a human could tell it to just leap off a cliff or hurt a human being. And this is where we are today. The first law of robotics, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. It's November 28th. This was a week ago. This is more like Daniel Suarez's Kill Decision. It's a really good science fiction book about autonomous AI being hijacked and exhibiting swarm behavior. This is the direction this is going. Don't worry. We're having a conversation here. This book I started reading, I happen to have been gigging in Vegas at Harrah's and I got the book, The Age of Spiritual Machines, because you have so much time when you're doing stand-up in Vegas. And I just, I just devoured this book. And it's basically, let me tell you a little bit about Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil, as a young man, was on a talk show for programming a computer how to compose music. As he got older, he continued with his inventions. And he invented the modern synthesizer for Stevie Wonder. You may see on keyboards, Kurzweil, that is he. He's had a long life as an inventor, as a longevity specialist. And if you're an AI nerd like I am, you've read at least one of these two books, The Age of Spiritual Machines and The Singularity is Near. Ray Kurzweil talks about the exponential growth in technology. It's, it's moving faster and faster and faster. James Glake wrote a great book called FSTR, talking about the speed at, things, at which things are happening. We used to write a letter. It'd take days to get there. We'd have days to respond. Now we have email and it moves so quickly. But if you don't send back an email right away, people going, where is it? We used to have to walk up bevies of staircases in order to go uh, to high places in a building. Now we push an elevator button. An elevator takes us up. 
We're right. If the elevator makes us wait more than 30 seconds, we're pressing that button again. Things are getting faster and we're expecting it. There will be a singularity event according to Ray Kurzweil. And if you're an AI nerd or an AI programmer or an AI aficionado, you've talked a lot about the singularity. I'd like to clear your idea of the singularity to specifically talk about the technological singularity, super intelligence. There will become a time when our technological growth becomes uncontrollable and reversible. And the way Kurzweil talks about this is we really have two things that might happen. As human beings, we've been around for how long? Very long time. We could trace it back to our ancestors. We can just, let's just, I think 100,000 years. I'd like to say here that I may say things today that are wrong, that are not absolutely perfect. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I love to be corrected. I love to fix things and get better. We'll just say 100,000 years. Do you think we have 100,000 more years than where we're going? We do have an alternative. The way things are speeding up, either the singularity is going to happen or we're going to be cockroaches on this planet. I think it's actually going to be the first one if we do it right. When I say do it right, we're going to move forward with that. As computers become more and more intelligent, they're going to have recursive self-improvement. There's going to be an exponential increase in intelligence. It's going to fundamentally change life and society breakthroughs. We have no idea how society would be transformed. And at some point, there will be a fusion of human and machine intelligence. There are a lot of benefits there in healthcare, in longevity, in communication. We may even be able to travel interstellar distances because we'll have computers figuring this all out. We may even be able to live in space. This is my rendering of the technological singularity graph. Ray Kurzweil in The Singularity is Near in 2006 posited that the, we would reach, the computers would reach human intelligence at the singularity in the year 2035. See on the left side where it says calculations per second per constant dollar. The price of a transistor is factored into this. However, he's got a new book coming out in 2024. You can find it on Amazon. All these links are on the provided sheet. And I'll put it in after this so that uh, you can have it for the questions in the chat and for posterity and to look for yourself. That book is coming out in 2024 and I can't wait to read it, but take a look. He predicted 2029. And here we are at 2023, six years from now, the potential technological singularity. And it's based on Moore's law. Gordon Moore said the number of transistors on a microchip doubles every two years. It gets faster and faster and faster. And in 1900, we, we, we didn't even have microprocessors for sure. We had the analytical engine. And if you look at the chart of this, we, we are approaching some kind of incredible knee point, which is what it's called. And I have to tell you, ah, Ben Gertzel, he said 2026. Well, Anybody can have authority and wear a hat like this. I got to listen to him. Now, I'm going to read this to you. I would say now three to eight years is my take. And he said this in November. And if you look in the handout, there's an article related. And the reason is partly that large language models like Meta's Llama 2 and OpenAI's GPT-4 help and are genuine progress. The very models, the generative AI models that have been created are hurtling us toward the singularity, maybe even as soon as three years, three to eight years. I'd like to talk about current global issues in relation to that. The Future of Life Institute in 2015 published an open letter that said, pause giant AI experiments. Now the, the link is in the handout. I've noticed that they update the date quite often. You won't see 2015, you'll see 2023, because now they're saying, please pause GPT-4. This was signed by thousands and thousands of people in the tech business. It was signed by Elon Musk, Steve, Wa the Waz. It was signed by Andrew Yang, former presidential candidate. Yoshua Bengio, Stuart Russell, Stephen Hawking. They said, stop, stop. Stop right now until we figure this out. It was ignored. Generative AI went forward.
and we have Elon Musk and Sam Altman. The same year Elon Musk signed that document, the open letter to stop the proliferation of generative AI, they founded OpenAI together. It was a nonprofit research lab. It was to benefit humanity as a whole, unconstrained by a need to generate financial return. This year, as we saw from the news, oh, before that, uh, Elon Musk left. Some say he was disgusted with the whole situation. Some said one day he might buy Twitter. The point is, Elon Musk didn't like what he was doing, but Sam Altman continued. This year, there was Sam Altman, and then he got fired. Remember that? It happened a couple of weeks ago. And then he was brought back. OpenAI, which was founded to benefit humanity as a whole, unconstrained by a need to generate financial return, now is seeking valuation at 90 billion dollars. The board is being restructured. And if you think our wonderful negotiating committee and our leadership is tight-lipped about contracts, et cetera, you should imagine what it's like at the billionaire level, at a corporate level when NDAs are signed. Nobody really knows all the details, but there's gonna be a new board and there's been a, a personnel shift. And they may even leave a board seat open for Microsoft. I'd like to take a moment to talk about Microsoft. Remember I was talking about the Activision game? They have my digital identity. And they have a forever contract. A few weeks ago, it's a month ago, a couple months ago, Microsoft bought Activision. Microsoft now owns Activision, Xbox, and a potential seat at OpenAI. Let's just be clear. In 2001, the U.S. found Microsoft Corporation guilty of antitrust. The New York Times article on November 22nd said AI belongs to the capitalists now after that shift, after Sam Altman came back. That article is also linked in the handout. I want to talk for a minute about stealing. Stealing. I have a deep respect for writers. I don't know if there's anything on the planet harder than writing a screenplay. It's probably why there are only 11,000 members in the WGA. It's a not an easy thing to do to write a good script. Scripts were stolen, books were stolen, great novels were stolen, not so great novels were stolen, nonfiction books were stolen, artwork, 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 cats fed in, Van Gogh fed in, H.R. Uh, Geiger fed in. It's being happened with music as well. Remember how I talked earlier about how LLMs accelerated generative AI? It was generated by stealing people's content. I have some action for you. If you care about your digital identity, clearview.ai was written about it in New York Times reporter, Kashmir's Hill, your, your, your face belongs to us. I wanna show you something. In September of this year, I delisted myself. You can see that link at the bottom. I sent my driver's license to that company and said, delist me and send me everything you have. Let's see if I can pull this down on your screen or not. Let's see. This is what they sent me back. It's 39 pages long. This is what they scraped off the internet. This is my digital identity right here. Some of these pictures, I don't even know where they came from. Right here is me and Charmed in the year 2000. It goes on and on and on and on. So now I'd like to show you guys a demo. 
There are a lot of things that have been talked about. What if they scan me? Don't scan me. Don't scan me. Don't scan me. I get that. I'm going to take a look at a C-graph link. Let me find it for you. Right here. We talk about being scanned. And I understand that we are talking about this contract, which is film and television. And they're dealing with 4K files or sometimes even bigger. Uh, they're dealing with one terabyte scan files. But I want you to see how easy it is now with NVIDIA's new technology to scan your face. You see the guy on the left, the person on the left? That's his input. The person in the middle is the dynamically built output from his face. He's moving that output with his hand. And on the right is a depth map. He puts on headphones and it's right there. This is real time. So you see there's a user, an image, a 3D output, and a phone. It's an iPhone. That's all it takes. Generative AI uses image blending. I created this in mid-journey. The prompt was a beautiful female actor drinking coffee in a cafe looking directly at camera. Actually, let's go back. I have a challenge for you. This particular piece of AI art was generated from three famous people. I mean, really famous. You look at them, be like, oh, people talk about what if I recognize myself in a synth? She was made from three people. And guess who she is? We'll get back to her later. I want to show you now what's happening in Interactive. Now, you guys have to be aware, Interactive is being negotiated right now as we speak. While we're clamoring about our film and theatrical contract, Interactive stole my digital identity, and the levels of the demo they're at right now is staggering. I'm going to show you a demo right here of what they can do now with AI in real time. This is a person talking into his microphone. Hey, Jen, how are you? Unfortunately, not so good. How come? I'm worried about the crime around here. It's gotten bad lately. My ramen shop got caught in the crossfire. Can I help? If you want to do something about this, I have heard rumors that the powerful crime lord... I'm going to show you one more thing. In relation to this, this is the this is the person who operates him. The models are trained to provide responses aligned with particular attributes, ranging from humor to creativity to toxicity. Let me show you. Hi, Jen. How's your ramen business going? It's slow these days. Why do you think that is? Is your ramen any good? I think it is. I don't know why it's slow. Not the most insightful answer. Let's increase his helpfulness. So what I've shown you guys right now is what I call the hell scenario. Let me start showing you the heaven scenario. Digital identity legislation. I want you to understand that people in sag after have been working tirelessly to protect your digital rights here. Let's take a look right now at what's going on with federal legislation in the White House. On October 30th, 2023, President Biden issued an executive order on the safe, secure, and trustworthy development and use of artificial intelligence. Identity was used seven times, but no mention of digital identity. Like was, likeness was used zero time and times, and quite frankly, our nation and the world have other concerns. Biotechnology, cybersecurity, critical infrastructure, mention of watermarking two times. And I'd like to go back to this, and I'd like to give a shout out to Eric Nicolaisen from Portland. He submitted sag after resolution 011, which requires denoting if something is AI, 
And the president is also making an executive order on that. I believe that for sag after denoting AI isn't specific enough. Specific details means the performer gets paid. I think I like it better with the thumbnails on the left, so I'm shifting. There has been some congressional legislation. If you go to the Brennan Center for Justice Artificial Intelligence Tracker, uh, which has a link in the handout, there is some AI legislation currently on the table. There's a Deepfakes Accountability Act that doesn't really uh, deal with uh, digital identities. There's an advisory, there's My Body, My Data, which is healthcare related, but still, I'm not yet seeing. Uh, anything for identity or likeness, but I heard back from Jeff Bennett, our chief counsel today. He said state bills will in be introduced when sessions start in January, 2024. Tennessee will have a proposal to add voice to the right of publicity bill. Now, let me make this clear. We have, a, we have an issue with fair use, which is first amendment and, and right of publicity. Right of publicity is state and fair use is federal. So Tennessee is gonna add right now. New York will have a version of AB 459 right now. And let's talk about AB 459 because this is happening in our state legislation. I apologize here. California state legislation. And this was actually pushed forward and helped by our chief counsel, Jeff Bennett and others. It's called the Deep Fake Act. It's an active bill. It prevents the creation of digital rep, uh, replicas of your voice or likeness. It, it says that it must be clearly defined and consensually agreed upon. And if a provision in, in any agreement meets all of these conditions, creation and use of a digital replica by GAI does not clearly define in detail all the uses of the, of the digital replica. Now notice on the, on the top right, our informed consent clause requires this. It's hand in hand with this bill. And if a person is also not represented by legal counsel or a labor, labor union, then the state will not support the contract. They can refuse it. And thus sag afters informed consent clause. Now I wanna just say one thing about it. A lot of people are worried about the consent articles because there's only, it says informed consent and people want specifics. But I just want you to understand, I submitted a resolution because of that video game that stole my likeness. Take all the clauses out, take it out, take them all out. I want no clauses, and then we build the clauses. Duncan Crabtree Ireland, our chief negotiator, said that he left it that way on purpose. And I think I understand why. Because it's our job and the job of our reps, whose job it is to work our contracts. And it's the job of of, of SAG-AFTRA, and it's the job of the producers to create a matrix of consent clauses that apply to us. Talk to your agents, say, let's create some consent clauses. Let's crowdsource it. Let's talk with our union. Let's stop waiting to be spoon-fed what we are willing to do for our careers and protect ourselves. If there's nudity, I wanna know ahead of time, that should be a clause. If I'm gonna shoot at someone, there should be a clause. Create them, create them, create them, create them. Build them. I'm not going to wait for Duncan Crabtree Island or Jeff Bennett or anybody's associates to create it for me. We have the opportunity here to lead. So this is why I care so much about it, because those empty consent clauses were done on purpose. I want to talk a little bit. I also, by the way, the House has a version of the No Fakes Act, which Jeff Bennett told me about today. So this no fakes act that's in California is also going to the House of Representatives to make sure that people can't give you usurious clauses and steal your digital identity. I also wanna talk about White House's watermarking legislation. So I searched through here for watermarking, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Our president has mandated within 240 days, I believe it was of October 30th, to identify the existing standards, tools, methods, and practices of authenticating content and tracking its provenance, labeling synthetic content with watermarking, detecting it, preventing generative AI from doing all sorts of terrible things. Now, I want to, you guys to understand that our digital rights are very, very important, but our federal government has a lot to handle. 
They're dealing with drone law. They're dealing with bioweapons. They're dealing with protecting our servers from foreign agents at this point. So they have a lot to talk about and they're looking for digital watermarking standards which have not been made yet. People don't know what's happening. I've been asked so many times, why don't you have AI experts on here? Well, where are the AI experts? I say we need to slow down and focus on this contract, film, theatrical, and then think forward. I think AI experts need to come into this. And this is why I want to bring up the topic of digital watermarking. You've all seen it on your Getty images on iStock Photo. You can watermark things so that they can't be used or you can trace them back. Digital watermarking is a little bit different. I like to use the analogy of a blanket. So if you see fabric here and you fuse it together, imagine that, that, that this generated AI image was a human being, which is not, but let's pretend it was, okay? And an invisible security thread is woven into the very fabric. So if you were to shine a set, some kind of sensor or detection software at it, it would kind of look like that black light that the police use in the, in the TV shows. So it's part of that image permanently. I like to think of it like a blender as well. Imagine a blender full of fruit and you put all your great stuff, you put your kale in there and your, your vegan yogurt and everything else. And you just put a pinch of arrowroot in it, just a pinch of arrowroot, it's flavorless. And then you go, now try to take that arrowroot out. That's what digital watermarking is. Now that we talk about digital watermarking, have you figured out who she is yet? Whitney Houston, Joe Biden, and Denzel Washington. It's very easy to combine your face, voice, and movement. AI combines it in real time. Using digital watermarking, which we will explain, allows all three watermarks to end up on a synth. That means if your SAG after ID is embedded on your digital watermark, as well as your contract rules, your consent clauses, and how much your token is valuated, we can create a plan. Now, I'd like to introduce our amazing panel because I want to discuss this among us, among some of the, the, the just the most wonderful Hollywood effects producers uh, that are out there. I have to tell you, I'm very, very sorry, but Jackie Barnbrook has COVID and she couldn't make it today. Um, I'm going to try to schedule another one with her. And I'm hoping Robert Niederhurst comes because he may join us. I know a lot of people have spoken with him before. And we specifically discussed a watermarking a process for post-production. And I think why post-production is, is, is so important is because uh, there's a lot of issues ingesting data, uh, losing, losing metadata. And if we come up with a watermarking standard for a whole industry, both sides can make money and save money. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, my friend, uh, first Martin Hall. Martin and I work together to support a student filmmaker who is just quite a visionary. And Martin uh, did the, the visual effects, the previs. He's a, a two-time Emmy Award winner for John Adams and American Horror Story Freak Show. Uh, he serves as the in-house supervisor, VFX supervisor for CBF v, uh, VFX Paramount. He helms Paramount Plus and other studio level content on that plane. He was the visual effects supervisor for the Netflix feature Bird Box Barcelona. And in 2015, 2015, he was the visual effects supervisor on AMC's Into the Badlands. And he took the show from pre-production to post-delivery, and he also unit directing, directed principal talent. Welcome, Martin. Um, Hello. Uh, and Remington, uh, Remington Scott is here with us uh, from Hyper Real. Remington, I'm going to let you take it away. Thanks. Um, Martin, do you want to go first, and then I? What was the? What was the? Which I no, go, go ahead. And you, you kick it off. For me. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and thanks everyone here tonight. And uh, you know, this is a great honor, Eric. Thanks for inviting me to be a part of your panel, and and to be here with Martin and yourself, and to be able to have an opportunity to talk to SAG AFTRA members here about AI and digital identity. This is definitely a subject that um, we should all be very, um, and we should learn more about. And, um, and I'll do my best here to, to give you some examples from, from my career. 
Um, so with that, uh, I'll share my screen and um, I promise I will be much shorter. Uh, Eric really went into a lot of detail here, but I will just um, um, get started here. Okay. Um, sorry. Maestro, do you have any tips? I'll try that again. We should there we go. see my screen now. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. And this is my digital identity. Are you seeing um, my image up right now? Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, well, this is uh, this is a a a, um, a three D digital version of myself. This is my digital identity. Um, you know. We, to define a little bit of this, uh, there's a whole spectrum when people talk about digital identities, we're gonna talk about uh, digital doubles or avatars. Uh, when you're using the term an avatar, it's a very broad term. It could be, you know, the whole spectrum of avatar on one side is a caricature of a human. And then on the other side of the spectrum is a hyper real digital human. And so um, that's where my background has been in creating these hyper-realistic uh, digital identities for talent. And you're seeing my identity here in real time in a video game engine. Um, so think of this as virtual production on steroids. Uh, and so this is an asset that can be used uh, in any virtual or digital ecosystem. Um, and just really briefly, I'll just go into a little on my background here. Um, in the early 1990s, I was one of a handful of people that first identified motion capture when it was in a medical lab. And we took motion capture from the lab, we brought it into the entertainment space, and uh, we created the first motion capture studio in the world dedicated to entertainment. Uh, we were, you know, the first, it was at a game company called Acclaim. And we were the first people to see and interact with realistic moving digital humans. Um, and uh, you know, I have, I've had the opportunity to bring that technology as a platform into the, inter into the interactive space, but also into the feature film space where uh, I was a motion capture director on the first feature film uh, to be theatrically released and to have principal digital humans for the film. Uh, but you might know me a little bit better for the work I did on Lord of the Rings. I oversaw um, the creation of Gollum. I was the uh, performance capture supervisor at Weta Digital, Peter Jackson's um, visual effects studio. And I had set up the performance capture pipeline there at Weta. And, uh, and this is, uh, you know, we were talking um, to Gollum and Gollum was talking back to us in real time, as you can see here, um, driven by Andy Serkis. And uh, uh, you know, this has been the uh, primary system that Weta has been using uh, to create their performance uh, capture animations for feature films that they've been uh, working on, um, you know, over the, the decades since. Um, and uh, and also uh, very fortunate to have been a computer graphics supervisor at Sony Pictures. Uh, what you're seeing here is. Uh, the digital uh, recreation of Tobey Maguire for the uh, Spider-Man 2 film. And uh, what you're looking at here is, um, you know, our team was the first team to identify a technology called LightStage, which was an academic and research production uh, project at the University of Southern California. And uh, we took the technology and brought it into film and we were, you know, we created the first um, photoreal digital doubles uh, in film uh, for Spider-Man 2. And this is another movie that won an Academy Award for the visual effects uh, that we contributed to. 
So um, a little bit um, just, you know, on, on my background is I've been doing this for decades and building digital uh, doubles and, um, and identities for um, talent globally uh, that are used on entertainment products. And these um, identities are fundamentally being used as extensions of talent. So they have like a mezzanine level sidecar that they can go into productions with that they own. And, and these uh, new identities are now assets uh, that they are able to um, move into productions and license this. We work across the spectrum of, of building these, these identities and the infrastructure to support them uh, for talent at their current age, talent that wants to be de-aged, and for estates that are looking to um, you know, recreate uh, talent or, or you know, in that, that um, are deceased and they're controlling those. Uh, we also, uh, you know, the, there's corporations that are coming out that want to do um, this type of thing where they have synthetic characters. So we're seeing all of this moving forward. And, and you know, I hope that tonight I can give you some insight on what we're seeing as the trajectory and the momentum and give you guys a sense of what you can do uh, to help protect your identity and be able to monetize and the opportunities for you to be able to use uh, AI and be able to use that as a scalable new uh, technology uh, for you. So we can talk a little bit about that, um, but I will stop sharing right now. So, um, you know, we can, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just um, mention a couple things here before uh, I pass it on to Martin. And I, I don't want to go in too much here about this right off the bat. I think we can have a great conversation here about this. But um, what we're seeing now, potentially, as Eric has said, is a an event in which AI is about to create a Napster level um, issue for the entertainment industry and the film industry. And when I say this as a Napster level event, I'm talking about what happened to the music industry and the, um, the business around the music industry, which was a, 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 a business that was um, a very strong uh, business. Artists were building product, product was created. It was sold through infrastructure like stores and there was models for how people were, were able to earn out and be able to, 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 to make a living doing this. And then Napster came in and took all of that and put it out online where anyone can uh, mm. copy this, uh, you know, and take this music without paying for it. So in the film industry, we're seeing that where all of this IP that has been created through the many years is being put into generative AI infrastructures. And we're going to start seeing if it doesn't, if we don't take a, um, a, a very positive um, action on, on this, uh, what we're going to see is effectively the, all of the film industry and the IP going out to generative AI user generated content without um, any monetization opportunities for the people that were participating in it from both studio sides as well as talent. Um, so um, that's the bad news. Um, the good news is um, there's still, there's ways around this that I think um, we're still, um, you know, SAG-AFTRA has been working on the contracts and building up some very um, protective uh, infrastructure for you guys. And now there's uh, more technology around that to be able to help you guys, um, you know, protect your identities and monetize those. We'll talk into it a little bit more, but I didn't want to take up too much on my introduction there. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Remington. You know, uh, Martin, uh, you you deal with previs and you deal with production and you deal with post-production. Um, I have to ask you, because, because you work in conjunction with the studio's infrastructure, really. What do you find that are the most challenging things? Specifically, I'm going to move this over to film and television a little bit. What are the most challenging things you experience when you ingest data, when you move data from process to process? Because from what I, what I understand 
is when you take something out of camera, or you take something out of photogrammetry or a scan. And by the way, everybody, just so you know, I know we talk about going to a scanner, but if they record two minutes of your voice, that is also scanning you because they can feed that into generative AI. Uh, uh, Martin, w w when, you have, uh, when you have someone's digital identity, what are your biggest challenges? Same thing, my disclaimer, I'm, not, I'm speaking for myself and not studios or companies I work for, and of course, uh, any other uh, VES or any other agency. But um, no, I think, I mean, the good, the good news is, as was stated previously, a lot of this data, obviously, intentionally going moving forward, is if you scan, if you scan somebody, it's pretty much in a pretty dang tight uh, security system, right? It's air gapped, it's unto itself. Um, you know, there are ways to use blockchain technology to uh, encrypt that kind of technology and that you know those kind of models and assets. I think the bigger bugaboo that is getting conflated here is that AI is being extrapolated into like, oh, a scanning technology or shooting somebody on a green screen, you know, where that, the, the scarier part is kind of like you just mentioned, boy, you know, voice, voice scan analysis that could be done by, by nefarious means already. So we're already seeing cases of that happen. So the police are like washing their hands of it. We can't deal with it. And, you know, so it's going to be, it, it, you know, Identity theft is an issue for not just actors, for everybody, right? So it's, it's, it is a big issue. Obviously, with our, our situation, we're going into an agreement. You know, producers are going into agreements with actors. And, of course, everyone should be in full you know, transparency and, know, and negotiate your own terms. Absolutely. You know, we don't have a dog in this fight. We're, you know, in an ideal world trying to use actors as much as possible. And if it's a set of utilizing background talent, we'll try to feature as much as possible background talent for all that it has to offer and the performances that we love, you know, if the job or the, uh, the scope of the shot entails a huge volume of people, then at that point we would lean into utilizing a, you know, rows and rows of, uh, of plate photography, uh, green screen and or a digital uh, body double. But, you know, I think those are pretty worse, well stipulated from my conversations with other members of, of SAG, you know, and, the issue or the fear is, you know, not knowing about it going into it, which fully agree, you know, if you show up for uh, a shoot, just know that you're gonna be scanned, that's fine, you can make that agreement one way or the other. And then you guys hold the cards and make that agreement, you know. Uh, for us, we don't particularly care. Obviously, there's hugely important issues when we're utilizing the best performance of actors. And of course, as much as I'd, you know, as much as I can uh, use actors and or stunt people, situations get scary you know it's at the point at which usually i lean into it where at the point at which it becomes impossible to get a performance to work correctly safely etc then that's the point where we'd want to lean into visual effects i think anything else right. try to get in camera well from what i understand yeah I, I hear i hear you on that and when you go into visual effects from what i understand i don't know if this is true tell me if uh when you ingest uh footage uh, where does it go well, you know, it's a large pipeline starting at editorial, obviously, you know, from camera deliverables through DIT through, you know, first edits. So it's it's in an editorial facility and traditionally locked up. It's from ingest that's, yeah, that's footage, you know. A hard drive uh, to editorial, meaning a rough cut, yeah? A rough edit? Right? Yeah, well, yeah, rough edit, fine edit, yes. Editorial and, it gets, and it gets tightened up. Uh, what happens next? So you've, you've, you've got... Uh, uh, do you work on pieces? Obviously, you work on pieces as, as pictures locked, yeah? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, the scope of the work is usually set out in advance, but, you know, it's fun. You know, problems happen. We, we do a lot of fix-it work, but, it, of course, if the shot is about Gollum, if the shot is about, you know, a flying dragon, you know, we go into it that, as, that our, as our target. But let's, say, let's say you're doing something like a, well, let's say you're doing a movie where you're featuring a Miles Teller in Top Gun. Okay, you you want to track him right through the post production. There's no visual effects using Top Gun. You got to understand that. All right, yeah. Well, can you can you give me an example? Give me a good one. Well, that's that's what they're saying. Well, you know, obviously the the funny thing is there's they're shooting planes that are not to date, so they're actually doing CG overlays on all the planes and all that fun stuff. But yeah, I mean, you know, we're not we're not going out of our way to work for free. So you know, unless there's Unless a producer asks, you know, something that I, in the scope of things you would traditionally do is, you know, uh, for, for 
a fix it of, you know, eye line occasionally, things like that, you know, things that you, you as a performer wouldn't want to go awry. And I think like the, the big thing I think that you're all missing here is that I think the majority of their directors, I mean, you shouldn't go into this relationship with trust, right? If you certainly don't go into it with trust or negotiate a deal where you have some kind of say in it, then yeah, sure. You should be concerned, but I mean, who's going to want to, why is a director going to want to, you know, mess with your performance per se in a, in a, in an inadvertent way that's not prescribed in the, in the, in a, in the, in the, in the, that they thought they had a funnier line or they don't like your lip color or they want to give you different hair. And especially as we approach generative AI, it's a concern of a lot of actors. In fact, there's a clause in there that basically allows producers to keep what they've been, what, what, what they have up to 2023. In other words, they don't want to backpedal probably on millions of dollars of equipment and post-production process. Uh, and they already use generative AI, not generative AI, they use AI in their shots. And so for us to say no AI is like asking them to take a step back. And I feel perhaps, I don't know what the NEGCOM did, but perhaps we took a step back on that. But at that point, and this is what I'm talking about, Martin, uh, you go through a, a bunch of different processes. You go, uh, at the end is Da Vinci, but you also go through Photoshop. You also go through uh, visual effects passes, et cetera. Let's just take a complicated shot, right? Don't you go from different software to different software in the process? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all in the same secure location, you know, right. everything is kind of locked up, right? So, uh, you know, we're, we're working on compositing, we're working, you know, we're, maybe we're adding 3D elements to a world world building, for example. Yeah, so, of course, so uh, you, there's multiple packages. So let me ask, how do you... At the point which the editor, the edit's lock is turned over to visual effects for whatever the scope of, of the additions, fixes, color corrections, nuances, what happened. Got it. So how do you track uh, who, you're, who you're working with in, in terms of that post-production process across various kinds of software? My biggest concern is this, and I think, you know, uh, from what I heard from, from a, a post-production uh, or a visual effects person is that, you know, when you go from software package to software package to software package, you lose metadata that you had in the first one. It has to be manually re-entered. Is that true? Depends no. on your choices uh, out of the gate, you know. Um, I, you know, for us, as much as metadata as we can get on visual effects, it's usually useful. You know, it's just like, you know, um, what, what, where was a shot? Lens, you know, lens data, all that fun stuff. We we want to hold on to that, you know, because that's informative for us for our process in visual effects. So, we are big proponents of metadata and uh, and keeping that metadata and, and even forcibly, you know, making sure that it's delivered, if at all possible, for us to use. Well, Remington, let me ask you, especially relating to metadata and, and digital watermarking, is there a confluence in there? Is, you know, I, in other words, if you, if you were to have it all your way, a SAG after actor books a job and either they're ingested some way in, into a system. As you know, you told me uh, yesterday that we're going to start building things modularly. Can you address that? Uh, because just everybody understand we are dealing with very large files when it comes to film and television. But we talked yesterday about devices and shifting. You know, for example, uh, Apple Computer a number of years ago came out with their, their goggle patent with 8K in each eye, which is way more than the human mind can see. We're going toward AR. You know, pretty soon we're going to be able to put on glasses, ask directions, and see footprints on the ground. The nature of media is changing. And so I'm wondering, from film and television, now that we're negotiating interactive, how do you see digital watermarking actually shifting the game uh, in, at Hyperreal and what you do? Yeah, that's a great question. It's important that we understand like the fundamentals that are happening here, which is performances um, in the very near future are gonna be cross-platform. Um, we're talking about cinema in some level um, that we're still using terms like film to describe how we watch movies but i mean the reality is we haven't used film you know in over a decade um kodak went bankrupt over, to, over 10 years ago maybe there's a few people we, we still use uh, we still use film okay well then let me rephrase that the majority of the industry doesn't use film uh the vast majority doesn't uh they're they're using digital and That's and right. um, and i and i will remember that there was a time where there was a, a dispute 
when somebody wanted to use video uh, to create a movie and the complete industry, and I think everyone here may remember this, uh, was up in arms. There were cinematographers, directors, everyone in the pipeline said, you will never replicate film on a video camera. And then 10 years later, the majority of everything is on video. Mm -hmm. it's, it's on a chip. Um, the fundamentally, you know, the 20th century was shot on a lens and plastic photochemical solution. The 21st century is shot, is recorded on a chip. And so you're going to need to be digital to be in an entertainment industry because that's where everything is. It's going to be on a chip. So, uh, so I, I'm not, I, I'm not just, I'm just letting you guys know, this is what we're seeing as the trends. And, um, you know, we're seeing that production is going virtual. So, you know, if you think about it, I'll give you an example. I'm just going to throw this out like an analog. It's like if you're a farmer, maybe like a film studio is like, is like a farm and they're sowing all these seeds and harvesting and, you know, all that. And they're out there with their lots of people helping the farm. And then someone comes up with some machine that's going to come in there and make them more productive. You have to understand that the business will adapt to the machinery and the technology to make them more productive. It's just it's just how they it's how business operates. You know, I'm I'm, I'm not saying anything that's alien here. Um, and, and 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 entertainment is a business. So um, so that's what we're seeing. And I'll, without going to specifics, um, you know, I know you know for a fact that there's a a um, a car brand that uh, this year is transitioning to be completely virtual for all of their advertising, um, imagery, commercials, everything. It's going to be completely digital. The car, the environments, everything. So if you want to be in that car commercial, you're going to need to be digital. And, 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 that, and this is where it starts. We've already seen that the environments are completely, you know, are being changed. We're not, you know, the industry is not shooting on location anymore. They're shooting in front of sc virtual screens, which are volume walls. And, and those replaced green screens. And so, you know, it's, it's a transition, it's happening. And uh, there'll be a little bit of time to be able to get, to get things together. So that way you can be able to have the assets that you need. What Eric is asking me is, you know, what would it, you know, what would you do with your contract um, when you go in to go to do a production? And typically, what happens is that the um, the producers of the film or you know the studio they'll hire you, and and then when you come in, they will hire a visual effects team. Um, this is what I was I was part of to to scan you. And then that's paid for by the production. So they own that. You don't. And that's part of your problem. So they own. Uh, they, you they need own, to change that. They own so, my identity. Well, they're, they're buying it for, they're buying it and paying you for your time and your identity for that production. In, in the past, that, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see someone like Will Smith get scanned and he's been scanned several times a year. Uh, when he was getting scanned a lot, um, you wouldn't see a producer having the rights to use his digital version in every production they ever created because Will Smith would never get a job again, right? Like, he, like that's that's just that's not how the contracts have been in the past. So it's what I've seen in the past, my my understanding of it. So the you know currently what happens is you go in, you get scanned, they spend money to scan you. It's not just your day. It's people like myself and Martin and those visual effects people that are then going to take those scans, convert them, put them into the system, rig them, everything that needs to do in the pipeline, put them into the visual effects shots, animate them, whatever needs to happen. There's a whole lot of money that goes into that. So why not take all that money and like shift that into your pockets? How do you do that? By owning it, 
how do you, okay, look, let's say. That's where, that, that, that's where you need to own it. Right. You so need to have your sidecar that is your asset. Yeah. And that asset goes with you when you go into productions. Yeah, that's actually an issue. A lot of, of SAG-AFTRA actors are talking about how come the WGA uh, said writers are defined as a person and how come uh, directors are defined as a person, but how about, how about actors? And my answer to that is <laughs> my digital identity is mine. And I am not going to be just human anymore. I'm going to be more than that. And when you use my, my digital identity, you represent me. And that representation is mine. And if you, if you disrespect or misrepresent me by violating clauses, there should be a, a, a coincidence. A, not a, a, what do they call it? A, what do you when you're, it doesn't, there's a consequence. So yeah. point B, you were talking about digital watermarking. How do, how do you track people with digital watermarks? What do you do? Well, it's, a, it's like you said, the, there's different ways of, of doing this from, from different ways. One, one of the ways is at ledgers and blockchain mm -hmm. because they're assets. How do, and, how does that and, work? How does that and, work? You could, and, and the industry needs to make fundamental shifts for some of this to happen. But there's other ways that this happens where, you know, you have your asset that is ledgered, you know, on a blockchain, trackable, you know, copyrighted, protected, all those things. And, and this goes into all virtual ecosystems. Yeah. So, so this and, and, the, and the reason I'm the reason I'm pointing this out here is because we're talking about the you know this is an interesting time. I think we can all admit like we're looking at this kind of precipice into the future that feels like it, it's like science fiction in so many ways. Um, but you you know like what what Eric Stotis with the slides in the beginning. These are the steps that are happening towards that future, but the very real future um, will most likely be, instead of one movie for a million people, it'll be a million movies for a million people. Okay, let's so talk- All those movies will be unique. They'll all be you know, generated <clears throat> for everyone. And if you can, if you have your asset licensed into that ecosystem, you're getting paid for every one of them. Got it. That's, so the, that's the fundamental change that you need to have. So that way you go from your time is, is only available for 24 hours in one day to being, you have an unlimited scalable asset across all virtual ecosystems. Okay, so let, let, let me actually explore that because this is part of my dream. And I just want everybody to understand this. I've been talking about this for a while. Um, if my voice, you can, by the way, you can, you can digitally watermark uh, me, uh, how I look, you can digitally watermark how I sound and you can uh, digitally watermark how I function. And um, whether it's mocap or, or my face or, or whether I'm singing or speaking, and then you can ingest me into AI with a digital watermark and that digital watermark can be tracked. Is that right? It can be tracked across all media? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, you're already doing this. Right. So, so they're already doing this. I mean, there's digital watermarking right now, major studios uh, like Disney, Paramount, um, uh, uh, Warner Brothers, the piracy has gone down because they've actually digital wa digitally watermarked their content and they can track it back to where it went. When you add blockchain to that, uh, for those of you who don't understand blockchain, basically it's, it's a bunch of data that's encrypted, that is, uh, there's centralized and decentralized, but uh, when you ever want to, uh, the thing is it's, it's semi-transparent, uh, it's unchangeable, and when you add new data, you just add another block to it. And so both bits of data there, et cetera. So uh, my dream is this. Instead of going, please don't scan me, don't steal my stuff, don't scan me. I want to be, please scan me. I want someone to be able to ingest two minutes of my voice and then say, hey, Eric, uh, you just booked uh, a Toyota commercial. I have a Prius. You just booked a Toyota commercial. Uh, it's three national spots and 150 regionals, and you don't even have to show up. And your digital wa digital watermark is tracked. Uh, it's reporting to a central system. Those tokens are actually aggregated, and uh, they are dynamically uh, they are dynamically counted uh, and and auditable, such that it goes into a digital wallet, which I'll, I'll discuss later. And, and, the, and the second part of it is I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like extras to be able, if, if they want, to be able to be in three places at once working. They have your digital asset and your digital watermark, uh, they, they, and they output it, we'll be able to find it, right? 
Yeah, it's it's like the way that that you can um, identify when music is being used on YouTube without the license. Yeah. Um, so so there there's there's existing infrastructure to be able to identify and track unauthorized usage. Yeah. Um, this a lot of this infrastructure needs to be kind of put together for this for this particular industry. We're building it. We're doing it, um, and and making it happen. Um, but I, I want to just can, can, let, let me give you guys an example of trust. Martin brought up trust here, and it's important to understand this. Um, you know, um, I don't know if you guys know this. It's like deep, deep fake uh, TikTok, Tom Cruise. I think everyone has seen it. Um, it's uh, th there's this company that does this. Um, they're a deep fake company, and um, you know. It's a perfect example that you have um, talent that has their identity used in an unauthorized fashion. Uh, so what what's you know what I'm going to describe here is is um, kind of shocking in many ways, but it's it's literally happened. Is um, you know uh, another performer has taken on the role of Tom Cruise, and they've used this deep fake technology. Um, which is all open sourced, by the way. Um, there isn't any real, you know, underlying technology that is unique to this particular company, but they effectively have been creating this um, off-brand Tom Cruise. And you know, I'm a huge fan of Tom Cruise. When I go see his movies, like I, I love, I love his his work. And when you see him in the movies, he's he's a juggernaut. He's super cool. He's an, he's an action hero. And when you look at this character that they created using his identity, it's not him. It's like this giggly person. I don't, it doesn't read as this, as Tom Cruise, but it's extremely weird and it's gained a lot of following. And you can, you know, there are people that have been saying that, you know, you know, the, the whole, uh, this Mission Impossible that came out recently it you know it could have underperformed because there's a you know and you know his brand has has been diluted or changed due to this unauthorized usage of his identity. Then of course uh, the company that uh, that made it uh, signed with CAA, who's Tom Cruise's agent, which blows my mind. The things that are going on, you know, the the sausages being made in Hollywood. I, I, that's about, this is, this is the weird thing. You know, I asked the CEO, you know, did you get his permission? And he told me, um, he said, he did not say yes, but he did not say no. Wow. So that, that's, that's not consent in my book. I'm sorry. No. I don't know where they, they, they came from, but there's another side of this equation. So we're looking at one, one side of the coin, the other side of the coin uh, here, um, it affects the studios, you know, the producers and the studios that have made all these movies with Tom Cruise have paid him an awful lot of money to be in these movies and they own the copyrights of those images of him in those films. And those images are now being trained into this GAN um, that effectively allows these guys to co-create this Tom Cruise content. Mm -hmm. And they're not paying the studios any money for licensing that copyrighted data. Okay. So, you know, um, all across the board, this is this is havoc and chaos. It's affecting talent, it's affecting producers, it's going to affect everyone because this is just, you know, there there is it's almost an unethical use of of what's happening here. I think that's a very kind way of putting it. And um, you know. Um, I think the only way forward is to have this authenticated ethical usage where it's verified and it's talent owned. And that way, you know, that power is in your hands and you can control it. You know, right. it's a technology multiplier asset for you. That That's our position. And, um, you know, we're, we're currently one at hyperreal.io. We're currently the largest um you know company building um, identities 
for talent specifically? Let, let me ask you a question. Then. Yeah, there's a lot of hell scenario stuff floating in the air. There's a lot of fear. Uh, I have a feeling this can be handled and this can be dealt with using technology. Uh, and I wonder what you guys think about this. You know, a lot of a lot of actors are talking about what if I see my face, my mouth in a movie? You know, what if I see what if I see my mouth flying by at Mach 2 and Top Gun 3? Uh, I'm going to take out a trouble ticket, uh, a claim with our with our department. And I got to tell you, I've been waiting six months on a six thousand dollar residual check and I've made 15 calls and 14 emails. If we think we're going to actually be able to handle that uh, with our staff. And I don't think we could ever have enough staff. It, it would be ludicrous to even consider it. Why not offload all that work to what, uh, what computers actually do way better than humans, which is gather data, communicate data, and do it dynamically and automatically? Um, and so my question, my, my, my question for you is, how can we create a win-win for producers and for actors on this, such that there is a watermark that translates not only important film data back and forth between systems and on launch and protects, it protects against piracy, but also does a whole lot of the accounting that traditional that traditionally uh, studio payroll departments or things uh, companies like uh, entertainment partners do. Why don't we put it all in one system, allow it to be auditable by a third party, um, and track the use of your digital identity so that uh, we can monetize the use of it. Um, so I, I want to present a solution to you guys. I know you guys have been terrified. What if they use my digital identity? What happens? What do I do? Well, I'm going to share my screen with you. We talked about a plan. Now I'll make it very clear with you. Uh, I have a resolution out, resolution number 13, about a technology solution. It's this. It was passed by the local board. And it was about to, I was about to speak about it at a convention when uh, President Fran Drescher and, and Duncan Crabtree Ireland came in the virtual room and said, hey, guys, we got to postpone convention because the AMPTP are back at the table. Um, this is my plan. Uh, I think it's leverageable with current technology, and I think it may shift our discussion significantly. Again. My commitment is to protect, manage, and monetize the digital identities of 100,000 sag after members. And I will say this to everyone out there, and I know there are a lot of people here. Um, we have to make this happen together. We have to support each other, and we have to bring ideas to the table. And this is mine. And I just want to say, if you have a better one, I can't wait to see it, and I will support it 1,000%. This is where we are. I've talked about digital watermarking. You're probably sick of hearing about it, but it has a unique identifier. It's tied into your SAG after ID, and you can combine multiple watermarks into one digital replica or synth. If it goes out in production or it's out in the world, it must be digitally watermarked. And the reason I say this is because Congress right now is very concerned about digital identity. Imagine, and again, I'm just going to be a little scary here, but Imagine uh, you get a call from your doctor and you've got 30 days of medication left and they say, yeah, I double up on your dose, but it's not your doctor. What if you call your school to pick up your kids and your school releases your kid, but it's not you? What if the president gives a speech and says that Russia uh, just shot missiles at Miami, uh, but it's not the president of the United States? So know that our government takes this very, very seriously, and they've mandated digital watermarking to confirm the identity of artificial intelligence. And if we take it one step farther and we mark our digital identity, we actually have a step to move forward with. And the way you, you, you report it is with blockchain. It's an unchangeable ledger. It has a public receipt, and it's semi-transparent. And here's how it's a win-win. We know the streamers don't want to give their private data away. We don't care about your private data, please pay us. You can keep that and make it semi-transparent. Whatever they don't want to tell us, as long as it has our sag after ID and a few other markers, for example, uh, hmm, yeah, which is the next one, token managing, reporting, and, aud and auditing. Imagine your, I'm just going to go with network TV since we really understand that paradigm. Uh, you're on network. Uh, currently, if uh, your show airs, we rely on the studios or third-party people to report that your show aired. 
when we get to artificial intelligence and 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 what I think is the singularity, but entertainment shifts, nobody will be able to keep track of that. The good news is they exchange something called a token. And uh, let's just talk about value. Every time you're seen on that network show, imagine there's a digital watermark, that a blockchain that has either SAG scale or the negotiated value of that review token. So if you're only working at scale, or if you're working at Tom Cruise's level, well, Tom Cruise's token may be worth a dollar, Mine hopefully one day will be worth 95 cents, right? Uh, and that money, that, that sorry, that promise of delivery gets taken to the blockchain to an aggregate system. So we get paid per view. I know this is not the paradigm. This is going to take time. But imagine if you are uh, on, on a streaming show and every time someone sees it, you just get a little click. That's how, how YouTube works. Imagine uh, if you're on, on a commercial, it, that might be negotiated with a different contract or ideally the same contract so that we can shift the paradigm. Um, and it all goes into a digital wallet. It all goes in your, into your digital wallet. And the good news is uh, it can be scaled to the number of subscribers. The producers can then profit share and cut their losses. I did six episodes of The Flight Attendant. Uh, it didn't do as well as like, for example, Severance. Severance, people who are on Severance will get viewed more and they'll get paid more. And it's too bad for me. I'm just grateful who've got work, all right? If it all goes into your digital SAG after wallet, we are able to actually shift the residual system. We send out 100,000 checks a week. In bulk postage, that's $31,000 going out. It's deforested. We have uh, ACH transactions uh, and we have five payroll companies and we have to chase things down. What if we have a digital wallet that has threshold payments? CD Baby does this with pay points. If you make a certain amount, it just gives to your bank account. If you make a certain amount, it just deposits your bank account. It's SAG, after, you, you get to decide what your pay point is. So if you want to get paid out every $50, every $50 of value that goes into your digital wallet goes in your bank account. If you want to do it at every $5, you want to, and Tom Cruise probably has to do every $10,000, every $100,000. The point is it sits in his digital wallet and, and it's, while it's there and while it's under the payment threshold, that money, among other things, can be strategically invested by sag after to pay for this whole project. People are thinking, how are we going to pay for this? Well, we do have an unclaimed residuals fund and we do have that. And Let's not even talk about the George Clooney money. I personally, I, I think that we can't afford not to do this. And finally, as, as was brought up just earlier, uh, uh, how we track things on YouTube, there's something called digital fingerprinting. It actually detects, kind of like imagine a, a, a known criminal walks into an airport and a silent alarm goes off and the FBI just shows up. It just creates a blockchain ledger of all the infractions. And so I know we're gonna, we're, we're actually talking about uh, arbitration, but imagine catching 175,000 uh, infractions and just handing a bill and going to the press with it. That'll happen once and people will never bulk steal our identities again. And I know this is a lot to absorb and I have a feeling I'm gonna face a lot of resistance and I have a feeling it's gonna be a battle. At the same time, the whole point of all of this is to figure out another way aside from living in fear. Uh, how do you feel, uh, Martin? How do you feel, Remington? Do you, do, do you want to talk about anything else? You want to you want to address that? Or do you want to start taking questions? Um, I personally think, uh, yeah, that your scanned image it should be uh, for you to negotiate upfront, and then be comfortable with it. You know. The, the simple fact is the, the conflation with AI is your image is out there. Everything is out there as a digital document. You know, it's not that actors are anything specifically, you know, unique to this, you know, anyone could be scammed. Your voice could be scammed. There was an exact example of a, of an attorney having his son call him and saying he's in jail, please bail him out. And it was a completely digital voice. You know, what do you do about it? You know, Government doesn't know, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, you set your own parameters of how you want to be treated. The images as, as been already established, you know, things that are bodily scanned are used for that particular production. You know, there's huge stipulations and penalties for any of that data to get out. 
Mm-hmm. You know, does does movie get jacked? Hell yeah. Travel to Beijing. You're going to see DVD, DVD, DVD on every sidewalk, you know, and the State Department of uh, Chamber of Commerce is fighting this battle with our con- for movie content, for software being sold, for knockoffs and Gucci bags. You know, it, this stuff happens. Mm-hmm. So I don't think, you know, in my case, you know, I, you know, negotiate and treat, have you, your agreement so you're treated as you would expect to be treated by all means. The fact that you are a digital image, you already showed yourself, you know, you could be scraped, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, uh, a a kid on the couch can generate a deep fake based on your images. For me, it sounds like a pretty simple resolution. You know, if it's a show business for a reason, if that image gets used and you're not in agreement with it, you have no contractual arrangement with it, it seems like a pretty easy slam dunk to say money, exchange hands based off of my image i had no idea about it i had no compensation for it nor did i give my right to give uh this I- images to you that sounds like a pretty straightforward lawsuit to me you know i hear you on that i will say this people are concerned and i think um one of, one of the things to keep in mind is that uh whether and i want to say this for all the membership here and i think this is really important we're really trying to figure out whether to vote yes we're trying to figure out whether to vote no. And I'd like everybody to just to play the chess game of when you, if we vote yes, what happens? If we vote no, what happens? And I think we need to understand that whether yes happens or no happens, we need to track the use of our digital identities, period. And if we say yes, we move forward with these contracts and we figure out a way how to include something, whether it's this idea or another D idea, whether it's a hyper real, another vendor, whatever it is, I am unattached. I told you what my commitment is. My commitment is to protect, manage, and monetize the digital identity of 170,000 SAG after ad- ad- members at the dawn of art- uh, artificial intelligence, period. So the question is, uh, whether we, if we say yes, how do we incorporate that? I'm going to tell you right now, we have 240 days to set digital watermarking standards for the entire world. We have to lead. That's what I think. If you're getting sick of me saying it, we have 240 days to do this, according to the president of the United States. And if we do that, imagine where digital identities can go. And on the other side of that, if we say no, and the negotiating committee has to go back to the AMPTP, will the negotiating committee actually talk to them about this, these ideas? And if not, and if, and if they say yes or no, and we go back on strike and we march the streets and we do what we can, then we find a way to incorporate what our future is again. So don't forget. You're never going to find your nose going by. A human against artificial intelligence is like riding a unicycle to a Formula One race. You can't do it. We need to have artificial intelligence track artificial intelligence. And we don't need a generative AI. We need a weak or a narrow AI that works really, really fast and sends things securely. Now, I have to say, uh, I think it's time to take questions. We've, We've gone on a little bit too long. Uh, I know a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people have been asking some great questions on chat. Hey, Maestro, do you want do you want to run that for us? Uh, and we're going to do it for for a little while, and see. Uh, yeah, Eric, if you want to call on people, I'll invite them to unmute. Absolutely. A uh, uh, Sherry seems first up. Sherry. Go ahead, Sherry, go ahead, Sherry. I asked you on mute. Okay, okay. I'll come, I'll come back to Sherry. Let's go to uh, Karen. Thank you. And by the way, can I just say, everyone, I, I, I really want to send a, a word of appreciation to Sean Sharma for running this room. Uh, it has just been really great to have this forum to speak with people, and I'm very grateful that we're doing this together. Hey, yeah, there, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Oh, Sherry. Oh, Sherry, go ahead, and then Karen will come to you. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry. It took me a moment to get there. Uh, Eric, thank you so much for holding this. Sean, thank you for holding this as well. Um, Just, you know, Eric, I had this conversation with Jeff Bennett over a year ago in reference to how we can watermark our our AI ourselves. Uh, I know it's something that's been in the process for a while. And uh, the reality is that uh, we just can't do that right now from what I understand. Um, it's not that we shouldn't, 
but that that's the the reality is that we we're just not at a point where we can do that. And my other point uh, that I want to bring up to all the gentlemen and ladies that may be here listening, my also also my understanding is that even the digital doubles that are created right now, any scanning that's done right now is really just not amenable to all the other productions because of lighting, because of position, because of what we're wearing, whatever it is. Isn't that true that even if we're we're scanned right now for some movie that we're in, it's not really amenable to another movie because of the the lighting, the everything that else is that's involved with it? Yeah. Um He's a good I'll, I'll yes, answer that. Is true. How about this? I, I can answer it to you. I'm going to answer it. Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, just, I'm sorry. Can I just have one person answer that? <laughs> Thanks. I'll answer that wait, because. Two, um, there are two questions. You know, oh, wait, Eric, please let, let somebody like Remington say, you know, somebody. I want him to answer, but you asked two questions. So digital watermarking. Go yeah. ahead. Get, go ahead for that oh, one. I'll, I'll actually, talk. Martin, you raised your hand. Uh, please answer. Yeah. I'm sure to answer to both of your questions, Sherry. That's all I would say. <laughs> Go ahead, Ron. Okay, um, you know um, when 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 you work, you know, dig, uh, VFX and digital the teams oftentimes um, are very um, broad on on a film. Um, you know, there there there's a lot of CGI across the spectrum of 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 any any one production, and 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 there's there's people that handle different parts of this. Um, digital humans are extremely uh, specialized at its best and generalized in most cases. Um, when you see a digital human on a film, most likely it's a stunt double that's blurred as it moves by, uh, and you're and 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 the quality and the standards are not um, extremely high high. But there are examples of teams that. Um, create an exceptional asset, um, and uh, and these are teams that uh, I personally have worked with and led in many ways. The assets that are created that are are um, sub poor resolution can be used across all digital ecosystems in any film, any lighting, any video game, any VR event, anything immersive anything AI. It's an, it's like, you know, the ultimate, you know, just like, uh, uh, for example, just like there's different versions of cars, you know what I'm saying? You all different kinds in your price range. Um, but, you know, the assets that, that we're working with are definitely the kind that can use across all ecosystems. And what would you use them in? Would you use them just as like background way, way back? You wouldn't be using anything that's up front and visible, right? Or you can be, you know, there's there's digital so, doubles. Now, that, our, there... our use case scenario would traditionally be that we would be dressing it with, with makeup, with wardrobe for a very specific reason, right? A very specific look. Um, our goal is not to take a generic scan and use it in, in any other way. The arrangement should be specified by you as the artist, right? I, you know, I don't. You cannot use my e existence in any other representation, any other film, or however you want to stage it, right? So, I mean, for sure, cover your own property. You are your image, but it's we're not going out to create a database and or throw out a, a whole volume of you know stock models uh, of you and you know too much work for us. We don't care about it. We're not really invested in it. We don't get any gain out of it. Uh, if a producer does something like that, then you fight your battle. Right. Thank uh, you, Martin. And Eric, you were going to say, sorry. Yeah, actually, digital watermarking can be done. And if it couldn't be, but it's currently leverageable. Nestle and Unilever uh, use it to track uh, recycling. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, studios, you, I think it's called, is it called Bitstream watermarking? Uh, to make sure that their their movies aren't they, they use the final product for that and digital watermarking is simply ingesting it with with with, with a with, with a bit of information and digital watermarking is, is is already being done I mean it's been done for years the question is are this what are the standards and if there aren't any standards we have to set them I'm, I'm not nothing here is 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 not already out I'm not giving you any science fiction there's no Star Trek it's just a matter of assembling it and the only reason I say that is because I'm a project manager and I see stuff like this all the time 
for in other other modalities. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I see uh, Byron is next. Yeah, Karen fell off and let's just get Karen back. Uh, Karen, are you ready now? Karen West? Yes, 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 thank you, thank you. Um, uh, gentlemen, thank you all. This is so instructive and so helpful. I just want, and Eric as a passionate actor, um, I'm, I'm just so um, impressed by what you guys are helping me with. Um, I also want to uh, pay tribute to your maternal um, brain genes because you've got an aeronautic engineer turned doctor mom. So uh, it explains um, uh, uh, your, your virtues here today. So thank you for that, mom, your mom. Um, I have been thinking a lot about this whole tra tracing how studios use us if we submit in an AI consent to digital replicas and it's their property. Um, my Hewlett Packard contract negotiating sisters and many other people now have said, you know, you really have to be the sole proprietor of your intellectually or intellectual property, meaning your own um, images and you. Um, and when you just said that CEA couldn't even protect Tom Cruise from a digital fake company, that's at CAA, then it, yes, uh, it does cause enormous amounts of anxiety about where we're going with this. Um, my question is, sorry for the long preface, is um, if we, and I've already written Remington Scott. I wrote you three days ago. How much is it going to cost me? And can I get a, you know, a discount for scanning for 166 members? Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm very impressed with the company from what I'm reading, Hyperreal. Um, if I uh, do a scan, is that, how long will that hold just like, you know, primeval days when we just got our pictures and resumes and then needed to get new pictures and resumes because we look different and we're older and we're aging. How often would you say that, that we need to do a new digital scan? Rem um, and yeah. Remington, that's all you. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for reaching out. Reach out to us. Like we would love to have the opportunity to work with anyone from SAG who's interested and work with you guys. Um, and you know, the, um, what we're looking at here is that there's different standards for different usages. And so that's what we're coming up with. And and we're, we're identifying just like SAG is, identifying, the, you know, how to protect and, and, the, and, and, and the contracts, we're identifying the standardizations for digital humans across all the ecosystems for different levels and and so you know if if um for example if, if you you want to license your your identity for background uh types of characters that's going to be a different types of cost than if you were expecting to be performing you know up close up close to a camera close-up shots type of thing so um these are all being, you know, worked out, and uh, and it's 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 um it's very complex, but we, you know, we're building that infrastructure currently, and our goal is to be able to onboard anyone that wants to be able to be a part of 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 this platform. So, is it is it is it current that you're just doing stars for studios, or are you ready to do digital? Uh, replicas and that we copyright license and store with you instead that we can license out. Are you ready to do that? Yeah. Well, we, what we've started our business on is, is, is a business thesis on, on um, top talent that is using it to generate um, a lot of revenue. Uh, and, and, and that's where we wanted to see, you know, is this going to be a business model that makes sense Is it a thesis, you know, will people adapt it on, 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 on different levels and will it be used? And we've been doing this for over five years now. And so and, hypothetically, you know, my agent could say my 
DR is at Hyperreal and you can rent it and I'll let it out to you and the usage will be tracked by Hyperreal or how do I track it? It would be all tracked. Be you part track of that. it for me as part of the service of me having you as my my uh, storage holder. Yeah. That's great. And the good, That's news, great. The good news is he doesn't actually do any tracking. The system is built to track. Uh, if coming to add to track, he'd, he'd have no life. I mean, it, the whole point is we have computers right. do work for us. Yeah. You said IA will track IA, but we will be able to ha have some trackable way of knowing when it's used, where it's used because yeah. of the watermarking, the fingerprinting. So that, that reassures me a lot. And I'm serious, Mr. Scott, yeah. you know, I'm always looking for a group discount, you know, um, okay. but- uh, how about, um, about 170,000 actors for a group for that? Perfect. <laughs> yeah. One, perfect. one other thing, one other thing is uh, you said, Eric, that the U.S. has to lead an AI. Um, no, maybe we because- sag after has to lead. Yeah, sag after has to lead. I think that's so right because probably the most globally, digitally streamed thing in the world is our- uh, ubiquitous storytelling, and that we as actors, as asset, assets to that global storytelling, we do have to lead with this and we got to get it right, yes. is what I'm worried about. So this today is really helpful. So thank you so much, all of you. Glad to help. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Byron, please. Go ahead, Byron. Hi, Byron. Okay, Byron, we can't hear you if you're speaking. We'll come back to Byron. Let's go to Eric. Hi, Eric. Hey, guys. Thanks my, for my parents couldn't. Thanks for being with us. Um, so, look, I think this is a great idea. Blockchain makes a lot of sense to watermark it. Um, and uh, but I'm not convinced that we want to go out and spend the money to do it ourselves. I mean, I think Karen made a great point that we're going to age out of our headshots uh, every couple of years, um, not because our hair changes, because that's so easy to do digitally, but because, you know, our faces shift. And, um, and, and that seems like an expense that makes sense to have the studios pay for. Um, certainly, the, the new agreement uh, draft, the, MO, the, the memorandum of agreement, is seems very strong to me. Um, I think we have great protections for it not being used outside of uh, a given film or series or franchise without our consent. Um, and I think we've made some great gains there. There's a couple of things that are that seem off to me in the agreement that they're they're not showstoppers for for my giving the thumbs up for us to move forward. But I wonder if you guys have any thoughts on it. Um, and you know earlier. There's this, you know, you mentioned this question of blended, blended digital uh, replicas, um, you know, where it's not recognizable as a particular individual. That's interesting. I think, Eric, your proposal about tracking, you know, tokens for each of them, I don't know that that makes a lot of sense if it doesn't actually represent the person. Um, but what I want to look at, um, is there seems to be a gap in the contract about performance capture, the convergence of performance capture work and the digital replication protections that we have in, in the draft. The, uh, and there's a clear distinction between performance capture and motion capture that we, you know, we haven't had before. Uh, you know, I'm not a stunt performer, I'm, I'm, I'm an actor, um, so it's not, for me particularly, but it seems like the relegation of motion capture to fall outside of the agreement, it could be detrimental to stunt performers. Um, but specifically, there's this, in section 27, it says that the provisions on performance capture states that the provisions in 29 for di digital replication don't apply. So I, I, I'm interested to know if, if any of you have looked at this or Sean, if anyone, can can understand why 
if you're doing performance capture work and you have a digital replica that of yourself, that why would you not have the same limitations as if you did on camera work for that digital replica to be used for scenes that you did not shoot? Then when you shot in performance capture, and then having it used in scenes that you did not shoot. That's what I'm trying to make sense out of tonight. Uh, uh, Mar Martin, you wanna, you wanna address that one? Remington, up to you. You know, the conversation that we always have is, is it safe enough for the performer to do? And I think like myself, others that we've conferred with, you know, we always wanna give it, get the actor on camera as much as possible. I worked with a stunt crew from Hong Kong and, they would do like 150 takes and i'm like i could give you an out of maybe retiming the performance and you know making you land a little bit in post and they're like no let's do it and i commend that but you know our goal is never to you know to do something that is opaque to you it's just like you know if the agreement is it can't be done the agreement is the performance is almost perfect but we need to adjust it even now we're not we're talking ai we're just talking straight visual effects you know mm -hmm. we'll make adjustments to make it work you know Every, and everyone is ideally happy. It's not like we're, we, you know, our goal is not to make you, uh, you know, a digital performance uh, instead of you. If it can't be done, then, you know, or if it's too dangerous to do and you're obviously going to be hurt or killed, then obviously mm -hmm. we, that's when we step in. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, and that, and that carve out exists. I mean, that, it, that, that's the way it was done and that's the way it'll continue to get done. That doesn't, um, you know, the studios still have that liberty to do that, to protect, you know, for our safety. It's just this yeah. odd case of uh, if you shot it on camera, then we get protections with the digital replica. But if you shot it in performance capture, you don't get the protections is the way it reads to me. And does anyone have any insight into that? Well, uh, you mentioned an article. Which one is it? Section 27. I'm D trying to remember what is 27. I actually just put some performance back. capture. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, right. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I have to tell you, I've spent weeks and weeks and yeah. months uh, dealing with the AI articles. Yeah. I can't specifically address the performance capture articles. Yeah. I can't see this. And I hope I hope it answers your question. I see a world where all that performance capture and all that motion capture that's currently kept in a lock under lock and key from each yeah. production that is actually protected by an LLC. So it can't even be used because they finished the production four years ago when it's in a vault and you have to go through mm -hmm. lots of stuff. I'd like the idea that if, if, if that data is available and you, a PCAP actor, a mocap actor, can mm -hmm. send to it, they can put it in libraries. I've had this idea for so long where like, imagine you're walking across the room, you bend down and pick up an envelope and you put it on a shelf. So there are three movements there. They have three mo uh, motion capture actors do each of the pieces. And then you put each of them on a skin and you get a, a skin reaching down, picking it up and putting it on a shelf and all three mocap actors get paid. They can, they, can, they can start pulling things off of shelves with informed consent and feed AI in a way that can create productions, whether on a big, a big level or a small level. And you can only do that if they're watermarked. Otherwise it's just exploitation. I hope that answered your question. Well, no, 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 I mean, that that is explicitly written out of the agreement, as far as I can tell, because that's motion capture, not performance capture. Um, I, I, it, if, nobody, if nobody here knows the, the, about that, then, then I'll drop the question. Well, we if I, if I can just say this, you know, yeah. Eric, thank you. This is this is Sean. Yeah. Uh, this is not a <clears throat> panel where I'm a participant or any negotiating committee member is a participant. Right. This is yeah. simply to ask our experts about their experience with AI and technology. So as much as I'm sure any negotiating committee members on here would love to help, um, let's put our uh, attention on just the expertise that these experts have brought to us tonight. Thanks. Fair enough. Thanks. I just want to say this. I, I stand by commitment and I stand with integrity to my commitment. I'm going to give you my sacred email address, everyone. I haven't used it. I used it. If you know who Brian Patak is, you know what it is. It's pasoja.eric at gmail.com. If you have questions, I will do my best to answer it. I will. Pasoja.eric, you see my name there, at gmail.com. Please email me with questions. And if I can't answer them, I'll try to send them out. That's my commitment. 
Okay, great, Eric. If if you're good, then we'll move on. Um, Byron, we, we'll try again with you in case there was some issue with. All you. right, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Great. All right, great. Greetings, uh, fellow nerds and actors. Um, first of all, thank you to everyone for being here and doing this. Uh, what struck me in listening to Eric's ideas uh, were that uh, some things would really need to be worked out if we were to use blockchain um, to track a lot of these um, assets being used. Um, Right now, currently in, you know, like say a Bitcoin system, they use miners and validators um, who make money for, you know, the computational effort that's involved in processing all of those transactions. And uh, really, they're just, it's a lot of text. And uh, those databases can take up, you know, gigs and gigs and gigs of information that all get duplicated out to anyone who's running um the the bitcoin software um and then there's uh so I, I was wondering where that data would be stored uh and who would get paid to perform those transactions because there has to be some sort of uh, benefit for for those validations to occur if you're talking about an actual true you know blockchain like system um you know because if you think about nfts uh they don't actually store the the asset itself they store the transactional data that shows ownership and then that metadata points externally to the asset which is then stored you know completely off chain um so it, it would just be um we'd have to hash out if we were to use a system like that you know how much of of that transactional metadata is how much space is that going to take up and uh, how are we going to track that across all forms of media? Like, I, I would think that would be a huge blockchain that would need to be replicated and stored somewhere and validation we need to get figured out, tokenization and we get, need to get figured out. And, and how would that work, you know, as far as hooking that into your scanned digital avatar data, where would that be stored? And, and basically all those details would just need to get worked out. So I have submitted a 17 page full software architectural blueprint to President Fran Drescher, Jeff Bennett, Duncan Crabtree, Ireland, uh, Zeke Alton and Woody Schultz. Uh, that is the beginning of a very, very large uh, effort to put together how it's going to be done. Now, mm -hmm. Is uh, this is leverageable technology, and yeah, you know, you might have a long blockchain, but there are different kinds of blockchain. Whether you're using your know, local distributed nodes, etc. Remington, do you want to actually address that? Do you do you do you, you kind of because I mean, this is right to your area of expertise. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, uh, being on chain is going to be a um, uh, it's going to be a lot there. I mean, hashes are are probably the solution to be working with in more. And there's um, there's different types of ledgers to be looking at. Um, the key is that you have a ledger and smart contracts to go along with your assets. Um, that that was a way shorter answer than I was expecting. <laughs> did, did you do you feel like your answer got your your question? And the, the answer is yes. It's going to have to be worked out. Um, I, I'm not just tossing you a fruit. On, uh, uh, we're, we're, everyone has to bake a cake. We have to do it together. So there are going to be a lot of things to be worked out. But you know what? I, I, it doesn't seem to be worked out in a way where it goes, it's impossible. Uh, I, if, if it were, I wouldn't be wasting my time. Right. And any of us would be. It's just a matter of, you know, doing the work. Okay. Thank I, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Byron. Um, great. Let's go to Claire, please. Uh, let me actually interject. Sean, uh, you, had a, you had a cutout time. Uh, and I want to honor that. Yeah, I mean, I... I'm flying to New York, everybody, in the morning at six in the morning. So that's why I was hoping this would be at, a, at something I could pass along to you, Eric, to run. If, if Eric, if you feel comfortable calling and asking people to unmute in the participants section, then I can leave you all to it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll go a little bit later just because I see so many hands and I want people to get the, the great information. So thanks for thinking okay. of me for it. Um, so, Claire, please go ahead. Before Wait, before oh, the, the next one you do, just guide me through it, how to do it with, with James Croak. So that yeah. when you leave, uh, I, I've, I've done a lot of Zoom, but I've never actually run unmuting people. I just want to make sure that we do it right. Thank you. Please, Claire. Hello. Thank you for hosting this. And forgive me if you answered this earlier. I was compiling some questions while you were talking to the first um, question asker. <clears throat> and as I reframe to try to just focus on your AI expertise, um, 
in terms of transparency, what is the cost if we were then to go, okay, I'll create my own um, AI through Hyperreal. Oh, and how much is storage? How much is cost? Is that prohibitive to a struggling actor? Like, or is that doable? I have many other questions, but let's start there. It's a great question and we're working it out and we're, we're trying to figure it out. And the idea is that um, there will be an option for everybody. We need to get there and get to that. Um, we, on our roadmap, SAG-AFTRA was not <laughs> where it is now. We didn't, uh, you know, we, we as we were building the company, we were building it towards a very bespoke talent, um, you know, that, uh, you know, would be using the assets for a, um, uh, a, a you know, a very high level type activations, uh, you know, like- Maybe there's a payment plan or some sort of thing. Well, the, Lesser. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the idea is, you know, the ultimate idea here is that, um, you know, it, it, it should, it should be, and, and I hate, I hate to say this, <laughs> but it, it shouldn't cost you anything really upfront. It shouldn't, you know, if you and, get a and percentage be, of whatever. We yeah, make, it, it, it should be like when it works, you get paid and there's, you know, like it gets our paid. Agents. You, you, <laughs> kind, yeah. kind of like, like, mm -hmm when you pay for Netflix or whatever, you're paying that monthly when you're watching, if you watch it, if you don't have a subscription, you don't use it, you don't, you're not paying for it. So it's the kind of thing like if, it, if the asset works, then there's some transaction that goes on there. That's what we're trying to find a way. So that way it's not, an, it's not, it doesn't have any burden right. up front. Okay. So and we're I still figuring wanna... it out and it, and it is a business and we just want to make something that's frictionless for everybody. And that's the challenge of running the business. Thank you. If I could just follow up really quickly and say in one sentence or less, like um, in terms of security and getting cyber hacked of that storage of our AI, how do you feel? How can you make, how can you make us feel secure? And then my last question would be to the other gentleman, Martin, um, just in terms of an overall culture of the business, do you feel that this contract would then make productions that don't use AI, is it cost more cost effective to then take advantage of actors and use this technology to slowly cut out actors in ways that maybe productions weren't even thinking of using it before? Say you said the Top Gun example and you said, oh, they're not using it for AI, but it's a big budget thing and if they can cut costs wouldn't they cut costs it's a capitalistic society it's a capitalistic business is this going to affect us as working actors because it is more cost effective and that's so those are my two last questions okay martin why don't you answer the one she just asked because i saw you react to it and obviously you have have a have a good one. Oh, you're muted by the way thank you uh so yes uh actually yeah no you're you're right. I mean, we always, I think it's, you know, all of us use, you're going to say, you know, we want to go in with it with as much performance as we can have from you. Right. So in a lead position, it's all about you. You know, we're, you, you, you run the, you, you call the shots and, you know, give, uh, write the rules, how you're, we want to be handled in, in post, but let's just say, you know, a background situation where we're trying to shoot, you know, hundreds of people on projects that I have worked on in, uh, in a similar capacity, our lean to is to always use uh, uh, background talent for what, they're re for what they uh, add to the performance and what they give to the principals in the foreground. You know, that, that whole vibe is kind of like going to see a movie with a, with a big communal group, you know, so it's always um, happy. But on the other side, yes, of course, you know, there is the finances of, of the film business as well, you know. You can certainly. The cool thing about it is you make the call creatively. You know, you could you could shut you could you could cover it in a much tighter shot and not feature a, a cast of four hundred to five hundred, which I have worked with. You know, up to four hundred extra. You know, talent, background talent. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, it's it's big, it's cumbersome. You know, w as much as we can get, uh, we will get, and we will fill in the volume depending on the shot. If the shot wants to be a a huge uh, epic shot that tells the story of volumes of people, a huge fan base, then it becomes a, a larger, uh, you know, it's, 
obviously it comes a little bit unfeasible, you know, as many as we, but as many as we can get, we'll get. Because there's good case scenarios where you even trying to get them on the day, you're always going to, uh, you know, get less than you'd hope for. So, you know, it's always a contingency plan. You know, it's never our first line of going into it. We always want to use human performances, uh, uh, you know, um, for what they have to offer. We're all into this, you know, for, for that purpose. And, and I think it's strong, but, it, but you're right. I mean, there's nothing that could say that I could shoot it differently or I can use, there's off the shelf, you know, gaming technology like meta humans and stuff that are completely synthetic. Uh, you know, that's just a reality, but it's all, you know, so it's not, it's not our first line of to go to, but yeah, it, it could, uh, that is a possibility depending on how uh, the movie gets made. Yeah. And I, that, that, did that answer your question, by the way? Where's our guest? I think she dropped out. And I, well, I'm going to answer this question that she asked because I think it's important. Uh, security. I think security is paramount. The good news about blockchain is, uh, you know, it, it's been running Bitcoin. I, I wouldn't buy Bitcoin, but the underlying security is pretty robust. And the other part of it is in the ideal world, in the ideal world, if it doesn't, if it has a SAG after watermark, it's kosher. If it doesn't, it's not kosher and it's stealing. So the point being security is important. And I think when we go to the auditing phase, when we're looking at all the transactions, uh, we're going to need to, 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 uh, to track where things have gone. And, we're going to, uh, and that is going to require some kind of HIPAA level compliance or possibly a third party auditor to make sure that everything is secure. But on the other side of it, uh, the ideal situation is you could leave it in your, on your thumb drive, in, in your sneaker, if someone uses it, is the problem. They might have it. But if they actually broadcast film and television, they kind of have to broadcast it on a platform that is responsible for doing it. And if it doesn't have a watermark, uh, it's going to be a problem. Uh, and so security is important, but just understand that the paradigm itself creates the, the, its own security. And by the way, I have this idea that we could crowdsource. I mean, imagine if, if, if we actors, I love crowdsourcing, could point our phones at a television or at anything else, detect a digital watermark and check the record, whether it was actually paid or not. Um, that would be a really amazing way to do things too. I think we could do both. So I think security is gonna be in how we do the transaction, but also yes, how we store the models. I mean, Martin, when, when you're done with a project, where does all that stuff go? The studio and so we can't we, we're not going to put it in our keychain or anything or nor can we so you know and there's certainly laws i guess when you say no nor can we what does that mean well i mean we're largely in most models logging into a resource where we don't have access to the physical drives we're just literally like a, a remote desktop where we're working off a keyboard to monitor a mouse and and you know only io has in and out possibilities now Again, like, you know, is visual effects, you know, this, this is the bad guy here. It's like, look, theft has happened and there's been case scenarios uh, of, you know, sound, sound companies, you know, leaking movies before they come out or movies from its screenings being copied and, and leaked out and sold overseas and stuff. And, you know, stuff's going to happen. I think. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, of, but I more meant for hyperlink. Like if we choose to store our own stuff there and I assume most yeah, things will be hyper in perpetuity. So how would that um, security function? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like what Eric was saying. And, you know, the securities that we're using at our company is the same as uh, that is at other, you know, major um, companies, uh, you know, to, to protect the assets and to, you know, it's, it's, it's standardized, you know, in an industry. Um, the, key, the key thing here, um, you know, there's the protection and, and there, we have different aspects of that, which are also proprietary a little bit. Um, we could talk about that offline. But there's the key thing here, which is really important, is that, you know, like what Eric showed earlier um, of, of taking one image and, and generating a, 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 a asset off of that one image um, is, is real. And like we mentioned what they did with Tom Cruise, where they took images and created deep fake, that's real. And that is basically just using data that's perhaps from your past work. So what we need to do is minimize the, um, 
this kind of um, bad players in his case that that want that have no choice if they want to do something as um, as, as content creators, mm -hmm. they take it because they have no choice, and it's that's the way it is. It, it's the Napster level. It's when you look at what Napster was like. Um, you know, people just downloaded and torrented the songs, but Spotify came along and now you're paying $10 a month and no one's stealing music anymore. Just because there's a choice there. And when you have the choice to do something, most people will do the ethical thing that, you know, to, 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 to work with the content and work with the creators. They just need to have an ecosystem to be able to do that. So there's a multitude levels of protections that we're doing, but it's also creating an ecosystem that allows people to be able to then, you know, work with talent like yourself to be able to now uh, ethically and, and authentically um, work with your data and, and you, you get so paid much. for it. That's Building the, the ecosystem the would reduce this, the pirating, I see. thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's let's move on to James and Sean. Uh, uh, I have James right up here in front of me. What do I do? Yeah. So anybody on the participants list, okay. you can hover your mouse over James's name on the list, and you can see it says "Ask to unmute." Lower hand. So Perfect. all you need all right. to do is invite him to unmute, and it looks like you did. Yeah. Great. Uh, James. James, I just want I just want to say James uh, was my stunt double uh, on um, on the flight attendant. Uh, and uh, I, I, he's a very, very intelligent human being and also has a pre some pretty deep knowledge of, uh, of mocap files, et cetera. James, are you with us? I am. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a pleasure working with you. Uh, I also wanted to sh shout out to the other Eric, Eric Bear, who's on the mocap society, who uh, I've been in a lot of conversations with at my, when I worked with Noidum. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to bring up contextually um, when people talk about uh, tracking and individual asset uh, creation and all that fun stuff. Uh, something to consider and think about is, yes, you could create your own asset. Yes, you could have that file. Yes, that could be something that uh, this company leases out and then it's trackable based on the system that they have. Things to consider is that if I'm a director or if I'm a studio such as Warner Brothers, and I want to rent your likeness or I want to have your likeness and have the terms that I need, uh, you know, covering the project that I have, uh, that might not be the the company that you have might have to open up some of their licensing to to be specific to certain projects. You also have to be mindful of uh, as technology changes or even just project changes. If me as James is a digital asset, that is not James as a Viking. That's not James as an alien. That's not James as a taxi driver. That's not James as a hot dog vendor. That's not James as a, a fan in the stadium. So there is a workflow that has to happen, which is updating that that likeness to all of those wardrobes and timeframes and, and all that fun stuff. And that's the same if I create a uh, like a armature, which is what you use for moving these models. If you're trying to you know create it in 3D space, new movements or add movements to this this uh, avatar. Um, and if that armature that I create has conflicts with the system that they work with, then you have to, then it's another technological issue where they have to go through and almost from the ground up, rerun it to make sure uh, that it works. So, so when you talk about these things, just understand the context that even if you have this asset, it might not be beneficial for the studios or the companies to even go that route. Um, and so you might have this asset that just never fits uh, a proper project, but then also as far as I'm, and this leads into my question, um, one of the things that I understand about blockchain is that part of the tracking is that it always has a check and balance, right? You have all these, these computers that are, that are tracking it. So it has to be kind of in the light mm -hmm. and most of the work that's being done is in the shadows. You get this file and you take it behind the curtain and you do all your internal studio workings. So you're saying that uh, these companies that have been locked tight, who have been you know, fighting tooth and nail to keep all of the information secret as far as their you know, user base and the way that they do things because 
not only does that open them up to financial scrutiny, but also to competition, where if, you know, if I'm Sony and I learn that Warner Brothers does something a certain way and it's better than what I'm doing, well, now I can adjust or, you know, I can, I can, I now have that leverage. And so what you're saying is as a blockchain asset, this is an asset that has to be when it goes to their when it goes to their their internal systems or whatever, it has to go through a certain level of secrecy. It has to become a wizard behind the curtain during that time. And so now you don't have that tracking. Now you have a file that can move in the darkness in ways that can't be tracked as far as I know about Bitcoin, or I'm sorry, about blockchain. And so that's one of the things that I love to talk about this and I love us getting into this, you know, what can we do and how can we do it? But also we have to be mindful that the, the best way that this works is that SAG becomes a hybrid tech company slash, you know, performance union rep. And then we digitize ourselves. SAG runs the software because SAG is already in talks with AMPTP. They become the distributor and the licensee of our digital likenesses. And then, you know, all of the monies that we make, uh, can be potentially tracked, but but you've seen how cantankerous the relationship between the AMPTP and SAG is. You've seen how uh, cantankerous the relationship is between studios and just the industry at large and labor. And I'm going to slow you down. Uh, what was your question? So my question is, is how will blockchain work to actually protect us if that's if my understanding of blockchain is correct? Well, you talked about some shadow movement. I actually don't understand that quite yet. I think it's something that we'd have to unpack. I'm not sure if that question is here, but actually, James, I mean, I'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, I, hey, if there are pitfalls and things we have to deal with, then there are pitfalls and things we have to deal with. You know, we do this not because it's easy, but because it's hard, right? right yeah. So, so uh, uh, that's something that I, I, I haven't unpacked. But what I have unpacked is, you know, you said uh, in different uses, you know, and I, and I say that it's possible to even put our consent clauses into the blockchain. So if there are no consent clauses, it's not uh, it's not good. And if we create a matrix of consent clauses, it goes in there and it's monetized. And we can see if it's used differently, we'll actually see them in there. I hope that answers that part of the question. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I can't speak to that. Can you, Remington, uh, specifically the dark areas? I, uh, yeah, this is. You know, hit me up on LinkedIn and let's chat and and get into more detail there. Okay, great, great. Uh, I, by the way, just hit me up at uh, well, James, I have your info, so just hit me up. Uh, thank you. Next question, uh, please. I'm going to uh, Eliza is next. I just asked her to unmute. I figured it out. There you are. Hi. Can't hear you, Eliza. Eliza, Eliza. She got unmuted again. We'll try unmuting her one more time. Okay, I'm going to ask to unmute again. Um, hi. Okay, <laughs> I was saying I couldn't unmute myself. Um, hey, it's Aliza, actually. Um, hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, I was just writing down my questions because I felt like they were all going to leave my brain as soon as I got unmuted. So. Um, a lot of people have actually brought up things that I wanted to ask, but these are the things that are still kind of floating for me. Uh, first of all, thank you everyone for you know hosting this, Eric and Sean. Um, thank you to the guests for coming and lending your expertise and knowledge to us because I really, one of my frustrations in this whole process is we should have ha been having these conversations years ago. Three years ago, at minimum, we should have had like SAG-AFTRA conversations and town halls and events like this. And I'm still kind of frustrated that SAG after is not hosting this because we need we need to be informed about AI. Also, I'm also an AI nerd. It sounds like all the people here are. Hey. Um, yeah, like I, I've been learning about AI for the past like five, six years to write a pilot about someone who works in AI ethics. So it's funny to me though, because all of the AI research and knowledge I have like absorbed over the past several years still didn't really prepare me for these conversations because I wasn't looking at it from the, the perspective of, as an actor. Um, I was looking at all the other industries that AI is already impacting and the ethical concerns there. So this is like really, this has been really interesting to me, this whole conversation. So here are my questions. Yes, um, <laughs> thank you. Questions slash, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, question slash thoughts to put out there. Um, so question for you, Eric, does your, that proposal, you said like 17 page proposal that you sent to Fran and to SAG after leadership, does that have anything in it about like blockchain sustainability and the, the environmental impact of blockchain and using blockchain systems that are not as wasteful of energy? You know what? No, but I really believe in a low carbon footprint. And and Eliza, if you're if you're good at that kind of stuff, or you know people who are good at that stuff, I want to have that conversation. We have to say that, and I got to tell you, it's 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 less bad for the planet probably than a hundred thousand checks a week. But uh, I don't have anything in that seven pages about I mean sustainable yeah. blockchain. And uh, you know what? That's a good question. Pasoja.eric at gmail.com. Let's solve it together. Sure. I'm not a I'm not a blockchain nerd. I just. I have Googled it and learned about it from other people who know more about it. But sure, I can tell the email you and we can talk more about that. Um, and by the way, there's, there's a resolution passed. I actually want to address two things that you said. There's a resolution okay. passed uh, to, to have our union, or at least a convention, to be aware of you know uh, our environment. So that's, that's really, yeah. we have to make that initiative. Uh, and the other thing you said was, oh, yeah, why don't we do this a few years ago? Just so everybody understands this. I've been banging on doors since July. I'm a freshman delegate. I don't know, know all the ways of our union, but I, 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 I feel like, uh, and when I say lead, I don't mean president, but I feel like I'm in a position where I kind of have to lead on this and I have to help. Yeah. So do understand that um, I uh, have a full technology resolution and uh, the CARC, which responds to resolutions, I just found out said, uh, we don't want to look at this now. Uh, we want to wait till all the legislation has gone through. We want to wait till the contracts have gone through and we figure this all out and we're going to go to vendors. I'm like, dude, I, okay, but just no, sit down and have the meetings. You don't have to spend a penny. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just talk about it. What yeah. we do when we have a yes vote and a no, or a no vote and, and move forward uh, pre-plan. Uh, Martin, that's what you do. You, you do pre, you do, you know, before a whole crew shows up, you sit there and you, you take a look at everything. So I hope I hope that I, right. I early the communication the better absolutely in all things. Exactly. Fresh. Yep. So mm -hmm. I, I really call upon leadership. Uh, that we're having a meeting with Jeff uh, uh, Bennett. I really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, anybody else who wants to meet and talk with me, or even by the way, Fran Drescher, she is a woman of integrity. I love her dearly because she answers my emails. Everyone else seems too busy, but the president of our union. And can I tell you, she said yes. We're going to look at this, but we want to wait until the strike is over. So I'm not sure I agree, but I respect the process and I certainly respect her. Cool. Yeah, well, I'm, I really am glad that you're bringing this stuff up. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, yeah, okay. So the other two thoughts are kind of intertwined. One is a question and the other is a thought. So I personally would love to see some type of like, I mean, I'd love to see the proposal if you don't mind sharing that. Um, I My brain wants to see a use case and see it all laid out and maybe even like a small uh, test of of a system to, for this type of tracking. Um, mm -hmm. Like maybe choose like a few actors to, to watermark, digitally watermark, and then track them across the internet for a week. You would probably wouldn't even need that much time, but like- I gotta, be, I gotta be honest with you. If we march that into Congress, we could change the world. If we create a prototype and we lead on this- I think, I, 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 I think I'm we telling, need a prototype, yeah. Aliza, I agree with you. We need a prototype and as soon as humanly possible. I think we, my opinion, I, people may disagree. I think we have 240 days to come up with a prototype and literally- Why do you, yeah, what's the 240 days? I missed uh, that. I'm going to I'm going to share my screen with you. President Biden says uh, this uh, the agencies have 240 days to find out a standard for, for oh. watermark. And the thing about standard is we brought up the word trust a lot. We have to trust that process such that as far as we know, it's as rigorous as blockchain is. Mm -hmm. So uh, and if you look at, at I, I've posted the link uh, and I'm, okay. by the way, I'm posting the entire presentation that I did. I want you to be able Great. to scan it and look up all the places, uh, all the places I found it. Awesome. I'm, okay. I'm talking and I'm going to shut up now because we got two amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And my, well, my last question was about use cases and I wanted to ask the gentleman, oh, Remington, Remington Scott, who has the coolest name ever. Um, so I wanted to know, uh, so with Hyperreal, you already have clients who are, you know, um, use, you know, 
it sounds like licensing out their digital likenesses for projects and companies are is there any tracking and in, in digital watermark currently digital, digital watermarking currently happening with hyper real clients yeah uh we're, we're we're doing that but everything is 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 a much smaller you know level and um uh it's not like as as massive as what we're talking about here at scale yeah that we're talking about okay so it's 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 and and we're still you know we're building that infrastructure and testing it and, and working it through um you know yeah yeah i i just want to address that nobody knows what they're doing with ai right now nobody knows it's a huge mm -hmm. open field and if anybody has a massive ability to do this with digital i'd be so surprised because i mean it has to we have to lead Right. Yeah. Yeah. One last thought I'll say is because uh, I also work uh, in gaming and video gaming. And so seeing the interface of AI with that is interesting as well. And what uh, not to end, I don't want to end on a downer at all, but just a little bit of a reality check to add to the reality check you've already given us is that we're, we're definitely going to have to fight for these things. There's billions of dollars being invested in AI. We saw, you know, you showed us the valuation that chat, uh, that open AI wants. Unfortunately, that's not billions of dollars being invested in ethical AI and tracking AI and these types of things that really make sure that we're holding on to the humanity that should, that AI should be helping us to live. It should be helping us work, helping us live, not, you know, making some douches more money. Right. And that's, so, the, that's, that's the singularity. You know, uh, look, at the end of the day, if it were up to me, I just want to say for the record, if it were up to me, I'd pull the plug on AI right now. I get the legislation together and I'd let them start over, but not with all of our pictures, not with all right. of our reading. Well, we'll create our own fundamental laws of robotics. Uh, the problem is we didn't even get to the first one, which is what I was trying to show, which is they're right. not. Right. So pull it out, mm -hmm. pull it all out, pull yeah. the plug, but it's going to be really hard to face a $90, million, $90 billion company and tell them to shut down. So, uh, you know, we are where we are. Maybe the heaven scenario will take place. Hey, Eric, yeah. um, yes. just, just saying, just because we're getting comments about people concerned, they may not get to, you know, there yeah. may not be enough time to get to everybody. Um, let's just try to keep that conscious of both the questions and the answers to try to get through everybody on this list. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I have 12 other people. Let's do this. Let's yeah, we, say everybody, uh, well, questions and answers. Let's, you guys good with two minutes for question, just so we can get through it? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, just like a two minutes off clock or something. But Eliza, thank you. That wasn't necessarily directed at you, but I'm just getting some comments and stuff about okay. us moving that right. forward so yeah go ahead and then uh, eric I'll, I'll leave you to it so thank you everybody have a great rest of your evening and uh i'm so grateful that uh, eric you and and martin you and remington could come and have these conversations with us so we can learn and i'll have to watch the rest to catch up so have a great night everyone thank you so much sean uh i see max goldbaum next uh, i'm asking you to unmute and wow you click hi on. hey um what do you think of the one-sided approach that sag after has been taking about this contract and AI, the way that they only show the positive side, even though it's not too much different from the original contract, and they pretty much refuse to talk about any of the negative stuff, giving a platform to only the people who are voting yes without giving a voice to the 14%? Well, uh, I think I can address that since I've been pouring through the contracts. I truly believe there are contracts, no matter how you look at them, they're historic documents. They've never been done before. We had fresh snow. We had to use death. I'll use it as a ship uh, analogy. We needed dead reckoning. We know what we wanted. And, and you know, the ship always moves. So we keep having to steer, to steer it. There's no precedent. So I, I think, you know, our, our negotiating committee did an admirable job creating something, right? Whether you like it or not, is a different conversation, and I, I personally, I, I, I had a copy of the, uh, the, the, the actual contract uh, before everybody else. I compared it to the summary, and it was substantially the same. And when the, and the, the near final contracts came out, they were also the same, uh, pretty much the same. So uh, you have to understand, we as human beings have confirmation bias, and we like to hear that all the good work we've done is appreciated. And I think the negotiating committee probably feels like, oh my gosh, we went through all this work and people are screaming at us. And we also didn't meet the threshold for a minority uh, report. 
I think we needed 30%. I, I, I apologize if my facts aren't correct, but we had 14. So uh, it, with all due respect, uh, we're talking about AI with a 1950s bureaucracy. Are we clear? <laughs> it? It, it's a fact. We know this. It was created to support actors. We had contracts through, but we're actually talking about a whole new paradigm now. And if we can do it within this bureaucracy, great. But people want to see their contracts go through. And I understand the, 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 the effort. I would like uh, some of the people who said no to speak up a little bit more uh, so we understand why, but I understand their privacy too. Excuse me, Eric, you yeah. unmuted me. I was before Max, if I could just be next in line. My absolutely, who, who is speaking? My name is Warren Witt. Warren, I got you. Okay, Max, uh, thank you. Uh, Warren, uh, I have, well, <laughs> you're not muted, so go for it. Thank you. Thank you for addressing these issues. If we could watermark 170,000 actors, realistically, how many will be used if any facial image can appear to wear any clothes, perform any stunts, have any special abilities, or be at any locations? So how can we what? How can we, how could we, if we watermark everyone, right. how many realistically will be used? Of those 160,000, how are we going to differentiate ourselves from the other 160, 170,000 people that we're going to be chosen if we don't have something special that the production company needs for that, that type of production? I'm so happy to hear that because it's the opposite paradigm I other, I've, I've been hearing, which is don't scam me, don't scam me. Don't, now you're going, pick me, pick me, pick me. This is the conversation we need to create among our union so that we can be picked, we can have informed consent and then get paid. Remington, I would say you would be a great answer to this question. And Martin also, because you do, you're in post-production. How does that work? Or all spaces of production, sorry. I think, I think it's a great question. And, you know, we're moving towards a world where everyone is going to have an online digital identity. Um, there may be billions of them. Maybe the first 2 billion will be gamers. And, and so, you know, you get in there first. So I got to think is just get in there first. So you you get the voice. Uh, yeah. At, at the end of the day, uh, we are a couple of things in this business. Uh, one of is our relationships, the people we meet that we shake hands, you know, we, we, we get an agent, we get a cast, a casting directors to like our work and they get to know us and they call us in. Uh, and so how are you going to get picked? You're, you're, you're persistent, you're talented, you're professional. Uh, you, you, uh, you're, you're completely transparent and honest in everything you do. That's my first rule of this business. Number two, uh, you uh, are very good at what you do. Uh, and you keep working on that. And number three, uh, you're really easy to work with. If you do that for 25, 30, 40, 50 years, I mean, I want to say this, you guys don't know this. Remington Scott directed me in that call of duty. He had no idea that they stole my identity. And when he saw the LA Times article, by the way, for which I was blacklisted by three major interactive companies, uh, but I put my ass on the line for this. Uh, he reached out and we have a relationship now where we can actually make a difference. So, uh, you know, it's all about relationships. Uh, I hope to get picked. Well, you know, I, I don't mean this callously, go do the work. Yeah, I cast him. And I gotta tell you, he's, he played a Belgian scientist and I thought he was Belgian. <laughs> he's so good. I had no idea. <laughs> All right, we got, we got to move on. Thank to you. This day. <laughs> thank you for your for your comments. I see. Fien uh, thank you. It was so great. Remington handled a huge production on the set of Avatar. Like it was just like no big deal. I, I can't even. All right, Phoenix. On Call of Duty. Call um, of Duty. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you all for a very informative session, um, Eric. I, I just wanted. You know, could you clarify what you meant by we need a weak AI instead of a generative yeah. AI? Because I'm curious because like the trend, at least in VFX, is generative AI and machine learning. Yes. Um, rather, I've never heard of weak AI in previs or or anything like that. So I'm I'm this is also a question for Martin yeah. and Robinson. I'm talking about something different from creating art. I'm talking about accounting. 
I'm talking about sending information. I'm going to share my screen again with you just briefly and go back to the weak AI conversation. Um, now, note they have very limited range of text. They're not drawing pictures and they're not thinking for you, but they can process things very quickly. Uh, they can go do, 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 a chess program that was narrow weak AI beat Kasparov in uh, uh, 1996. So we need a smart AI, but we don't need an AI to think for itself. We actually need to tell our AI what we want to track and how we want to monetize it. I think, I think a generative AI would be great to answer SAG after, uh, actors' questions online and perhaps tell us where documents are. That would be really great. Hey, here's a list of the documents you're looking for. And I think you know that's a web development thing. And well, I'm a web designer, so I really care about this stuff. And hopefully our SAG after people will be able to, to address this in the future as technology emerges. Okay, so you're you're referring specifically to like the the blockchain part, not necessarily the actual making of of the you know. I'm I'm talking about the nuts and bolts, not the beauty. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that was it. Thank you. All right, uh, uh, we have uh, well, we have eleven people, which is uh, which is great. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, you're up. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. You guys have given everyone a wealth of information. Um, just to make this real quick, one thing you're talking about the art and not the nuts and bolts. I just wanted to say it's a little frustrating, scary, whatever word we want to put on it, that we're talking about being able to work but not be on set and not create those networking opportunities, not create those relationships with directors, producers, fellow actors, having to actually work and then still be able, and of course this is in the future, but being able to be on three sets at once, so on and so forth. I just, that is a wild thing to think about. I think a lot of people became storytellers to tell stories. And so that's interesting. Uh, the thing I have a question about though is on page 69 of the contract, and I'm not trying to break the rules here with the negotiating committee or anything, but there are no protections with GAI, with generative AI. And so I just wanted to ask Remington and Martin and you, Eric, uh, what is the possibility that we are signing off for something that may not happen for 10 years, but we're signing off in this contract to give studios permission to create GAI and not employ anybody? Because within the, within the clause, it says that you are not entering into an employment contract. And so I'm just wondering what's going to stop studios from, like you said, combining three random people, people that won't have the ability to fight multi-billion dollar studios mm -hmm. and then create and learn uh, from random actors. Uh, you know, any of you guys want to answer it? I've talked a lot, but I could. I mean, from our aspect, you know, you could just hire a very talented artist to create a, a likeness of you without even scanning you. So, I mean, it becomes the broader mm -hmm. image of like, you, you know, your image is your, your, your product, you know, what is your recourse if that happens? It's not just, you know, it's not just scanning, but as we just talked about the general AI, and, and again, like, you know, scanning is visual, is traditional visual effects, lighting and shooting, sculpting uh, from a ZBrush model uh, can be done. And that's kind of the way that artists have worked forever. Like I'm inspired to, to look for this. So I don't, you know, I the bigger, broader uh, issue becomes your likeness, the ratio, how specific and ideally accurate is that? So I'm not sure that the whole piecemeal, you know, this is Robert De Niro's chin and Bob Hope's nose is going to be enforceable legally. But again, this, that's where an entertainer lawyer would probably want to look way in. And again, all this is quite new and young. But again, like, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I, the, the scanning process is always done with obviously the actor's consent and they're hopefully know everything and ask all the questions up front. And that's what we're here for and what the contracts for your agent and your, and your lawyer should be doing, you know, so uh, you should feel completely comfortable with the process. Yeah. I'd actually like to address that, Mike, cause I've thought about it a lot. There's an article on the same page you mentioned that, mm -hmm. that concerns me, uh, which is uh, article C. They, mm -hmm. don't, they don't have to attain consent for post mm -hmm. operations. Uh, I, I want to address this though. When I audition for something, I put things in there that are very personal. I'm a method actor. If I ever drink a cup of coffee, I'm always, you know, how hot is it? Where is it in my hand? I do all the work. So what comes out of me is if you're doing what's on the page, 
You're doing what 95% of actors are doing. And 95% of actors don't work that much. The ones that are actually out of the box and take risks, et cetera. Those are the scenes when you shoot in a movie that they want humans at this point. You can't tell a robot to go, okay, be happy here, be sad here, be angry here. You would punch a director that talked to you like that. It, uh, I wouldn't have punched you if you did that, but Remington, but you didn't do that with me. Uh, uh, the, the, the point is, uh, if I'm shooting principal photography and I'm doing a love scene, that's one thing. But if, I, if they have to call me on set to get up, to cross the street and they need a medium shot, if I'm going by in a car, et cetera, et cetera, where I'm not actually doing acting work, they can take my digital double, do that work. I'm, I get so bored when I have to show up on a set and all I'm doing is like you get in makeup and wardrobe and you walk across the street. I'll take the day off and get paid for it. Thank you very much. And they're not there yet with science fact to have a, to have a synth look anything but what we call the uncanny valley. That uncanny value, mm -hmm. look at it and you just go, oh, okay, I kind of feel weird. Uh, so I think it's a way off. I think it's more- Yeah, yeah. The, the, it, it, it's interesting you, you mentioned that just real quick to follow up because we're talking about someone like you who's had you know a 30 year career and an incredible career and then someone who is breaking in, right? And I've been seeing that we're maybe forgetting that people are gonna be coming up who need those small roles. You know, I built my, my career off small roles that led into guest stars. Like you need those small roles to then move up, right? And I feel like we're maybe signing off on something that 10 years from now is not going to allow people to move up. Got it, got it. Just, just, just as a thought, obviously that's not an answer we can have, but I do wonder if we are saying yes to this contract and then studios are not gonna renegotiate GAI. They're gonna say, oh, hey, you signed off, you know, 2023 is 2033 now, sorry. Yeah, hey, got it. And I want to apologize. I heard some things in the comments. I think I address politics and contract clauses, and I'm not supposed to do that. So with honor and with integrity, I'm not going yeah. to address those things anymore. Okay. And I didn't, I, I'm a freshman delegate. So I apologize to everyone involved and uh, I'll stop doing that. No one fair. If I broke the rules too, I apologize. That's just 69, page 69 was something that had troubled me. Got it. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Melissa, thanks for coming. Hi, uh, Eric, and hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. My question is, this is all very future-oriented, and I really appreciate it. I know what's happening already now. I have my own avatar in EA, Electronic Arts, so, you know, been there, done that. <clears throat> but right now, most of our agents can't negotiate our ownership of an image separate from the shows wanting to own it. So what set the SAG contract will be offered or what the, the SAG contract they'll be using is what will be offered. And most of the smaller agents don't have lawyers to kind of carve out that level of autonomy. So we're kind of in, in, a, in trouble until then, uh, until we can somehow work out the difference between this 240 days when we might have some ownership of digital. Um, what, what are, oh, yeah. Tom, yeah. Well, 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 look, let's face it. Uh, we can do this together. Let me give you an example. We have a lot of stunt people. I hope we have some stunt people here. I love stunt. Oh, James Croak is stunt people. I was a martial artist for 25 years. I retired. Um, and I got to tell you, uh, they, they don't usually have agents at all. Right. Okay. So they're, 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 their job is to meet with other stunt people and saying, what are the clauses we're going to create? Bam. Okay. Agents are going to have to share with each other, say, yeah, my client, your client, this, that, and we're going to create some standard clauses that go in there and throw them in and negotiate them. And if they're not standard, they need to be discussed. And if they're smaller agents, they should talk to their friends who are bigger agents or talk to the friends who are casting directors said, what, what do you usually do as we start out? And if things don't turn out well, we raise our hand and go sag after this clause sucks. Because SAG after did not offer to build us those clauses. They expressly left it empty for us to do because there's no way to figure out in three years with the new technology and VR goggles what to put in there yet. Does that it, make sense? It does make sense, but it doesn't make, but to me, it doesn't make good sense. Okay. Um, I understand what they were thinking, leaving the autonomy to the, to the actor and the agent. However, that's not strong enough that's not strong enough, in my opinion, well, and then, it will be a runaway train and we won't be able to get it back. Uh, you have to vote your conscience. That's all I can tell you. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, I'm willing to talk to you. Please email me. 
Uh, I think I, I, I know that there are concerns. Uh, and if you need our union to build you that list, then uh, I would reach out and say, uh, build that list. And I would shout it from the rooftops. If that's what you, if that's what you feel you want, get involved. You know, Which I say- list like, is that, Eric? What would that be? A list of uh, if, clauses? Yeah, I think, you know, making a matrix of clauses uh, is something that's going to either be incumbent, as you say, on our staff and leadership versus creating it together as a community. Uh, you, you think know, we can create it together as a community? Honestly, I think I think we, we have to lead. I think people need to look at what the stars put in their contracts and their agents need to talk to the, to the smaller clients of these stars and say, hey, this is what my, my guy did. We're going to put it in there too. And I've already negotiated this. And eventually we're going to have a matrix that's going to be strong because we're going to see who got screwed and who didn't. And hopefully no one will get screwed because we're going to have good agents or even smaller agents who are strong negotiate it for us. That's my opinion. Mm. I don't know. I don't know whether it's, uh, with feasible, et cetera, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty positive. I hear you. And I wonder if there's anything, this, hypothetically, if it's a no vote, whether, because we've seen how ugly these people are now and we see how they hold think. On, hold on, hold on. Uh, at this meeting, we're not going to put anyone down in the other side. I think this conversation is a win-win for both sides. I'd love okay. to talk with producers. Let's, let's, let's not bad mouth. Go. Okay, no, what I was meaning is I, I wonder if going back to the table would produce any other results. Well, of course, it's going to produce any other results. I don't know what the results are, and I don't know who's going to the table or who our new NEGCOM will be, if it's be the same NEGCOM. There are a lot of factors if we say yes or no. Mm. And, you know, we, need, uh, we need to talk to leadership and say, what happens if we say no? From what I understand, it's this. The negotiating committee listens to the membership why we said no. They go back to the AMTPTP and they say, this is what our people said. The AMPTP either says no or they negotiate it again. And, and by the way, uh, and uh, by the way, whatever they want to bring and they can bring in because we start over. So, I mean, if it were up to me, I would add digital watermarking and see what happens and show them a win win. And then and then if that doesn't work, we go back on strike and, you know, uh, we tighten our belts. And I got to tell you. You heard my commitment. I'll strike two years for this. But I will support. I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided. I just care about the chess game. If yes, I'll get it for us. If no, I'll get it for us. If I know that, uh, that my digital identity is protected, you, tell, you let me know. Terrific. Good, good chatting about this. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You forgot DASF, but I, I, I'm going to unmute you anyway. Hi. Hi. Thank you very much for having me on. Thank you very much for creating this opportunity for everyone to learn. Thank you very much for uh, going so in depth as you have. Thank you. I uh, can't really introduce myself publicly. I operate at the center of an AI management firm currently. We interact with every major studio and see oftentimes what they're spending their attention on where they're putting their dollars. I know for a fact that every major content studio has spent over $3 billion on content technologies in the last year alone. Um, usually about a third of this has gone towards generative AI. Uh, something that most organizations don't know, most people don't know, most actors don't know. Every major content organization and studio has an investment innovation arm where they are working with these technologies. Uh, currently, it costs about $1,000 to make a fully photoreal, complete copy of a human being. Your, your face, your movement, your audio, the inflections in your voice, everything. Um, after I have that asset, I can then combine it with the hundreds of different assets that I have from other actors. Once I have those hundred combinations, I can then break them apart and composite them into hundreds of million other composites. Those composites are not humans. They do not have an agent. They do not need to be told when they are being used. And there is no one who needs to receive that information. So I like that we are focusing so much on synthetics and replicants. However, those are going to fall away very quickly. Once the studios have it incorporated into their pipelines that they do not need you, 
the reason why this clause at the end of the agreement exists, that there is an 89 day grace period where they can void all AI law starting at January 1, 2023, is because there are many films that have been made using these technologies already. Um, I was privileged, I cannot say where, but I was privileged to see a clip from something coming out in 2024 where even the main actor, the lead actor, was not needed to shoot his own stunt scenes. The only thing they needed him for was to move his face in time with the punches coming from another non-existent actor. This is the, the level of technology that we're moving into. Understood ASF. And I actually, I, I, I have to tell you, aside from acting, I, I love this talking about this stuff. So here's my question for you. Do you have a question for us? Uh, I do. I yeah. do. I do. Um, are you aware that these models have become so comprehensive so far that these studios can take the last five to 10 years worth of the films that they've already created, load them into a digital model, an AI generated model, and start to completely output new films using no people. <laughs> if this begins to happen, <laughs> hold on. If this begins to happen, much of what we are discussing in this conversation goes directly out the door. How come? Because they are not using our data. They are using internal data that they own. And for every time you get asked to participate in an internal shoot, an internal scan, that internal data can be used to create a model that generates other things so that you are not informed that your assets have been used to create something else. You have to remember that each one of these organizations spends billions of dollars every year and their attorneys who are engaging in these contract negotiations are on the highest level of NDA to never allow anyone else negotiating with them to understand what they are defending on those billions of dollars. Disney's attorneys are not going to allow you to understand what they are developing just by reading their negotiation contract. The contract is designed so that you do not understand what is coming down the pipeline. Got it. I, I, I'm, this is a really good conversation. And as far as I'm concerned, I'd love to talk to you more. I'd love to know more about what you know. I, I would be, of course, would be discreet. And I would love to figure out a way around it rather than get discouraged. Remington, I, I know that you, you and I have been talking about this so much. I'd love you to address this as you do more better than anyone I know. Yeah, he's right. Um, you know, this is this is. Uh, I don't know the extent that that he's discussing here, but whether that's the plan that's happening now or that's a plan that may be moving forward, um, what you're talking about is almost inevitable in some ways. And it's not, I think it's not everything. I think that's that that um, there's, you know, there's always going to be theater. There's always going to be cinema. There's always going to be certain aspects of entertainment. We're just going to see things blending and moving together. And there will be um, studios that are going to want to have synthetic characters that they own completely, like Walt Disney owns Mickey Mouse. It's It makes sense for them to have those assets. So it's, it's not that surprising. Um, but it just means that if this is, you know, potentially like, if you look at it, like it's a conflict or something, then you need to be prepared uh, with your side of the equation technically to be able to, to be in the same ecosystem as the synthetics, you know? Uh, so I don't know, I don't know the answer, but you know, this is not science fiction. Thank you, ASF. Um, my, my email is pasoja.eric at gmail.com. Uh, I did say I want to talk to you. I don't have all the answers. If we can find answers, if, if we can get the greatest minds in Hollywood to figure out how to do this for 170,000 actors, you know what my commitment is. Thank you. Um, uh, we have PA. Hi, PA. Pa, maybe you're my dad. This is, can you hear me? Yes. All right, so this is PD Antico. Hi. Hey, Peter. We had a good talk today. Yeah, yeah. I was 
then I've been the head of technology at the LA local committee for the last four years. I'm a stunt coordinator. I'm, I'm a 40 year member. Um, I served on the national and local boards uh, for over 10 years. I'm the co-chair of stunt and safety. I bought, I brought artificial intelligence and blockchain uh, up to our, uh, our powers that be in 2017. I've been beating the drum about tokenization and, and, uh, and blockchain. I'm, I'm currently working in, in, in the space of blockchain. And the questions you brought up, how do we protect our digital identity? How do we ensure transparency when it comes to monetizing content that was trained for your likeness and, uh, and skills? And you know, when you utilize advanced blockchain technology, individuals can tokenize their likeness. Once they're tokenized, the usage, the usage of their likeness can be requested and approved through this, the blockchain. No one needs to agree on a trusted third party to control a contract, and the blockchain permits everyone to create direct relationships with each other through the use of tokens. Using this approach will enable anyone that is approved to utilize a likeness, and everyone can transparently see how many people have requested the use of an identity what was paid for, its use, and what it was used for. Yes. This transparency protects both the individuals and organizations to ensure equitable sharing uh, and of compensation and, and fair market pricing. So we agree wholeheartedly, uh, Eric, on, on how to protect it. And, and obviously, there's more advanced uh, blockchains and others that, that I, I, I believe I can bring some of the most advanced blockchain technology to the table, which uh, which we'll discuss. And in regard to what ASF said, um, in in my circles, I have heard exactly the same thing that that he has stated in, in regards to these uh, synthetics. M my question was: If you're ingesting movies from ten years ago, those were all actors that were human beings. So if those actors get ingested in uh, and they 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 create their own ledger. You can pro if you if you have your own digital ledger and then you then you tokenize it, you, you could program that token. Um, just like when you're talking about watermarks, um, you could change the hue, uh, uh, change the color of frame a little bit and put you know ones and zeros. You can code that, uh, but then you have to put and put the history of that. If you tokenize it, it's hidden and and on the blockchain, all of it's already all of it is already recorded. Yeah, so, yeah. Peter, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say you're running out of time, and I'd love to have a question. Do you have a question in there? Yeah, yeah. Well, wait a minute. What happened? Uh, Are you still with me? You yeah, still I'm here. I'm here with you. So I'm I'm setting the stage because I, I know I'm getting thirty seconds, but give give me a second here because sure. this is very important. So okay. what if we want to tokenize it? The reason that I I disagreed with passing this contract is some of the reasons you stated. What if we don't? If we if this contract gets gets approved, that means they're going to be able to ingest and model their own. AI images, and then the stunt business is dead. The voiceover business is dead. Uh, you're going to talk about visual effects. They're they're going to have a big problem because their animators are going to. The AI can model the animators. If you learn how to prompt it, you can write scripts. I can write five scripts in a day. Once I learn the prompts, I can ingest. You know, Aaron Sorkin scripts, John Mueller scripts, Oliver Stone scripts, Ron Bass scripts. I can put them in, and then, then I can ingest Homer or or Leo or, or Tolstoy, and I can run it on the basis of this and create scripts, and then I can sell them. And and the writers, I believe, also dropped the ball with this because that's what they allowed. I don't believe that a human being in a contract should be replaced. If I'm capable, or humans capable of a performance, it should be written in that you cannot duplicate it or replicate it with AI because you're basically signing off. Uh, you're, you're signing yourself out of a job and you're going to get paid for the next two and a half years to be a model to a guinea pig to in, get yourself ingested into AI models, AI engines, with they, which they can taint, change your skin color, put a sunglasses on you. And with synthetics, you'll never get remunerated unless it's on a blockchain, unless yes. you're tokenized or watermarked. Yes. So my question to you, my friend, since I just met you, um, the only the only path forward I see is this contract getting turned down. If it doesn't, uh, I think we're in some serious trouble because you're correct about the legislation. So what can we do uh, except band together and try to get a group of people and try to really be kind and get to the leadership? Because it's been so difficult because it's so political. And you you just started your first year. I'm telling you, yeah. this is very this is. This is very, very, very political, and we, we, what we have to do is make a kind effort because they're already token, tokenizing oil and gas financial transactions. 
BlackRock talked about it, JP Morgan talked about it, and that's the future. So if they're already tokenizing assets, expect real estate to be fractionalized, films, music, everything. I, I so, hear you, Peter. I hear you. I'm so gonna, what are we going to do? What, I, what is your path forward? Because I have a plan that, that I, I also gave, gave I have been giving them, uh, uh, talking to them about presentations. And I, what, what I think we should do is I think we should use our resources together and we should look at all the technologies that we have. And like you stated, we can, we're very intelligent people. We could come up with the best, the best tech, the best blockchain, because the, the blockchains that I know in layer one can transact at 300. Hey, Peter, I'm going to have to interrupt you because you've gone long. Uh, I want to answer. I, I, I've got like one fourth amount of everyone else, but I, 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 I'd like to know, I'll just ask you a simple question. Yeah. What, if you can't, if you personally, I could help, but if you personally go and you can't, and you, Jeffrey Bennett is not a technologist. He doesn't understand this at all. And you're talking, you just, it's like talking to a, a, a fish. Hey, hold on, hold on, guy. No, 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 no. We're not going to have that. We're not going to put down. Well, Jeff. they mean the truth. That our, our we're leaders not going to put down Jeff technology. Bennett. That's not disparaging. That's the truth. He doesn't understand technology. But he's he's not he's not a technologist. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, got he's it. He's not a tech. So if he's not a technologist and you're trying to to communicate to somebody who doesn't understand what you do, you're at a disadvantage. So mm -hmm. I I believe that we should be able to bring in people that could give them a presentation to educate them and the entire national board uh, kindly so we can really put it out there so they would understand it in a kind, ge generous fashion with kindness and love. So we can actually say, hey, look, either we do this with the path forward to protect our members or respectfully, everybody on this call should be creating content. Everybody should be using AI to figure out a business where you could create content and do something else. Because the way it appears to be going, and you can't stop technology, is that if if this contract gets turned gets approved, I think a lot of people in this union are vulnerable. So let's make a plan and let's get our assets together, and we can have some really. You, since you love technology, I'll I'll bring you to some really sophisticated uh, blockchain people that I that that I work with. Same people who who were the technologists who who were the original developers on the Bitcoin blockchain. Peter, which I'm, is, I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually going to cut you off. I agree with right. you completely. Okay. We do completely. We're going okay. to do it together because uh, I can't do this alone. I I, I can't program blockchain. I, I have a, a basic understanding of it. Uh, dude, I, I have I have I have the people to do that. I have people that are phenomenal. And and anybody else on this call, by the way, listen. There should be no egos in this room. Every technologist here that can bring something to the table. Yep. Please let's start a tank, let's start our own think tank and let's move forward. Well, I'm putting my my email in the chat again for anyone who wants to reach out. Um, if you actually need to remain anonymous or you want to keep it private, I promise to honor that. And note that uh, you've heard my commitment. You've heard my commitment to protect, manage, and monetize the digital identities of 170,000 SAG after performers uh, at the dawn of AI. And whatever it takes, I will knock on their door all day long, all night long for three years if I have to. If it's three years, we're going to lose our union, my opinion. So we better get on it quick. But I, I, I told you my rules, and my third rule is be really easy to work with. I'm really trying on that. Thank you, Peter. I love your passion, and I, more people, I'm just going to acknowledge, just met Eric today. Somebody is passionate, reminds me of when I started, I just want to, I want to get things done. So thank you for your passion, and thank you for your commitment, and I appreciate you. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. Heather, you're up, and this time, can, is, is your question for Martin uh, or, or, or Remington, please? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Ask what you want. I just want to make sure that uh, uh, that I'm not the only one talking. I'm going to ask to unmute you, and there you are. Hi. Hello. Um, yeah, thank you so much for organizing this and everything, and it's great to hear the innovative ideas. That's really encouraging. Um, my concerns have been expressed by, I think, Peter, as well as ASF. ASF was very accurate with everything that I've been thinking about recently and explained it in a very good way. And my concern is basically, like, even if our identities are protected, even through this whole blockchain thing, um, I am still concerned that we'll be competing with the synthetic composite performers. And I mean, even just today, I was seeing on Instagram, like these Instagram, um, you know, AI influencers. So, I mean, I honestly, if big picture, I feel like this is obviously the studio's kind of first official efforts to transition out of using humans, ultimately, in terms of their long game. And I feel like 
obviously I feel really sad and frustrated about that. You know, it's their right to do that, but I feel like it's our right to say that, no, we don't want to be replaced. And um, I honestly feel like it's just not really in our best interest and our efforts can be best redirected, like maybe towards government action or something. Like, I know that Eric, you and I had chatted about this and I've chatted with other people and it seemed, I was just talking to someone tonight about this and it seems like the way that this, I understand the argument of like utopia, you know, humans don't have to work. We're all on the beach, you know? I just feel like that's not realistic and that's not really what's gonna happen. And I feel like there's a way to use AI in a good way as a tool, but I feel like the studios aren't really intending to use it as a tool in our context of who of us and i feel like this is such an important opportunity for us to kind of like really assess what we want out of this and if this really meets our needs and i i just don't feel like it does i feel like the blockchain idea is absolutely a step in the right direction but even that even using even taking steps down this road i i'm concerned i just feel like if we open the door that it's just going to um, not have a good outcome for us. And I understand the argument of, um, you know, competition from like social media companies, TikTok and, you know, Anthropic or whatever, you know, producing their own content and these smaller startups. But I, I honestly feel like even like they, they could produce, like, I just feel like the ultimate end game for all of this is that it's just going to be a bunch of these like synthetic performers. And honestly, I feel like even the A-listers are going to be out of a job where like, why hire Brad Pitt when you can have like this other, you know, synthetic creation that they've made and marketed and built up and all that. It just doesn't make sense anymore. Um, I, I'm, I'm really concerned. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? Like, what's your advice? Like, um, you know, what can we do? What, what's, what do you think? You, one of you guys want to take it? Sorry to overwhelm. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, would, I would say this. Well, I was say, uh, go ahead. No, I'll just say that, of course, you know, obviously I feel it should be uh, presented in a way that, that people can make a choice. I mean, I don't, you know, I've, even as a visual effects artist, I find myself kind of bored watching extravagance of just visual effects going in front of the screen. I want to see characters and performances, you know? So I, I, you know, I get it. And if that's, the, you know, in the free market, sure, that content can, can happen. So great, there it is. Do, do you want to watch it? Maybe as a novelty, but will, it, will you follow it and really be invested in it? I, I personally wouldn't, but maybe there would be some that do, you know? And of course, I guess that same paradigm of like a handcrafted versus a manufactured item could also hold up where you, you do see there's value in an actual hu human performance with nuance and passion and backstory uh, versus watching some weird synthetic performance, you know, Remington, it's going to be, I think it's going to be our choice. And yeah. Remington, any, anything you want to say on that? It, you know, there's a lot of concerns over this, um, and I, I keep trying to. I, I believe that uh, you know, every time there's a new technology we've seen come into an ecosystem that disrupts the ecosystem, um, there's been you know people that have lost jobs, and there's been um changes that have you know i'm just looking at history that have affected uh, the workforce in that ecosystem and there's been an adaptation to that change that we have that has created new opportunities I'm trying to be an optimist here and so you know i i think that you know what you may see from you know, certain studios or certain um, potential uh, players moving in, in a, you know, moving this equation forward will be, there will be another reaction that is going to be another, you know, opposite reaction. This just happens through nature. So, you know, I just come back to it and think that, you know, if you're in, if you're in the game um, and, and the game is being played with, these pieces of technology, it really is is important to play with that technology yourself. 
That's that's what I would say. And and you know, and and we're here to to try to help you figure that out. Yeah, that, that that that's great, both of you. And I have a response to this too. And I think you know, Heather, you bring up a point, and and this is what I've been saying over and over again. We were born to, and we tell stories by the fire. Did you go away, Heather? You still with us? No. All right, well, I'll play it back for you. You know, guys, we were born uh, to this, or there you are, Heather, good to see you. We've been telling stories by the fire since we were cave people. And those stories by the fire are part of our evolution. They tell us, uh, we'd, we'd learn at the fire how to hunt, how to gather, what not to eat, uh, how, to, how to raise our children and everything else. And the stories that we told, if you go all the way back to Joseph Campbell, are integral to who we are. So that we're going to be telling stories that actually mean something to humans. Computers are going to be going for, uh, if, it's, if it's monetized by a corporation, it's going to be going toward the algorithm to spit out what people like and make more of that with AI. I totally get that. But there is a reason I think that uh, Marvel movies have been suffering lately. Because I think people are, are, are seeing the flash in the substance. But I got to tell you, uh, there are also simple movies like Coda that absolutely touched my heart. And I don't think a synth will ever be able to do something like that. And if a synth has, it's already this singularity and we're going into a new area of storytelling. The humanity of it, uh, computers don't need anything. We need acting 101. What do I need? What do I need from the other person? What's my conflict and how am I getting it? If you go to real down basics, I set my intentions, all right? Uh, if you're a writer, boy, you gotta do that in every scene. I mean, I, I've written a screenplay uh, and I, I, I've written screenplays. And I got to tell you, every word counts. And if it, doesn't bring the, if it doesn't bring the plot forward or it doesn't address character, it has to be thrown out. Computers don't understand this. And in that way, I do disagree with Peter, which I don't think they're going to be you're just going to have some prompts that are going to write a screenplay. I think uh, maybe in 10 years you will. But uh, if people are protected by contracts saying that you can't do that, uh, use, a, use AI as the artist like the, w, the Writers Guild has, there's gonna be human input. That's my opinion. Um, and, and yeah, there's gonna be a lot of really synthetic entertainment out there and that's gonna be, that, that's gonna be for some people. It's all right, so long as we get paid and we get hired and there, yeah. Uh, Heather, I know you wanted to say something else. Uh, uh, that's right, cause you unmuted and then, and, then I, and then I gotta go, and then I gotta move on. Yeah, no, I appreciate the answers. Um, I guess I just sort of feel like, why do we have to sort of like take it lying down just by kind of throwing our hands up in the air saying like, oh, well, I guess this is the way of the world. Like, guess we're headed towards, you know, like automation and everything, even of every job, like supermarkets. Okay, that's one thing. But with this, it's like, we're all kind of signing away our futures and like our children's futures and all of that. And I, it just feels really short-sighted to me. And I wish, I feel like as actors, we're really people pleasers and, you know, I relate to that, but I feel like, I feel like this is just like not the time for us to like, just kind of go along with the wave of this. Yes. And, and I, I wish, I wish that there was like, kind of more of a concerted effort to like, say that we're concerned about this and that it's not just um, like our industry necessarily, but it's like, I mean, and I, I've been told like that the eyes of the world are really on us right now, not to be dramatic, but like uh, I got a DM or a comment for someone who said like, hey, I'm in like a, a whole small, a smaller country and you're looking out for um, speaking out, you're speaking out on behalf of me, of like me being in a small country and like my smaller industry. And so I, I really feel like right now we're at such an influential time and even the government is paying attention to all of this and you know the upheaval with open AI. I just really feel like you know it's not it's not just like decided that this is going to be the future and that's that. I understand that CAA has scanned their talent, but I still feel like the A-lister is only a small part of our union. I feel like SAG, you know, like represent is supposed to represent all of us. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm, I'm frustrated and I, I, I wish that there was like more of a leadership effort to organize I, I, us all together. I'm gonna have to and, and say that we don't like that. 
I'm going to have to cut you off here because of time, but I just want you to understand. Uh, I know that there are 140 people in this room. If you are waiting for leadership to lead, you're not understanding the power that you have. If you organize and you set your intention to it, you heard my commitment. That's my commitment. And, and, and I choose to lead in this and I'll take all the help I can get because I don't know everything. Heather, if this is a concern of yours, start writing, yes. start putting together with people and lead and call me. And if I can help you, I will. We have to do this together. Okay. We don't have much time, my opinion. If I we agree. Write, okay. Time. okay. Thank you. Do all you right. think that, do you think, do you think that there's a way forward without going, you know, digital digitalizing us and everything? All, all due respect to the hyper real in Remington. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 can we answer that quickly? Remington, you want to answer that? I don't think there is any future. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, mean, I, th I think you need it. I think, you, I think you need to have it to play in, in this field. Yeah. And, and you know, you know, the way of the dodo bird, uh, our, our we're going to hit the singularity, I think. So, you know, and, but but like, hey, but that, theater's going to be around. There, there'll be other there'll be other platforms. There's other ways to do this. There's always going to be, yeah. you know, video camera or whatever. I mean, I just think that we'll start to see an evolution now. Um, I'm but, not sure if it's a revolution, that, evolution. I don't know what the, what to say it is, but it's going to change. Kurzweil would say evolution. That, that, that's, that's I'm gonna have to that, that's we I have something important to say. That's where I disagree. I feel like as us as SAG has the power to say that no, we don't want that future. Mm -hmm. And I think that the A-listers are probably scared because we have so many numbers behind us. And star power doesn't run the industry industry entirely. Like our voice counts too. Yep. So that's where I, I'm frustrated. I do believe that there's another path forward, and I don't think it's just theater or AI. Yep. I feel like I feel like the studios are rushing into this too hastily because of the you know launch of Chat GBT this past year and everything, and, and I feel like they're just kind of banking on this. Yes. So right. I, I wish that there was like another perspective on hey, there's like another path forward on this. Yeah, well, I have to tell you, Heather, find like-minded people. The better idea always wins. If you have a better, if I could shut, if I could shut it all down now, I told you I would, if I were dictator. But again, I'd be facing a $90 billion company. So uh, it, a better, if you have a better idea, I'm with you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk more. Um, Eric is next. After, there you go. Hey, Eric. Oh, you're muted again. Let me try again. Am I good? Yep. I am good. Great. So to uh, what Heather was talking about also, uh, to uh, I attended the the meeting at Cooper Union last week uh, that uh, Duncan spoke at Ray Gonzalez. And there were, not, there, were, there were a lot of people in the queue, Q and A's. And I think the big, the great sense of it was about just the basics. I mean, 140,000 or, or 120,000 of us are basically uh, background, stand-in, voiceover individuals, uh, an, an occasional principal or an under five contract. And uh, one of the questions that was raised, and I know this is sort of like rudimentary to everything we're talking about. And thank you, by the way, for everybody that's here tonight to Martin and to Remington and of course to you, Eric. I really greatly appreciate the time and, answer, and, and being here. So I've tried to ingest as much information as I can to make a informed decision. Now I've already voted, so I'm gonna leave that aside, okay? But with that said, I think to just the rudimentary basics, I'm telling you that probably last, well, the last contract, only 26% of the people voted, right? 26.4% of the people voted. I've only been SAG for five years. So it says to me that 75% of the people were seemingly not paying attention. It seems like AI clearly is that hot button issue. And it's unfortunate that these meetings that have been accelerated in the last month, part of it is to sell it and others of us who are like, uh, like Heather, who are fearful, right? You know, for our for our for our, the immediacy of our work, um, feel they possibly coerced or not. You know, we're going to be asked to sign a contract. And Eric, my, part of my question is: is this contract, or that we are going to be asked to sign separate and apart from our bookings, right? 
we don't know what that content is. We have nobody really to, other than, you know, there are only six SAG reps for or the tri-state area, for example. So who, who has our back when we are there before we put our pen to paper? That's what's part of it, what I have to say. And, 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 and with that said, and how do we negotiate? Because, you know, uh, Remington, you brought it up, and I really appreciate what you were saying before about sidecar and some of the, some of the, some of the language and vocabulary, is how do we then go about to, for ourselves, negotiate our digital image, our use? How do we go about to do that? We don't have attorneys with us. We don't have anybody from SAG representing us. So we ourselves are responsible for ourselves. And, and I think there's a lot of, a tremendous amount of uncertainty amongst membership, I would imagine. That would be my, that would be my strong, strong feeling. And I like the thought of licensing ourselves. I like the thought of being able to monetize ourselves, right? I like the idea of being able to go forward with somebody like a Hyperreal to help me, you know, navigate these, these waters as they're basically coming as almost like a tsunami at us. Eric, That's what it feels like. I hear you. What's your question? So the question is really, how do we go about, to, I'd like to really know, as how do we go about to negotiate? How do we go about to negotiate our digital image so, we have, so we're relevant going forward? Uh, well, I'd love to say that, that uh, I mean, uh, this is the kind of question, honestly, for the legal team in, in, in terms of that. But I'll say this. Um, we don't have to be powerless. Okay, I'll be, I'll be honest, this has happened to me twice. I've shown up on set, I've been told I have to shave my chest. One time I showed up, I, I was at co-star level. I showed up and they said, yeah, we're gonna have to shave your chest. I said, wait, what? No one talked to me about this. And she looked me in the eye and said, either that or we replace it. Okay, uh, uh, if it were now, I'd be like, you don't have to replace me, I'm leaving. I'm not gonna be treated like that. I go, I I'd call my agent, I'd, I'd figure it out. Uh, if you, if you wanna negotiate, uh, then come to people like me or other people who do what you do and say, what do you have in your clauses? Uh, you know, negotiating your own contracts as an actor is not easy. I mean, that's why agents are around because they can kind of buffer and they don't have to be the talent. So uh, the, the, the answer is uh, you go to leadership and you say, we, 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 need, to, we need to work this out. And, and then you don't take no for an answer. And then you ask people who, oh, Eric, what, what do you do in the business? Myself? Yeah, I am. I, I'm, I'm often featured background, uh, right. you know, SNL, I've, I've had some lines. So I'm basically, you know, rudimentary and a lot of stand-in work. Oh, so, oh, oh. okay, great. Yeah. So I would talk to every stand-in and say, hey, what are the problems here? What kind of contracts do we need to build? I would go to everybody uh, who does, uh, you know, one-liners, et cetera, and say, hey, what did you guys do when, when, when you booked this? Because at the end of the day, over six months, okay, they may, they, they may rip you off a little bit that while we're working this all out. But if you're watermarked, then at some point we're going to set it in stone and that's what's going to happen. And so that was the first night, for example, I myself heard the word watermark. I mean, I knew what watermark is, but I didn't know about it in relevance to us. And unfortunately, our union, um, and I don't want to disparage the union, so let me, just, let me step back from that because I don't want to politicize this, but there's really been very little insight into AI other than trying to say, it's, you know, it's a billion dollar contract. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a billion dollar win for the union. But how about for, like I said, for the eighty-six percent of us that you know are basically you know you know top feeders you know in, in our industry that we so love and are passionate about? Well, yeah. I, I, the reason we haven't had the blockchain, uh, the watermarking conversation, is because it's been put off. Honestly, it's not like I didn't talk about it in July, uh, but our leaderships had their reasons for doing that, and I have to say uh, we're in a union, and I, ha I have to. Uh, but I came out, and tonight. And I had this conversation for the first time because I didn't think it could wait anymore. And I had the, I, I had the amazing Sean Sharma to give me a platform and send out an email and create this place. And Eric, you get to do that. You know, I ran for leadership because I knew I had to run for leadership. Talk to people. Uh, you can make a difference. I talked to a lot of people. We even talked back and forth last this week, but you might not remember, but it's okay. I, I do remember you, Eric. I, I'm Thank with you. you. Thank you. Dosa. Hi. Hey, what's going on? Hi, guys. It's been an interesting conversation. So, yeah, I've got a couple questions. Uh, real quick thing about me. I'm not part of SAG, but I had a program that was encrypting 3D stuff, one South by Southwest in 2017, uh, using uh, 
blockchain technology for digital assets. Because, you know, I worked uh, a little bit in the industry and, you know, just seeing stuff that was, you know, just stolen in China and they were 3D printing it even after like two months after we built it, you know, it was just, it was crazy. Um, I do, you know, I think that uh, Remington brought up a good point about looking at the music industry and how they tackled issues. And, you know, he keeps on bringing up Napster too. And Napster fell apart because of all the lawsuits, all the copyright lawsuits. And, you know, they kind of disintegrated and Spotify took over. Um, I have a question for Remington, though, uh, for Hyperreal. A couple questions, actually. If, you know, if you do mark all these actors, and I think SAG is a, probably a best case scenario. There's, what, 160,000 members or 200,000? I think it's a great case scenario to, you know, to what's it called, identify, you know, uh, tag all the actors or even a small group of that. And would it, like, what's it called? Would it, could you implement it within like YouTube or any kind of case scenario where it starts to strike it down? Like, you know, you play just a sample of a Michael Jackson track, even a remix and Twitch and YouTube will just strike that down so fast without even thinking twice. Uh, is that something that can be done? Yeah, I think so. And, and that's, and it would that, require that's the definitely law, the goal. Right? That's the goal. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, Remington, I mean, look, we talked about this. Let's say you tried to see your nose go across at Mach 2. But digitally, if it's digitally watermarking blockchain, it'll automatically clock. And, 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 and like, it, it's just, you know, the whole goal is to, is to figure out how to do this a way that's, uh, that's effective. That's all. Um, uh, but and okay. the, I mean, the question is actually, have you utilized it yet on, you know, any kind of like just any kind of format, if any, even with likenesses too. Uh, and according to AI, you know, when you have the, what's it called the, and Martin brought this up, Martin's actually pretty aware of my case. I just, I got awarded the patent. My, my partner stole it from me. So now I've been awarded the patent again. So it's been a crazy wild ride for me, but I've been monitoring this and, you know, the whole SAG and the AI thing. I'm trying to build up more patents to go against AI. Uh, but when it comes down to the blending technologies too, is it good enough to like, you know, the decipher, like that looks 80% like, you know, uh, like, uh, any of you guys, like, you know, just, you know, if it does look like Remington, you know, if it was like 80% Remington, he's like, this should be flagged just because it's very, very similar to Remington. Yeah, those synthetics are going to be the, uh, the they're going to be the wild cards in the equation. You know, so we'll, we'll have to see yeah. how well we can identify the components of them. Yeah, um, and, and just keep in mind that we're, we, de we're dealing with a TV theatrical contract. We're doing very, very high resolution and the technology yeah. is not there yet to handle it. But I have to tell you, when we go to interactive, I think it's going to be more of a, of a conversation. And quite frankly, I think if you play the wizard in the Badlands and somewhere in, in a massive online role playing game and someone encounters you and talks to them, you should get a little token too. I think it could go, go across all media. The question is, yeah, how do you cover, how do you plug all the holes? Isn't that what we're talking about? And, and, and dealing with the sense, I mean, nobody knows. A, a year ago, there were no synth. I mean, there was no generative AI. You know, this is a wild west. There's no legislation practically. You know, um, real quick, though, I do think you guys are on the right path. I mean, or just remember the whole Napster fiasco and, you know, Lars from what's it called? Metallica was, you know, in heat just because he went against it. But I do think that it's, you know, by putting it in you guys hands and trying to change legislation uh, about it is probably the only factor that really what's it called that will really make a difference. I mean, I do think that what's it called uh, the industries or the, you know, the studios powers that be. Uh, they're definitely not going to sign off on this <laughs> for sure. They definitely want the new technology. If anything, will cut costs at the end of the day. For them, and I have a conversation to have. Why? Why it could actually help? They'll, they'll probably save more money than they'll spend on us, and they'll probably make a lot more money. It, and uh, that's a conversation that needs to happen. And I think uh, I need to gather that conversation so the producers understand that we can unlock like trillions of dollars with AI and everybody can actually uh, be happy. I don't think they have it out to get us. I think they have to collaborate with us, but they're working, they're, 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 you know, they're, they're bargaining hard. Uh, Dasa, yeah. I, I, you know, Remington has to go in a few minutes. I no, thank you guys so much. Though. Thanks for putting this together. Though. It's been very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, you're on the air. 
Uh, hi there. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, thank you guys for uh, this. It was very informative. Um, I did have a few questions. Um, you know, I, I agree with what Martin said about, um, you know, people wanting to have, you know, a soul behind the eyes of the uh, performers that they're looking at. This, I don't think that's going to go quite away. Like theater hasn't gone away, you know. Um, but what I do worry about is that um, with the scenarios you guys are, are with the scenarios that you guys are um, talking about here, um, basically there's no there's no skip stunts or crews in this. It's just going to be the likeness of the actors that get paid, correct? And oh. like, at, at least in in this section of synthetic creation of films. Like you, you would like you're saying that you block, put the likeness of an actor on a blockchain, and then in those synthetic films that don't actually use crews, or maybe even you know takes half of production days away, then and the 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 actors is, is used because like most of stunts, you know, I mean I, I'm I'm a stunt man myself. Eighty uh, percent of my work, you know, is like two seconds on screen, and if I'm doubling somebody. I don't, my likeness doesn't matter. Actually, it's their likeness that matters. I'm just physically doing the the pro, the the, um, the stunt and then it goes back to them for a little bit, right? So, but at this point, if we're talking about a digital replica of, a, of, a, of an actor, um, blockchain or not, then we're talking about that actor, that actor's synthetic person, a, a synthetic double, or, a, no, sorry, their, their uh, replica, you know, they get paid out, but everybody, everybody else on the crew and stunts it, 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 on that per, on those particular sections are not um, employed. Correct? There's, there's 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 a very interesting path forward here. There's a couple paths. Like we're we're mm -hmm. really at this place where there's just so many forks. It's hard to tell where it's going. So right. that that's why it's very broadly spoken of in this case. But um, I've had conversations with stunt coordinators who've asked me if they can put all of these stunts into our ecosystem to be licensed out, you know, and, and the reason being is, is because the constantly, you know, the, the, the coordinator, for example, is in Puerto Rico doing st stunt work and he's got to find teams there to work with because they don't have a budget to bring his team over. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it'd just be better if I could just license out the motion of my team and everyone gets paid. So, so there's, then that, yeah. there's, a, mm -hmm. there's a future, I think, where your your actions are part of your DNA. And that's going cool. to be how you get paid as well. Okay. And then so, but if it's the actions themselves, then really you would only need a handful of people to do those actions because the human body can only work in so many ways. And then also, you know, another part of this question that I had was because these, you know, companies will be couldn't they just use a pool of say like hundred actors, put them in a, a sausage, a maker, and then like make sausage actors of like, you know, different combinations of those hundred actors and hundred, you know, factorial different ways. Um, and then anybody, any other actors, and they could do it with dead actors too. And then um, there would just never be a need for new actors uh, after that initial group um, until, you know, what the uh, ASF or whatever his, uh, his acronym was, um, said that you know they're just making copies of copies of copies and then you know the fifth copy down doesn't have the watermark anymore for some you know um but even then i mean maybe maybe it's just like in per per perpetuity because this is in the contract it's talking about um even after your death you know anything that you consent to goes goes on forever um and it, you know then you know we're well, dead actors current actors and then just the first people in the door after this are pretty much going to be on this section of the economy that's here going to be the only ones that are employed. Well, I I, I don't. I mean, I mean that's a conjecture. Uh, there okay. there are so many things that are going to happen. <clears throat> I mean, there's okay. a number of things that are going to happen. Uh, I have to tell you this: if 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 everything goes the way I, I hope it goes, uh, I think the accountants <clears throat> at all the pay at all the payment uh, fulfillment companies like Entertainment Partners and Warner Brothers, et cetera, might have to get new jobs. I mean, they're going to be replaced. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are going to have to get new jobs in this kind <laughs> what we're going to what we're going to do is going to have an impact on people. And there's mm -hmm. no way to know. And quite frankly, you know, do we have another hundred thousand years left? I don't know. But what I do know is that if we make a commitment and we move toward it, and we keep steering our ship because everything wants to flow, float us in different directions. Uh, we can actually achieve what we want. 
uh, th th there are a lot of questions and there are a lot of concerns. I hear it. And, and we need to voice them. But but if we don't mm -hmm. get direction because we're scared, where are we? Well, what what it makes it is curious for me is that I don't even know why SAG is feeding this side of the industry. I mean, I, I, it's like, you know, I mean, I know, you know, motion capture and video games has become a thing. And but video games before was different. Uh, and SAG is a human la labor union. So, I mean, there is going to be a section of the economy that wants to see human performances. That's, I don't think that's ever going to go away per se, but say, you know, 30% of the market is captured by these uh, synthetic movies um, where only a few few actors are needed and the rest is just made in the computer, then like it's going to cause such a huge amount of damage to um, like the human labor uh, market, uh, human labor market of, of film that, you know, once they really want to go back and invest in actually having people do things again, um, you know, that it's going to, there's damage is going to be so great that, you know, they're going to basically have to start over with all new talent because all of the people that had talent, you know, couldn't get work anymore. Well, well thank you. I, I hear you on that. I hear your concerns. And, you know, I, I would, I would, I would go into leadership, go, go, go do it. I mean, at the end of the day, we have to navigate our own path and, and this is what I can do. And if you're within the commitment that I'm talking about, uh, you have my email. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anthony, um, I'm, I'm unmuting you. Can you hear me? Yes. Sasoja, my old friend, I am oh, so, birthday. I am so proud of you, my friend. I am, I, I got to pay you a compliment. This is the first time in about two weeks that I've been inspired. I, it's been a rough couple of weeks, my friend, just oh. this whole, this, just dealing with all this. Um, I want to thank your two guests here for being here tonight. You guys, uh, volunteering, volunteering your time tonight is means a lot to me. You, uh, you, uh, you know, your 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 unique perspective and expertise and insight is so valuable to us because we're just dumb actors trying to figure out what the hell to do in this situation, and uh, it's it, 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 your time has not been wasted. So anyway, I have questions for both of you. Um, and Eric, by the way, um, I'm joining your army right now. Put me to work, whatever you want. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yours. I'm your, I'm your, I, I will, I'll go to work for you guys. I, there's a lot of debate going on right now, um, uh, about how long, uh, before this stuff is going to be practicable in terms of being put into, to use, uh, for lack of a better phrase, what's the event horizon we'll pay a little homage to eric's background on when when digital replicas are going to become kind of a more standard practical practice um so a lot of people saying we don't need to worry about this till the next contract it's not really even going to happen the technology is not there yet i'm of the mind that we have to get out in front of this with everything we've got now we have a very, very poor history of kicking things down, the, kicking the can down the road and then never being able to make up. And as far as I'm concerned, AI and in particular generative AI is the grand poobah of kicking things down the road. We just cannot afford to do it. So, and I know that you're gonna be speculating, but I want your unique perspective based on what you guys know about this business from your perspective, I mean, you know, I, I go up for a guest star, a juicy guest star on a CBS Paramount show, and they want to hire me and they say, okay, you got to come in and get scanned. I, I see that ha I see that becoming standard practice before long, just as a scan to, you know, we have to scan for our duplicates. Uh, we run out of time or they need to do a reshoot or they decide they want to just use my duplicate instead of doing a reshoot or any of those scenarios, which we have some protections for in the the new tentative agreement, so that's good. But um, when 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 do you think this is going to start to happen? That that it's going to become more cost effective for them to just say, you know what, we're not going to call everybody in tomorrow to to get this this these couple of shots that we didn't get by the end of this shooting day. Uh, everybody take the day off tomorrow. Crews don't come to work. Actors don't come to work. Um, we're just going to spend the money in in studio and 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 recreate this. I I feel like this is something that is a lot close. I feel like AI is accelerating. The tech is accelerating exponentially 
And I feel like this is something that's going to happen much faster than we're giving it credit for. And I feel like waiting until 2026 is going to be too long to get to really make sure we get a hold on this. But I, I, I'm just curious to know what, what you guys practically think about when this is going to become a, a kind of a commonplace reality for us, both digital replicas and synthetic replicas starting to pop up as co-stars, guest stars, you name it. Guys, could be for all. Could be for all three of you. There's, yeah. there's, um, you know, there's, there's digital stars that are in shows that are currently airing in Asia. Um, wow. They've adapt, wow. adapted this sort of thing. You know, uh, Asia, Korea. Um, they're, they're more. You know, Japan. They're more advanced in this, in in this uh, <laughs> usage uh, of of these. Wow. Okay. So. It, that's happening. Um, there's, uh, I think though that you're going to see the generative type of entertainment products happening uh, on formats that may be short format on like phones, you know, TikTok level mm -hmm. type of things, and that 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 probably is is what we're going to be seeing tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. Where you know this is you know. When it gets to film, uh, to the level of a high fidelity, 4K uh, image, you know, um, and it's it's uh, you know I think it's soon. I, you know, I don't we don't know specifically, but you're absolutely correct. There is a lot of um, advancements in generative AI that are moving very quickly, and um, you know we we just don't know those answers right now, but mm -hmm. but. Uh, Martin? Yeah, I mean, you know, we could do it right now if we wanted to or needed to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think it's obviously the go-to for us. You know, we're, we want a human performance unless it is a matter of, you know, safety or we can't quite get that performance out of, out of mm -hmm. human performance. Um, but again, like, you know, yeah, the same could be happening if you, even without your consent based off of the images you post online. I mean, that's kind of the reality of the digital age for all of us, you know? So yeah, it's an issue to, to keep a, a front in your head <laughs> for all of us, because yes, it's going to affect, uh, you know, it can affect all of us. I don't think it has to be the end all be all or the doom of all of us, but obviously if your likeness is being used, you don't have a, and you'd let's just say that, it's used outside the context of your original agreement, then for all for all reasons, you should have a, a, a mm -hmm. fair lawsuit there, you know? Um, one, but yeah, the answer is it can be done. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, and one I, quick. And I will say ahead, that, Eric. because uh, this for me is a very important thing. I've always had this really fun vision of the future. I think, see these glasses right here? I think in a few years, you know, Apple came out with its $3,500 glasses. They're cutting it down to 1500. Ray-Ban has a thing. Pretty soon I'll be able to put these on and I'll be able to, and I'll be able to interact with the world with a HUD. I'll be able to watch movies in front of me. Apple Glasses can do that now. I will walk down the street and I will be get driven advertising based on my social media preferences and everything else. I think mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. Uh, I think, and this is, I, I, I don't mean to be indelicate with anybody here, uh, I think the reason uh, QuickTime and MOVs took off is because of the porn industry. I think there's going to be a lot of innovations and it's the biggest moneymaker on <laughs> people are going to want to shag somehow. One person being <laughs> one person in New York. And I think a lot of technology is going to be derived out of that. I think I'm going to be able to have lunch in Paris and you're going to with you. I'll be in Paris. You'll be in New York and we'll sit down. It will be as if you're not even uh, we're not even away. I think I think families can reunite in virtual worlds. I think we're going to all have our own avatars. If you look at Snow crash by uh by uh boy so why am i forgetting his name necronomicon oh somebody put it in the gibson. chat snow crash. Gibson. no that was neuromancer anyway snow crash uh uh, uh we, we may very well have of as as remington said avatars and i think our avatars will be customizable and i think just like in games our avatars you can buy add-ons and i think you're going to be able to scan yourself as an actor mm -hmm. younger mm -hmm. and green hair well, yeah like like take like like this this thing we all have in our pockets here this phone mm -hmm. just just to to your example Eric this has been around since two thousand and seven two thousand eight right in tech cycles that's forever it should have been replaced by now mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like in technology cycles that's 
very long. We're overdue for replacement in that technology. And so, you know, something's something's on, on the horizon that's coming very soon, you know, to, to do this. What we're going to like, I think where a lot of this stuff is happening, um, you know, is outside of the film industry in many ways. You know, it's an interactive, it's in it's in different parts of the industry where, you know, you have a conversation with a digital human and you're able to, in, 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 you know, in a persona, in, in a game engine, and it's talking to you like what Eric showed. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, you know, it's a spectrum of opportunities. Like what we see it is like, it's like a wheel. And at the hub of the wheel is you and your digital identity. And all the spokes coming out are different um, verticals for you mm -hmm. to be in. So that way you can have these opportunities. One spoke is the film and entertainment industry mm -hmm. that we know of, but there's many other. And so, you know, what SAG is, I think what they're doing is rightfully looking around at all the spokes that are happening and trying to see how the usage is happening there and trying to find ways that it, it kind of works within the infrastructure of, of, of cinema, you know? But yeah. You know, the opportunity, you know, I don't know about the opportunity, but the capabilities, the opportunities, these are all very broad and where you may see one thing, um, one vertical that may seem like it's changing quickly. There's other opportunities that are out there that um, are going to, I think, be <laughs> incredible, you know, so there will, you know, I don't want to go off on all of them, but I mean, like there's, you know, you know, kids will have virtual friends that they'll play with. Mm -hmm. We'll have virtual friends that we talk to and will talk back to us. And um, that could be you. Why can't it be you? <laughs> Why can't you be licensing that out and making money every hour I talk to them? Yeah. So and, and you know, there's, 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 there's more opportunities that need to be explored. And I think that that's part of the equation here. So, you know, um, you got to you got to get the licenses. You got to get the licenses, the contracts, everything in order to protect what you have and your capabilities. And then you have to explore the technology verticals and understand all the opportunities that are coming out. Once and you be, ad asset, be adaptable. If you, yeah, yeah. If you're not digital, you don't have that asset. You don't have all those opportunities. One thing that so one thing that well. left. Yeah, yeah we, we, that we left. We have to no move. Problem. On. Just just really really quickly. Wind this up. Yeah. One thing that leapt out to me was when Eric said, what are we going to do about this? And uh, and you said, own it. Uh, Remington said, own it. And I, I have I felt that from the beginning of this. Um, and I it rings true to me right now. I feel we need to own our digital uh, likenesses um, and we need to be able to tr uh, trace them and watermark them so that we can be compensated for them. And then finally, I'll just leave this with you guys if you want to answer it. Um, um, uh, never mind. You know what? Go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. Go ahead. I'll, I'll save it for next time. I just want you guys to know because there have been a lot of questions. You cannot copyright a human being. Just so, just so we're clear. Anything but that you can, but how, but how do we how do we own our digital likenesses? Isn't that what we've been talking about? Yes. Yeah. Bear with me. I'm going to meet you, but I'm going to say this: you, you you can't copyright yourself. Anything that a human makes uh, can be copyrighted. I would argue that I am my mom's creation, and she could have should have been able to copyright. Uh, me, that would have been really, I, I'd, I'd let her have that copyright. And then when she passed, it would go to me. And uh, otherwise, if a human does, if a human doesn't make it a sunset, a rainbow, a butterfly, uh, it can't be copyrighted. So, and there's 150 years of copyright law behind that. Um, can we trademark ourselves? No. Can we own our digital identities? Guys, the way you own your digital identity is you say, my digital identity is mine. And you work from there and you say you own it. And then whether it's legal or not, you make your own decisions. And then policy will follow. That's my opinion. Uh, Nikolai. Hey. hey. Oh, you got me? I got you. Great. Thanks for doing this, all three of you. Um, this has been a very depressing time, but this is the first actual solution to this potential horrible problem that we're faced with as actors because it's like, how do we not, how do we, 
even SAGs, it's not, it's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be enough to stop this progress. So we need to protect ourselves. My question is kind of for you and Remington. Okay, how does how does this work? You you go into Hyper Real, you get scanned completely. Your voice is ta- sample is taken. Your um, I mean maybe your acting style, all the way you the way you move, everything you do is that sampled by Hyper Real? Is that sampled from all your other performances that you can upload? And then you create this digital replica that moves like you, this digital likeness that moves like you, has the same eyebrow quiver when you're sad, whatever, all these things that make us super unique that you, I mean, it's it would be amazing if you could capture it. And I'm assuming that that's where we're going. But, and, and so you have, is that how this works? And then also, what is the difference right now? It sounds like this is the only way that you'll have it in at a level of, you know, using it in a film or using it in a TV show, because right now the technology for anybody to take your photo, um, you know, based on what you showed Eric and everything, that's, that's kind of low quality. It's for the iPhone is rudimentary right now, but how does that differentiate between, you know, five years from now when somebody can literally take the photos of you that are on Google right now and create their own thing? Is it, is it that in the tracking, you know, with the, with the, how is all right that's two questions but how is the tracking going to prevent that one and am i is anything i've said incorrect because i'm kind of trying to sum no, no you you're right on you're right on there you got you got the the idea here and i think that that there's a world in which new content will be created by creator ecosystems think about all the content creators on on tiktok and think about the, the the level of the influencer that has risen over the last um, decade, right? It has changed the dynamic, um, you know, that that we know currently of of a, a list talent in many ways. Um, so you have you have people who have influence, or they have following of you know a hundred million people. Or, 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 you know, what I'm saying, or, or yeah. not, you know. But th- there's, there's new ecosystems out there. So imagine, you know, I mean, I, I've already seen this. I've seen, I've seen a program that takes, the t- that has taken the top twenty IP movies, like Harry Potter, Star Wars, you know, the whole list of them, and you, you prompt it. You just basically say, I want a new story. Um, I want it 45 minutes in duration, and I want it for a 10-year-old. And it will prompt out a whole new story in the style of that story with the characters from that story and generate effectively a script. Okay, this exists currently today. Um, You know, and, and, and you could effectively take that script and then prompt out um, that, um, you know, these are actions being driven by different people that you plug in there. This is this is where it's coming from. This is what we've been talking about in many ways. So the future of, of filmmaking may be like the next great director, maybe a 14-year-old girl from Paris who come who puts these things together and and licenses it all ethically with the rights holders getting their pay, their pay, their share on the chain, everyone getting their ledgered share. And they come together in a platform and put it all together with a story. And then they license your digital identity and this digital eye character and it's a star in this thing. And they put it out on social on their on this platform and people right. are now watching the next little entertainment thing that goes on. And it could be a global hit. 100 million people watch it. And you're getting paid every time. Yeah, yeah, that could be the future of entertainment. You know, it's it's it could, maybe it's not cinema. Mm-hmm. I don't know anyone that's going to a movie theater anymore. I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I, you know, people are watching it on their screens. And my son, and when, I sit, when I sit in my living room and I watch a movie on my screen, my kids are sitting there on their phones. So there, there, it's it's generational. It's going to adapt and move. And you're going to see changes and it's going to be something where you got to be in it to make it happen, I think. So, um, you know, it's moving. 
Yeah. No, so I, that, that, I hope that helps. I, no, it, it helps. It's like we, we've got Sophie's choice here. It's like join or die almost, it feels like, because so many of us actors enjoy that process of creating. And this kind of sounds like it would rob us of that for in many iterations of that. But hey, at least we would get paid, which look, it's better than it happening for free. So I get it. I completely get it. And it's definitely going to be needed. Uh, Eric, when you mentioned the token, the the value of that, you know, mm -hmm. you get paid a buck for, you know, every time it's used, how is that value? Are you envisioning that value? Is well, it market value that changes based on how many times it's been seen? Is I'm, it I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, this this is a, a actually a pretty easy question to answer because I worked on Citibank's electronic monetary system. And then we got to move on to Rob. But what's your name, by the way? Because I don't see you up here. Nikolai. Nikolai. Yeah. Um, money is an agreement. It's simply an agreement. It's yeah. so that if you have pens and you need chickens and the person who has chickens doesn't want pens, you don't have to go to 17 other people to get to get the, I don't know, the tires that that person wants for those chickens. You just give them money and it's an agreement that it's worth something and it has no inherent value. OK, just like Bitcoin has no inher inherent value. So uh, it's an agreement that uh, the rate of that. What do you call it? Appearance. I'll just call it an appearance. Your digital identity appeared, uh, whether it was sound physical, whatever it was. Um, and then through the blockchain, the value of that appearance is tokenized. And the value is either, is either SAG scale, which is the minimum, but at least it happens or it's negotiated. And then it gets dumped into your digital wallet. It doesn't become money until it goes in your bank account. It, it becomes money, for example, let's say Warner Brothers has a slush fund of, I don't, there's a name for it, I don't know what it is, of, of, of $10 million. That whenever someone takes uh, that, that when it gets transferred, it just kind of goes in and it's all managed by the blockchain. And they can always look, where did my money go? Every penny, where did it all go? It's not a bunch of people at desks anymore. So when it gets transferred over, you can you can actually break down all of your, your tokens to what's in your digital wallet with a report. I think it should be on your iPhone. I should be able to go, where, where did that come from? Oh, my episode aired a lot. And that's where it came from. Uh, and once it goes in your digital wallet and you take it out, it's money. Yeah, no, the transparency of it is definitely appealing. Yeah. I, I'm just, yeah, that's, at least it'll, you know, attract. That's, <laughs> this is the first actual solution to a really existential problem. So I appreciate the, the problem solving. So thank, thank you, you. Nicola. I appreciate that. Uh, Ron, hi. You're on Good the air. You, Eric. Good to see you. Um, <laughs> So uh, I, I actually, Eric, I, I don't have a question. I, I wanted to address uh, a couple of things that I heard. I, I first of all, I joined late, but um, Eric uh, um, Newland had a, a question which I can answer for him. And I also want to provide a little bit of context, if I might. You yeah. know, I, I'm a national board member. I was on the negotiating committee. Um, and so there are a couple of things that I want to, to, to say. And uh, the very first thing I want to say is to make sure that, that people understand that uh, I don't really care how anybody votes on this contract as long as they vote and that they vote from a place of uh, where they feel that they are um, understand. Um, and the, the, before I get to Eric's thing, the, con the moment of context that I want you to have is that we walked into the negotiation with uh, the APTP with a very, very aggressive AI package. And the AI package that we walked out of the negotiation with on that last day was not arrived at until and, and voted on by our body until a half an hour before the deadline that we had been given by the AMPTP to respond to them. So we took this very, very seriously. And we talked about uh, trying to get as many protections as possible. And like it or not, this is what we were able to come up with. The good news that I feel is that we went from having no protection to some protection. The other thing that I think that is good news is that when I talk to you, Eric, and I talk to other people, I believe that the technology that you guys are talking about is something that is attainable. I think that it's something that we uh, can work on. Um, over the next two and a half years, we're going to be meeting with the AMPTP every six months to talk about how the technology is actually being used. We're going to start having W and W uh, at some point where we can take in information from people about how it's being used, 
And if people are and have the stomach for it in two and a half years, if uh, we don't get the kind of protections that we need, we can go on strike again. So there's a whole bunch of things that I think that people have to understand is that um, I think that when you kept talking about talking to leadership, I, I want you to know that leadership is hearing you. They're hearing it very, they're hearing it very loud and clear. But it, what also is, is that, you know, um, we got, we got what we believe we were able to get with the leverage that we had and with the facts that were on the ground. And I understand that people may not be satisfied or may have other opinions, but I'm just giving you that context. So what I wanted to talk to about to Eric was um, this question that he had about negotiation. And he said specifically, and I want to talk just specifically about his situation of being a background actor or a stand-in. Oh, that, that gentleman and, spoke earlier. That, right, exactly. Right. And it actually, I can extract, I can go a little bit farther, but I want to start over there. The fact is, is that for, if you are a background performer or a stand-in, the negotiation is going to be rather simplistic. You're going to be offered scale and they're going to give you an informed consent. And the informed consent is going to tell you what it is they intend to use your digital replica for. You probably will not be able to, at that particular point in time, have much of a negotiation about what is in the informed consent. They're telling you that you're going to be working on scene A, B, and C, and we want to have your digital replica to be used in scenes A, B, and C to do these things. Are you willing to do this? And if you are, you're going to receive a scale payment. The place where stand-ins and background, uh, really not stand-ins, background, are going to have a place to negotiate is should they want to use that digital replica for something that is not in the informed consent. If they want to bring you back for another day for another scene, they are going to have to say to you, we would like to do this. Here's a new informed consent. And at that particular point in time, you have all the negotiating power in the world. First, because you are not, you do not have to grant that consent at all. And if they really want that consent, you can negotiate more money for it. You can go above scale. First of all, if you if you chose not to negotiate at all and simply said yes, they would owe you scale. So you that is you're always the floor. Scale is always a floor to negotiation. But you will have the ability to to negotiate for more money, or you can tell them no. They are the, at, at that point in time, and that is where the power for a background person uh, uh, lies. For a principal actor, when you're talking again, uh, who, who's going to negotiate for you? Primarily, it's going to be you and your agent. They are going to still have to give you as a principal performer the same kind of informed consent. They may be saying to you something like, we want to use this in case you die. We want to be able to finish the product. It may be that simple. We're only going to use your replica in case you die. It may be very specific. In this particular scene or these scenes, we need to have you because you're going to be in a, uh, a, a hazardous situation where we don't want a tiger to eat you. You know, we want to, you know, it may very well be something like that. During those particular points of times, because you have an agent and because you are in a different position than a background performer, even when you are a, uh, a day player. If you are uncomfortable with certain things that are in that informed consent, you have the ability to negotiate about it. If at the end of the day, you're not able to come to a, a, a place where you're comfortable, you may choose not to, ch to take the job. But again, if they go to a point where it is beyond your informed consent, before where they ask you for anything that is, that is not in there, and they have actually started filming with you, you are in a very strong position. Because now they've invested in you, and now they need you to agree to something you didn't agree to before. So those are some of the things that people need to keep in, in mind when they are talking about negotiation. The original negotiation will probably be the most difficult one for people to, to deal with, because if the producers are doing the, their job and their due diligence, they're going to be communicating to you exactly what they want to use you for. That is what our contract, this contract, if ratified, is going to be at, uh, requiring of them. So if you don't like what they said, either you can try to negotiate to change it, or you can have an informed decision that tells you this is not the job for you.
So that's what I wanted to share with you guys, because I think that you need to have that kind of context and understanding that you really are not left out completely in the wilderness here. It's not, they, they will not be able to make you do something that you have not agreed to as part of your informed consent. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Yeah. And, you know, some, someone actually mentioned that, you know, they're, they're not going to, they're going to ask for it before they book you. And yes, absolutely. We have 48 hours. Now, oh, now let's be clear about that. I want to make sure there's not a misconception about that. It is 48 hours or at the time of booking, because there are some times when something happens that will come up 48 hours in advance, but the uh, less than 40 hours. But the key thing here is it's you're supposed to know what they're asking you to do before you hit the set. If you hit the set and they give you a piece of paper in front of you, and the terms on that informed consent are not the terms that you and your agent agreed to in your deal memo, you, you, that's not, you, you don't have to do it. That's not the job. So, mm -hmm. so that, that's very, has to be very clear. You are not, you are not supposed to be surprised on the day when it says, uh, when, if they, to, to try and change what you agreed to, all right? So that is where that protection comes in. Thank you, Ron. I really appreciate that. Uh, sure. and, and thank you for, for the energy that you're bringing to this, Eric. I think that it's very important for people to understand that there are things that are going to be worked on. There are things that were not necessarily, we weren't able to achieve. And believe me, we tried, with, no, nobody is more aware of the things <laughs> we were not able to achieve than the people who were in the room trying to achieve them. Uh, but I really think that that we are we we have to understand this is this is the beginning of the game. This is not the end of the game. Got it. Yeah, it's a chess game, and we got to look a few moves ahead. Ron, uh, you are a very strong advocate for for extras in this business, and I know Ron to be a man of his word. And thank you, thank you for piping in. I appreciate it. Sure, thank. Uh, Susie, uh, I'm going to bring you up. Uh, here's the thing. I I, I got to run to the little boys' room for a minute, um, uh, so uh, I will be back to hear it. Uh, you're muted. There you go. I'll be back. So wait or go or what? How, how about this? What would you prefer, what would you prefer to do if we don't? I if, if, I really do have oh, to. No. Go. I'm what gonna you, make you sit there until you have to go. I'll be there. just so go. you. Know, if you guys have questions, I'll stay up as late as necessary. If our guests need to go, I'm committed to this. Remington, you need to take off. It's it's late over here on the East Coast, and I, I've had a really wonderful time meeting everybody. I'm gonna just put something here in the group chat if anyone wants to reach out. And, and Remington, if you'd be so kind, can you just uh, stay for two minutes so that I don't leave the room bare? <laughs> it's up to you. Okay. And uh, I'll just put something, some details on the chat here um, if anyone wants to reach out. And uh, it's been great to be here with Martin and Eric and, uh, and listening to all of the, you know, really detailed concerns and, um, it's been a wonderful opportunity to get to know more about what uh, what everyone is is interested in and how you're looking at this and and learning about you know what the contract means as well. I'm glad that Ron was able to help us and give us some insight there too. It's really important to understand all these from the perspective of what the team has been putting together, the good negotiating team and not jumping to conclusions and things like that. So, um, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to read these contracts and uh, we've been uh, just look, just looking at them ourselves, just starting to look at them too. But we know that uh, it's the, you know, having these contracts are, you know, obviously is the best thing, you know, for you guys moving forward. It's it's standardization. It's the, the, the unity of, of, your, of your union and, um, you know, everything beyond that, that we can do to help support you and help you grow uh, with technology, you know, please don't hesitate to lean on us or reach out and ask us questions. Uh, we just, you know, want to, you know, to help you find your, your way forward. Um, you know, whether it's in film or in, in other opportunities. So just, uh, Again, thanks a lot. So I'll just put my details here while we wait for Eric to come back.
Is your question for Eric specifically, or do you want to start with a opinion? Oops. He's back. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Thank you, you have a great night. And uh, good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Remington. Oh my God. What, what, what a mind, what a spirit, what a talent. Uh, Alyssa, Alisa, Alisa. Uh, I think you're next, so I'm gonna tap on you. Alyssa, hi. Alyssa, I hi, I sorry. If, it was okay, I didn't know if Susie was next and I didn't wanna hop on her, hop on her time. Oh, I, I thought I saw you next. Susie, I didn't no, know. No, I was, but wasn't what? she before me and then didn't ask? Uh, Susie, if you hit me up, let me know if you wanted to speak. Uh, Alyssa, you go now because you're Great. awesome. Um, I guess I've been spending a lot of time educating myself on all things AI and CGI and um, visual effects, primarily so I can educate myself so I can try and help others. And I guess I've been, I want your opinion on this because I've been feeling really kind of forlorn. Um, is the only word I can think of because I don't know why the guardrails that are in the contract, as well as what we are doing on a congressional level with the No Fakes Act and then the No AI Frauds Act, I want to know why it's not enough. I feel like there's all this fear mongering going, and what if, and what if, and I'm scared too. I am very, very scared, mm -hmm. um, but maybe I'm naive that I'm coming from a place of trust and hope, but for me and what I'm, I'm really struggling with is when I try and talk to people, some people who are in this Zoom right now, I feel like so many people are so afraid that they've become close-minded and they don't look at the guardrails that have been put in this contract and they don't look at what we're doing on a bigger level that takes a long time to get done. And I just wanted to know if you can speak to that. Yeah, actually, I want to address that on a level. I just want you to know, uh, I don't know if anyone is a delegate here, but I, I told the delegate chat that I take their questions and their concerns about AI, the fears to which you're speaking, Alyssa. And, yeah. and, and I, would, I would address them and I gave them my word. Now, I showed you that slide and mm -hmm. I show it to you again. And just let me know when you see it. If you feel it actually addresses what you see to be to be some of the issues, let, let me actually go back up to it. It's toward the beginning here. Um, da -dum -da -dum. Yeah, SAG after member concerns. Are right, I going to share my screen? So, for you and the delegates, what happens if my scan is stolen or it's sold unlawfully and it's pirated and used without my consent? Right now, uh, let's say we signed this contract and didn't do any. Uh, any kind of watermarking blockchain track, tra uh, tracking. Uh, my opinion is uh, pretty soon you would find out that the support staff that takes your, uh, your claims is gonna be completely overwhelmed. And you're not really gonna be able to get what you need uh, after, after a certain amount of time goes by because there's just gonna be too many claims and people are working out the technology. If we actually do, uh, now we have consent clauses. And by the way, because it's in state right now, the, uh, the one that, that, that's on the table, California, um, uh, it, consent is actually tied into what's happening in the state and our contracts. So if it is unlawfully done, the state will void the contract. Uh, and also um, uh, we will have recourse in uh, arbitration. Say what you will, that's arbitration. If we put it on blockchain and watermark, uh, I got to tell you what I said this earlier, what we'll do is we'll automatically collect all the infractions of the watermark. And we're going to just print out a big report ledger and we're going to walk up and we're going to say, you stole all of these and here you go. And you're going to arbitrate 30,000 at what, $7,000 a piece. And that'll be that. Um, uh, why can they force us to con con consent to a scan as a condition of hire? This has been made public. The negotiating committee lost that. No, I know all this. And I don't mean to interrupt you. I, I, and I, I thank you for this slide. It's great. And I heard it um, earlier. I guess for me, it's not the fears of this that are my concerns. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that people see these concerns and, and I get these concerns because I have some of them, 
but for me, my concerns are made, are made, I feel a little bit better knowing that we do have the guardrails, albeit as small as they are and loopholes included, there are guardrails in the contract and there, I know that there's stuff happening behind the scenes on a congressional level. So I don't know why it's not enough. It's not enough because look, when they stole my face with Activision, I'll give that a perfect example. Mm -hmm. I don't think they said, oh, let's steal his face. I think what happened is they said, oh, we got a bunch of faces. We want to play. Oh, this one, Eric's got these jaw bones. He kind of looks badass. Let's just stick him on that. All right, I'm moving to the next character. I don't think people are, uh, many people, some are, are, are out to screw anybody. But without, as you say, guardrails uh, that say what you can and what you can't do. You know, look, the reason, the reason that there are um, metal detectors in stores is because there are a lot of jerks out there. I don't steal stuff, but people, you know, people are going to be uh, use bad actor. They're going to be bad. Act I don't mean bad actors for us. I mean, you know, with bad behavior. Or they're going to, uh, or they're going to make mistakes and just stumble over it and and accidentally, you know, not uh, put your name in the credits properly. That happens sometimes, right? So uh, yeah, this is this is some stuff we have to work out. But if we create laws and guardrails, then we can say you're an infraction, and this is the way it's written down. Uh, yes, I love, uh, yes, but I'd love a utopia where everyone did their job. You know what I mean? Uh, we have laws because people are fallible. And uh, by the way, the robot, the iRobot series was all about how those three laws came in conflict. Uh, that's what's so great about Asimov. He created this premise. And then, wow, the one robot kept going in circles and circles because he didn't want to harm a human, but he didn't want to harm himself, but he didn't want to harm a human. And, and that, that happened on a planet in Asimov's world. So, we're, we're you know, laws are very complicated. I hope that helps answer your question. A little bit. Thank you. Uh, and please feel free to email me. You have it. Pasoja.eric. Yes. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you very much. Of course. Uh, okay, uh, we have, uh, how are you doing with time, Marty, Martin? Hanging in there. Good, all right. Alltech, uh, asked to unmute, working on it. Hey, there you go, hi. Hey, gentlemen. Um, shoot, you caught me off guard, but okay. Uh, <laughs> You were next, man. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, look, I appreciate you guys' time. Uh, <clears throat> I, I dove deep into the challenges that we've been dealing with uh, throughout the months with AI. And I built an algorithm to try to have an understanding to see if AI could help me kind of predict. So I built a forecast algorithm to predict what could potentially happen with all of these problems that we're facing. I fed it the most accurate data I could live on the model of as negotiations were changing. Ultimately, what I learned was kind of startling and I'd like to know if there's been any discussion over the following. What it guided me to was in a five year increment over the next five years, due to the misalignment between streaming services and traditional studios, the streaming services will overtake the studios due to their advantages of data and the ease of moving versus traditional studios where they will slowly cannibalize the studios and they're in grave threat. But it didn't end there. Over a 10 to 15 year period, the streaming services have a serious issue with being cannibalized by Google and YouTube due to its data and algorithms and easeability. Now with ChatGPT5, and things like this and what's happening with open AI, we're starting to feel from a tech side that things are moving faster than even they predicted. With that said, have you guys had any discussion? I think it's imperative. I think the studios and streaming services are in serious threat of not existing the way they are. What I learned was the best solution is to come to some kind of compromise between everybody over a long-term vision my suggestion is a long-term agreement over the next 20 years to try to have some kind of cohesive growth before they all get destroyed. Them, they're, in, they're in serious threat, apparently, by the algorithms of Google and YouTube. I don't know how else to put it. Have there been any discussions over something like that? Maybe they don't realize how in threat they are. Maybe they do. 
Does any of this make sense? I appreciate your guys' time. It, it does make sense. Martin, you want to address that or should I? I'll let you, I'll let you carry that one. I'm... Yeah, I'll say this. I'm going to have to go with what my beliefs are. And my belief is that in the next 10 years, we're going to hit the singularity and none of this conversation is even going to happen. So thinking 20 years down the line, uh, honestly, for all I know, we may be colonizing other galaxies if the computers. I, I don't know. It's crazy. It's nuts. You, read Kurzweil, please. If you like these things, read the, read the singularity is near. Uh, it makes so much sense. And uh, the, the other part of it is, yeah, I, I, just so you know, as I mentioned, Microsoft bought Activision. Microsoft bought Xbox. Microsoft uh, uh, is now part of, you know, is, is, is in with OpenAI. Microsoft sells Office software. Somehow this all shifted. Apple is, uh, we've been hearing talk about Apple buying Disney. I think the tech companies personally are going to buy it all. I don't know. I don't think there's going to be a studio or, or a streaming network that, hey, let me give you an example. What's your name? Uh, what's your name, by the way? Luis, Luis Flores. Hi, Luis. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the Netflix. Uh, Netflix has a new VR uh, that, 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 that they put out based on Squid Game. It's called Netbox Squid Game VR. Okay. Okay. It's all happening together. It's all fusing. It's all merging. And as Remington said, entertainment is shifting to the level of not only individual. I mean, look, I just saw a very short film by an independent filmmaker that was all done in AI. And it was very basic. It was very beautiful. It was really cool. Five years from now, wow. So to try to guess what's going to happen in 20 years, it, 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 it's impossible with technology. It, 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 I'm, not, I'm not asking for a guess. What, right. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to propose is knowing, knowing that they are in threat themselves. Mm -hmm. I think it would be logical for all of them to agree to something of an artistic attempt. Hey, um, instead of fighting over this, can we agree to certain terms that the studios will honor the actors and the artists to continue in a, a direction of not the effort is not to the effort is for the actors to help the studios exist not just the studios the streaming services against ai itself mm -hmm. and youtube does that i hope that makes sense yes it does make sense it does thank you luis i appreciate your comments i, I, I appreciate that thank you guys yeah thank you all right uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask if you would, uh, as you continue, I, again, I have committed to being here for the duration. If you have questions, please try to direct it toward questions. Uh, that way I'll be able to answer. Uh, not that you didn't do that, Luis, but I'm just realizing. And I also wanna say something. I, I just got a text uh, from Ron Ostrow saying uh, that I said the NEGCOM gave up on condition of employment. It's untrue, he says. Great, I'm willing to be wrong. Scanning has always been a condition of employment if you agree to admit in advance. Uh, and that's the same tomorrow as today. Just stating to, to clarify the record. Uh, Karen, you're next. Ask to unmute. That's very weird. There we are. Hi, Karen. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Um, so given this new MOA contract wording, you have 48 hours for consent. Do you think uh, it's so, and right now I, there are two options. Yes, I consent. Here it is. It's your property now. You scan me. Uh, and I have no idea what you're going to do with it. And um, given the track record, I know of tracking a lot of things with our SAG legal being overwhelmed. I, I doubt they'll really, unless you're a star, be able to help me. Okay. Uh, so the other one is, no, I don't consent. Uh, but isn't there a third option? I mean, do we, uh, unless we're bound by the SAG contract, can't we just say at that moment of, uh, we want your digital replica, couldn't we say, yeah, I've got it. I've got it licensed and I'll lease it out to you and you can talk to my agent about it. Is yeah. that third option something we can do now? Or is the wording of the SAG contract 
uh, binding us to only them as our guardrails, as opposed to us taking on responsibility for our own guardrails. Uh, Ron, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with Ron also opining on this because he's on the negotiating committee. Do I have that third option to keep my autonomy and, uh, uh, you know, have Remington scan me and uh, license it out that way? Yeah, I, I will say this. I, I'm not going to I can't speak to the contract in the third choice simply because I, I, I'm not going to speak contracts tonight. You know what I mean? But I will say that um, you always have a choice, first of all. And I want to be very careful about the word license. I had to look that up really carefully. Some people yeah. talk about SAG licensing our digital identity, and that's what I originally put down on paper. But licensing is a different conversation. For example, when I when I when I use a Getty image and I pay for a Getty image, Getty right. is licensing that image and Getty is making the profit and Getty is in getting involved in a business transaction. If SAG right. after does it, SAG after it's not officially licensing. It's giving permission and perhaps unlocking that conversation on behalf of the actor. The, the actor it, at the end, if when we say my digital identity is mine, Karen, your digital identity is yours and you license it. However, the guardrails make sure that you don't get exploited. The third option is something that I would say, if we say yes, then, then you go to the W and W's and you, you fight for it. And you also, you know, you, you come to meetings and you take leadership positions and you talk with leaders and, and you talk with people and, and you, make that, you make that move forward. And if we say no, then perhaps uh, you, you bring that up as soon as possible and say you need to insert that into the situation. But I, I don't want to address the contract issues because uh, I, I've said I wouldn't do that. But also, I, I don't have an answer because there are people who have been making the sausage for a long time. Yeah, and you're you're hearing my sausage. I'm so fascinated by you all that 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 the the chicken sausage is is percolating it, and I hope you can't hear it. But I'm I'm starving. This has been really helpful. Um, I don't mean to make it a contract thing. I'm just trying to figure out how much autonomy I have over my intellectual property, myself, my voice. Yep. you know, in the future and what whether we do have real guardrails or not. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you very, very thank, much. Thank, I want to join you, Aaron. Yes, email me, group. please. We can do this. We can do this. Thank I'm, you. Oh, Karen, I cut you off. Were you going to say something? Asked to unmute. I didn't mean to cut you off. If you want to come back, uh, come no, back. no, no, um, no, you didn't cut me off. Uh, somehow I, I might have muted myself. I'm going to, I'm going to eat and listen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Susie, I'm so sorry that you fell off and then they're back in, but at least we're here. Thank you so much. Sure. I'm so happy that you got to do your bladder run and um, thank you to everyone who is still on this call and who has been on this call and uh, especially Mr. Hall. I so appreciate you and Mr. Scott, your amazing knowledge and your uh, passion being so tempered with such patience and such measured ways of speaking with all of us. And my question is, I hope that this is the beginning of many conversations, gatherings that we can all come together uh, to have because it's the old paradigm. Uh, you think education is expensive, try ignorance. And clearly, all of our crystal balls are at the cleaners about this whole issue and where it is. And I would just like to uh, sum up what my time here. And again, thank you so much, especially for those of you on the East Coast. At Thanksgiving uh, dinner, I sat next to a doctor of gigantic repute um, who has written textbooks about the bone structure of the brain and the head. Uh, internationally and uh, is an entrepreneur and an international traveler and had just returned from Dubai and a conference where he was asked to speak and told me of a conversation that he had with a brilliant woman in Dubai at the conference. And it was only when he thought that she had dropped something and he, his hand and he, his wife was standing with him um, his hand brushed against her arm to give her back whatever it was she dropped, that he realized he was speaking with a robot. And this is a doctor, okay? And he said it was only because the skin was not quite skin. This 
technology has been with us for so long, is so beyond anything any of us, our understanding is here. And I say all of that to say this, that this is an opportunity for us to make a whole lot of dough if we can stay cool, harness our fears, get educated and understand exactly how we can monetize this and, and, and have fun in the process. I and agree. Isn't that why we did this in the first place? We're actors. We love oh, performers. We love what we do. I think we've all come to this planet to have as much fun as we humanly can and to look fabulous while we're doing it. And everything else is just dumb. <laughs> so anyway, thank, here, you here. thank you all. And uh, let's gather some more and keep talking and educating. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, so, uh, uh, I think, uh, is anyone having problems raising their hands? Um, if you are, I apologize. Um, uh, let, and just text me or here in the chat and I'll, I'll do what I can. Christian. Welcome. Hey, Eric, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hey, thank you for hosting this. And thank you, Martin, for being here as well. Sure. Uh, I appreciate the time. I know it's been a long, a long talk. So I'll just be quick with my uh, questions. Uh, my question. So uh, as a preface, it's not unknown or it's not a surprise to see the pattern of our history as sag after that we usually aren't really on the ball when it comes to putting in protections into our contracts for new technology especially when it comes into making sure we're getting paid adequately for that new technology. We can go from VHS to DVDs to cable TV to streaming. We've been behind every single time. And I think the continuous, the thing that we hear every time is we'll get it next time. We'll get it next time. Next time is when we'll get it. Next time is the one. And so speaking of this new technology, AI coming into our contract, I'm hearing a lot of the same things. We'll get that next time. Next time is the one. And we still haven't got streaming. And that's been 15 years in negotiations for us to just to get catch up with streaming. So for how much you've been sharing, both Martin and Eric, on how fast AI is moving, do you think we will even be able to catch up if we don't put in some of these guardrails and these protections in now? No. Okay, thank you. That's and kind of what I'm concerned. If we don't put in technology solutions now, we're going to lose the game. I'm just telling you, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. You cannot beat computer. You, uh, the best chess player, that has ever lived, arguably, is Kasparov. He lost in 1996. We're playing checkers as a union in terms of being able to face AI because we don't, we, we, we can't handle, our manpower cannot handle the amount of data that's about to come in when AI hits. It doesn't mean our union isn't great. It just means that we have a certain limitations that are built in. So we put a technology plan together. You're only gonna be, you're only gonna be able to handle AI with AI, my opinion. Uh, I mean, we could put a thousand people in a room to field calls, and I don't know if it'll work. I'd rather have a computer do 20,000 a second. Right. So that's that's kind of my thing. I think we kept hearing, you know, 2.5 years, we can come back to this table. And we could talk about how much energy we would have in 2.5 years to strike again. Mm -hmm. But I think right now, some one of my biggest concerns was that we don't have protections against AI being used during a strike. So if we can pre, pre consented to AI being used before the strike starts and then the strike hits, the studios still have access to that pre-consented AI and they could finish products of uh, productions. They can make promotions. They can continue mm -hmm. their work while we're striking and we lose that thing we had before, which is withholding our labor, which yeah. we can't really do. We have AI moving so advancedly mm -hmm. um, and doing the work for us. So I think one of my concerns is, can we get, is that something that's important? And you kind of answered the question by saying AI is moving so fast, we should probably pre putting guardrails to anticipate the journey rather than hoping that we catch up to the journey along the way. Well, well, well yeah, you know, this is going to be a process. Um, thank you, Christian. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, you got it. Uh, guys, uh, uh, does anyone have questions for Martin Hall, one of the best visual effects uh, uh, people in the whole planet? He's, he's taught the Nomen School no, no, no. 3, 3D for a gazillion years. Uh, he's, like a, he's like a library. If you do have questions for him, that are specifically related to what he does in AI, please, please come in. Uh, Cause uh, I've learned so much, so much from Martin. Um, uh, I, I have someone named uh, uh, Reggie. Reggie, are you next? I, I think you're next. Karen, your hand is still up. I, I think I'm gonna lower it, but if you wanna come back in, please do. Uh, Reggie, you're next, go ahead. Hey. Good evening, everyone. Uh, salute to you, Eric, for carrying this torch. Uh, you definitely, definitely need uh, tech soldiers to help you fight this battle. Uh, given the type of industry uh, this is and all of its, uh, you know, 
creatives um, who aren't so much tech savvy, but uh, just a quick comment and a couple of questions um, regarding that sustainable blockchain uh, question that the person had earlier. Uh, one option there would be uh, Ethereum. Yeah. Um, it's pretty pretty lightweight now since they changed the protocol. Um, and I did have a question regarding the executive order. You mentioned 240 days to take action. I had some specific questions regarding that. I looked at it real quick. I glanced over it. Uh -huh. uh, it, it does mention watermarking twice. It yeah. mentions 240 days three times. Uh, it says that the Secretary of Commerce shall submit a report within 240 days. So my question is, is there anything specific SAC after is tasked with doing, or do we have some sort of um, federal liaison or agent that we will actually report back to the Secretary of Commerce? Uh, you want to take that one, Martin? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Secretary of Commerce? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say is this. Are we going to say this? No, probably not. Yeah, the No Fakes Act that was. Uh, I'm still out. If anybody knows this, I, I don't know that whether it's still on the table or passed in California, but there is a no fakes act in, act in Congress. Look, you don't get through. You think you think we're, we're crazy and like just not telling each other things and stabbing each other in the back and keeping secrets. I got to tell you, the government and the, and the branches of Congress are so phenomenally more complicated on such more powerful issues. Really, I mean, going all the way to hacking thermonuclear war, that I think we need to consider that we're not even in the conversation, and we're definitely not in the digital identity conversation in Washington, uh, in terms of the bills that, that, that I have seen. And I don't know if that's true. I've done my searches, and I've been assured uh, by, by legal that, that there, there are steps being taken, and steps have been made. Uh, that They're not thinking about us at the government. They're not they got their own problems. We have to go, we're in a lead. And as mentioned earlier, with a prototype, if we approach with a prototype, they're going to at least look at it, especially if we report it in a way and we shake the right hands and say, will you just look at this? They'll go, oh, the reason I have this form right now is because it, with all love and solidarity and support of all of our members, other political entities within this union have said, hey, Eric has something to say. Let's give him a voice. So we need to do that in Washington. We need to shout loud. We, I would love to have a march for digital identity. There are a lot of things we could do. Uh, gotcha. Okay. You know, so I'm, there, I'm, there is some door there that we can open and, and yeah, make a I'm, connection. Yeah. Look, I'm going to be in KPCC tomorrow. Uh, uh, I'm going to be on the news in Japan. I'm going to talk about this as much as humanly possible so that the higher ups in government actually understand why. You have to understand. Our digital identity is our business. You take a, a, a carpenter's voice, they can still build. You take a lawyer's voice, they can still write contracts. You take my voice and I'm not going to get a voiceover job again. Okay. You can't take my voice. And so actually, I've actually been talking about monopolies or monopsonies over my voice or being able to use it. Our, uh, th that's a legal thing. I don't know how to go with that. But uh, if you are taking business away from me, and we know how friendly the US is toward business, and sort of just kind of ignoring the people's plight all the way since we, we came here, you'll understand that uh, if we can figure out how to make it a business conversation with, with, the, with Washington, that's a good thing because the US loves money. So I'm just looking at different vectors. Okay, cool. And, and regarding the watermarking, um, that, that's a cool idea. Uh, I think the first step in terms of the, of the technology is to, is, is to actually you know, design the detector uh, and measure its accuracy to determine if if the actual watermark approach will actually work. Yes, and we should also. I, I assuming it is, but you know that's something that yeah, that, well, that's assume, the heart of the technology. You gotta yeah, Reg, first. Well, yeah, and and I say this, I'm not being a, I'm not being a sarcastic. We're also gonna have to email each other. We're gonna have to make some calls. We're gonna have to file some patents, and we're gonna have to get through every single hump. And there are gonna be humps, but I have to tell you, it's leverage technology. It's not like we're inventing something. Blockchain exists, digital watermarking exists. They can yep. be put together. L let, let's work on it. Let's work on it now, not as the Kark said, when everything's done and all the legislation's passed. Got it. Kudos. That's all for me. Thanks. Thank you, Reggie.
I click these ask to unmute like four times and they don't do it. So I'm sorry, iPhone, I'm having a couple issues. I was able to lower Reggie's hand. Hmm. I'm gonna have to look you up on the other interface. Sorry about that. Here we go. I have an iPhone with his hand up and asked to unmute. This is very strange. It's not letting me unmute you. Huh. Anybody have a clue? Want to text me? Anyone ever seen this before? I'm clicking on it. Here's the computer guy not able to click a button. Sorry, but I'm doing it. I'm actually clicking it. Okay, iPhone, I'm gonna keep trying, all right? I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna go to Thias so I don't actually clear the room, but I, I promise you I'm gonna do everything I can to get to you. Um, and I gotta tell you, oh, whoops, one more time, Thias. There you go. And how do I pronounce your name? I wanna get it right, you're muted. Oh, you know what I realized? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, one more thing. iPhone, I think I just should have un uh, unmuted you so we can okay, get no you unmuted me Thais, yeah, Thais. hi hi how are you I was trying to get on my I couldn't keep my hand up it wouldn't stay up I'm terrible at the computers thank you all for this this has been so informative I can't believe it because I've just been wanting to know all the information I did want to ask a question about our AI or our generative generated AI and when will that actually be used to, cause I do um, guest star day work, you know, day player work. I don't do a lot of background, but how is that when they say that we're going, how is that because, and I was a model for years, sorry. I'm, I have so many thoughts in my head cause I've been waiting. Um, I used to be a model and now they're using, taking our modeling pictures and using them and changing them into where they use my face as, a, and they turn my color into another race. And so those kind of things kind of really bothered me. And, and how are they gonna be using it? And when will all of that come about to where they will actually generate AIs of us to be on set? Got it. Uh, first of all, Robert, I see you. I'll make sure you get unmuted for a question. I, if you weren't able to raise your hand, I'll handle that for you. I'll, I'll make sure to take and care. And I of guess that's her. from Martin. I was trying to think that was for Martin more so. Great, Great. Martin, what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it wouldn't be our first go-to at all for you, you know. Um, so, I mean, you know, the intent, the original intent of the way you would be shot or scanned would be the way it would would use you so i you know if it was an afterthought again you would want to uh, negotiate those uh agreements up front but i think it's, you know it wouldn't be what we would go to as but a default way to go to treat you yeah okay. and, I, and i would say at this i just want to add to that at this point there's no way to know how long okay because what i was trying to say earlier when someone was talking i put it in the text is that even though we asked for the contract up front, producers talk, casting people talk. We've been in this business for a long time. I've done a lot of theater as well in New York and they talk a lot. So if you say, no, you, I don't want to do this. Or if you start negotiating after you're on the set or whatever, they're going to talk to each other and say, she's difficult. So then you lose work in the future. So how do we protect our image to where, yes, I'll say use it, but protecting it in a way to where it doesn't get misused? Well, look, the only way you can protect it against misuse is to protect it from misuse before it's misused. In other words, the way you protect a person from um, the, 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 the way you keep a person from driving a car into another car is you create a red light, right? So we have to create all those protections. And, then, and, 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 and there's nothing stopping anyone from, they say, what if people have my digital identity? Well, they may have it. And there's nothing you can do about it. Can they use it? 
And it's when it's used and it's monetized that it can actually be detected. If somebody has your digital identity in a little thumb drive and their dog eats it, uh, it's, it's, it's not any skin off anyone's back. If they take that off your drive, off a drive and they use it to, uh, uh, to, to replace you on any way, then that has to be handled. But when Martin was talking about, and even when Remy was talking about merging different parts of our faces together to wear, because in our contract, it says that they could use our lips or they could use our nose or something like that. And we'd have to go in there and go, oh, those are my lips or those are my eyes. So how do we protect I, us from yeah, merge, those merging yeah, I mean, things? I, I mean, that I think at that point, there's pretty obvious case laws where musicians get riffed to a certain percentage and ratio S screenplays are like okay it's very similar to what i already have but you know slightly different i think that's going to be in the purview of uh, their entertainment a lawyer uh in the in that, at that point but you know i it's going to be very hard to uh to designate you know s certain parts and pieces of uh your your body and like this. Yeah. And let, let me address that as well. A couple of things in that. Number one, if we use digital watermarkings and they put four people in a synth, depending on how we negotiate things, uh, we could have four people get paid. Maybe they it, get, each get paid, get paid 25% because there are four digital watermarks are on it, or maybe they each get full rate. I don't know what'll be negotiated, but that, that, that first of all is possible in the future. Second of all, we have said that if synth is used in the, in the contracts to replace a, a, a human person, uh, then it has to be negotiated. So it's it's in the contracts. I can't talk too much to the contracts. All I, I can know. the technology. And yeah, that's what I'm talking about, the technology of it. How long before that? You don't know how long that will oh, be. Oh, before that technology is right. How about this? Uh, I've talked with Remington. I said, is it going to take two years? He said, it's not going to take that long. I went, really? So uh, that's good. But again, it's not like we have to invent a new wheel. It's all leverageable. So... Uh, really, how about this? And and we know in Hollywood, right, Martin? Uh, if you uh, if you throw money at a movie, it'll get made. It might not even be a good movie, but you'll finish a movie with money, and you won't finish a movie without money. So if we if we figure out a budget and we find a way to meet it, uh, just like any project I manage, uh, you get it done on budget, on spec, and if it goes a little over, you have a little bit of a leeway either way, and uh, you plan the project. Right. And and the and the and the better you plan it, the cheaper it is. We say in design, just so you know, we say in design, cheap, fast, good, get two, take two. So you can get cheap and good, but it takes a long time. You can get it cheap and fast, but it's not going to be very good. You can get it fast and good, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. Sure. So anyway, those, are, I, I had a lot of other things, but they've lost, they've gone out of my head now. I have. I have to be on set in the morning at seven. So <laughs> all right. I, please have all of this. Please do this again so we can talk more. This is wonderful. I'd love to. When Jackie gets better, uh, I'd love to have her on the show. A couple other people as well. Uh, show. That's not what I meant. I did comedy for years. I'd love to have her on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. I know I, there are two more people. Uh, I know that... Um, that uh, that Robert had been raising his hand, and sh and Sarah was was as far as I know first. So I'm uh, I am uh, Sarah. You're unmuted. Yes. Hi, uh, Eric. Hi, Martin. It's Sarah here. How's it going? How are you? Good. Thank you, Good. guys. You guys are troopers. You need a beer or a shot. I'll take both. But thank you for doing this tonight. It has. We need the, we need to know this. You've broken it down. You've given us more knowledge, more understanding. I've sat in many of the, as we all have, in the, like, the Zooms for the SAG, and I kind of walk out or I listen or I log off, and I'm like, what was that? It, it was, it's so confusing. But for you guys, you've actually broken it down, given us the time, and just you know, talk to us like so we can understand it. Because as you know, those contracts, they're actually, they're hard. And I know they do that purposely so we don't understand it. And it's a little scary because you want us to vote, but we don't know what we're voting for. You know what I mean? So kudos to you. I'm all about team Eric. So I will email you. We will get to Congress. At yes, uh, I, I actually want to decentralize team Eric. Oh, okay. I want it to be about me. Okay. I want it to be about my commitment, the team commitment. 
Okay, it, team commitment. The team commitment is to protect, manage, and monetize the digital identities of 170,000 SAG after members at the dawn of artificial intelligence. And okay. that is our commitment. So it's not Team Eric. It's team, what, what should we call it? Anyone, anyone, you have an idea, Martin? You want, <laughs> want to type it in the chat? We're going to call it that, but it can't be about me. Okay. No, no, I meant like in a sense of like supporting and encouraging and thanking you. You know what I mean? That's Thank what you. I meant by that. Thank so. you, Sarah. You have my email too, if you have any things you want to talk about. Yep. And I'll round up the people on my end too. And I hope you don't mind. I'll give them your email so we can come together. And if we have to, we will go to... What was it? Your, I was going to say Parliament House. It's wrong country. We'll go to your government. <laughs> we'll, we'll have the million extras, Margaret. <laughs> no worries. Thank All you, right, thank guys. You, sir. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, sir. Uh, Robert, I'm trying to unmute you here. Ask to unmute. Da, 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 there you are. Hey. Hi. My name's Robert Lutley Moy. I have prepared a two or three sentence question. One sentence from Eric's presentation seems to answer my question. I would love further evaluation. Okay. The question. All performers have signed releases in every movie I have been in. Those releases allow all uses. What is in the agreement to make AI protections in the contract applicable to those waivers? The answer I got from Eric was there is a clause in there that allows producers to use what they have. Please elaborate. Uh, Martin, since you actually, you're part of that process, how do you view it? How it's legally determined I, is out of my purview. Yeah. Um, it might be better for Ron, but, um, but, Ron, but yeah, Ron, I mean, Ron, no, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. What bothers me is I'm afraid you're getting prospective protections and you're giving away the shop for every single movie which any of us have worked in. Well, here's Not the you say uh, after. Yeah, but here, here's the thing. We, we, we've delineated the project. You're only allowed to use yeah. it for that project. That's first of all. So right. if, if I do, for example, if I do Top Gun 3, okay, the producers, you know, uh, the producers can't use me in the new Alien movie. No, that's not the question. The question is past movies. Yes, understood. The second, the second part of this is uh, they uh, they're in the in, what is the fair? What, what did I just call it? The act in in uh, Sacramento. Uh, anything, any clauses like that done before two thousand twenty four, I believe, are void. So I think we're actually clearing out the back. Uh, you, I don't know if I'm right about that. You know, the lawyers can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and, and the third part is that uh, the old movies, yeah, uh, the fact is people are already scanning old movies and throwing that stuff off, off uh, online. But I saw a contract for uh, The Chosen. The Chosen, it's a big show right now. It's it's not advertised. It's one of the biggest shows on television. My, my agent, uh, I saw a contract because uh, th they wanted to do a, a mashup of a bunch of things from prior for that season. And they wanted to pay the actor. So at least on the surface, it seems like that particular team was working in good faith. Uh, whether or not anyone's going to take, you know, Marilyn Monroe's digital image and exploit it, you know, that's that's a conversation that's being had at all levels now. Uh, SAG not, doesn't have the answer. I'm not concerned about Marilyn Monroe. I'm mm -hmm. concerned about 170,000 SAG after members mm -hmm. who have signed contracts. Yes. You're me telling too. me those contracts are void. Which no, I'd not, love to hear. Not, <laughs> not, no, not the contracts are void. I didn't, I didn't mean that at all. The, the actors' contracts, uh, you know, the actors, that already happened. Uh, they have deals, and they, those deals have to be honored, and they also have to be honored. Gosh, I'm getting into contracts into CBA by the CBA, which is over a thousand pages long. So well, I'm just uh, talking about those standard yeah. waivers in every single movie. Yeah, it allows total use it sounds like that could be applied to ai I'm Eric, can, I, can i help you can i help you just a little yeah. bit okay th thank you look yeah. robert the, the, you don't want to confuse the, the the thing here when you sign a contract with a producer they are buying 
your services and your likeness for the work that for hire. And it is only for that work or the terms that are in that contract. This contract that we are, that is on the table right now is prospective. Work that is covered that was done beforehand. Uh, if you, if people wanted to take work from those things and create what is called independent digital replicas, not the employment based replicas, independent created replicas based on prior work, they still would have to come back to you to negotiate with you for those regs. They don't have them. However, this contract is not automatically going out and protecting your rights from prior to this. If your, if your work was scraped off the internet or whatever uh, place and put into somebody's GAI blender, um, there was no protection in this contract for that. There are legal protections that are in the works that have been referred to. There's a lot of legal, uh, a, a, a lot of effort to try and protect people's likenesses um, and their, their work. But this contract is a prospective, forward-looking contract. And when you talk about waivers, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. When you sign a contract, when you sign a contract, and it says that they are owning your likeness or whatever, they are talking about in terms of the deal that you've just made for that picture. And generally speaking, uh, by the way, there's there's a lot of misinformation about when you see things that say in perpetuity in the known universe for everything. That is generally to truth, truthfully a meaningless clause. It doesn't it, it doesn't do anything. You are signing over your, I, I, I see you being confused. I'm not sure how else to help you. Oh, you sound like you've never been a performer in a movie. I've been a performer Every in a movie, movie. For, 40, for 40 years, oh, Robert. I've been in this Every business for movie years. I've been in, they give me a document, which I think it has the word waiver on it. And most contracts do not have the words waiver on it. That is what I'm trying to get to you is most contracts are standard contracts. Waivers are actually things that say you are giving up your right to something. That is what a yes. waiver means. You take it. Okay. In most contracts, there are not waivers. If I don't have what, a court. They give us the waiver agreement as part of it. Regularly. Okay. Every movie. Do you, can I? I don't mean to to, to take all uses. Eric, but I mean, do you have a specific waiver you're talking about that you can? Every movie has okay. a waiver yeah. agreement. It right. says all uses. All uses meaning, all uses meaning that they are going to uh, exploit the project you're in as a theatrical movie. Then it can may be sold to television. It can be sold to DVD. It can be sold to other things. They're not going to be saying you're not up till now. You're not signing a waiver that says we're going to take your likeness and put it into other projects. It, it, there, the, you, 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 I, I'm almost I'm 99 percent sure that you have never signed a waiver on a standard contract or any of your contracts that gave up your right to be put into something else that was not delineated clearly through the through the CBA. I'm talking about background work. Background work is not used in any other uh, up. If you're talking about background work, I can tell you specifically, all right? In background work, you are only hired for that project. They have no right to use your background work if you're a union person in another project. When they say in the in the, that clause, for all, you know, in perpetuity throughout the own universe, that is a meaningless clause. It does not, they, they, they can only use it for what they're doing. Now, if you are non-union, if you're non-union, we do, they do not have the same protections that union people have. Uh, I, I, because of time, uh, Sorry, okay. uh, that's a little bit more back and forth. If, 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 so we feel comfortable. And Robert, you do have my email address. I, I, I'm willing to continue this conversation. I'll give you what I just gave you, but this explanation I'm getting from this gentleman is, it's a separate piece of paper. It's passed out to everybody. They spread it all over the place and you'd all have better sign it. Right. Well, how about this? Uh, uh, are you allowed to share one? You want to, you want to email it to me and I'll forward it to Ron. I'll make sure you communicate. I've never given a copy. They just take the waiver. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, Ron. Robert, I, I, I'm going to, listen, I'm going to give you my email. All right. And we're going to talk about this because I happen to be the chair of the National Background Actors Committee and what you are describing to me. And I'm telling you, I've been in this business for 40 years. And what you are describing to me right now in reference to background work is something I'm completely baffled by. So this is my email address. Please write it down. O-S-T-R-O-W-L-A-N-D at gmail.com. O-S-T-R-O-W-L-A-N-D at gmail.com. I'm going to make sure that you and I get an understanding of what you're talking about. And if and I will get in touch with the background department and and the contracts department, and I will get you an answer to what to to this question, because it is completely at this point in time, I'm I'm very confused about what you're trying to, to convey. And so that, that's the best thing I can do for you. Ron has made an offer to you. And I think I, you know, if you're really curious to, to find it out, take care of it. But let's not let's not hag, hash it out in this meeting. OK. OK. All right. Thank you, Ron. Um, you know, I just want to say there's someone named iPhone uh, who I think wanted to chat and uh, wanted to say something. Please text me uh, here in the chat if you did. And there are two people named iPhone, so I don't know whom to unmute. But I want to give you your opportunity. Uh, Heather, uh, you wanted to speak again. And of course, I love hearing from you. So and yeah. So, Martin, yes, we're here. Yeah. Hey, sorry. I just had a quick question for Ron about something you just said um about the GAI blender situation um I understand that you're saying like that's like a big topic right now people are trying to do a lot around that um from your perspective is there I mean we have like a huge other than voting on this contract of course to express our like feelings about GAI um do you have any advice of how to of other things that we can do like um, to express, to like make our voices be heard through like legal ways, or what do you think? First of all, I have to tell you that the, the voices of, of, of concern about this have been heard very loudly. I mean, ever, uh, uh, there, there's not a person in, that I have spoken to that is a board member or a member of the negotiating committee or staff who has not heard very loudly the concerns that are being expressed. The, the, the people that are on here are much better equipped to talk about GAI than I am. What I do know is, is that there are, um, uh, um, there, the, the, you've, you've heard suggestions for how to protect your uh, uh, image and your ability to get monetized through certain um, uh, uh, potential technologies, which, by the way, the way Eric has described it, what I've heard, and, and people should understand, um, is not, it, it, there's work that has to be done. So if anybody thought that we were going to be able to get all of that work done before completing this contract, um, that was not a realistic um, expectation from a timeline. We would have to stay out. I don't know how long it would take to do what Eric is talking about, but it sounds like it's not a matter of weeks. It's a matter of, you know, months or 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 maybe years. I don't really know. But in any case, um, what you need to understand is the way our contracts work is the majority of the times that you're going to be involved in anything is going to be in the employment-based digital replica. 90% easy of the things that are going to affect you are going to be from that. The next part is, is independently uh, uh, produced replicas, which would be something that would be using a past work, okay, that already exists. The GAI is something that I believe is, um, from what I've been hearing from these seminars and, and from what, what, I, what little I know about it, is going to make up the, the the minority of the work right now because of what is in in, in uh, what uses that they would want to have it for, and and how much it's going to to take to be done. So um, your protections right now are, uh, I I don't know you you have to be vigilant about um, uh, uh, when you are on the set and what they're asking you to use your stuff for. But I, 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 don't, I don't have a better answer for that. I'm sorry. 
Thank you. Well, it seems like we're we're out of questions, which is which is interesting. It's been a it's been a great night. I kind of want to show you guys something. It doesn't last very long, but it's something that I didn't show, and I just want you to know what's possible right now. This is something I found actually. Remington told me about it. This is Ty Sheridan's company. Uh, if if you know the actor, they've created a solution. It's not quite at 4K yet, Martin. You've seen it, right? The uh, Wonder Studio demo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is not a prototype. This isn't an idea. This is actually available now. Uh, and uh, it's, it's pretty staggering, the ability that filmmakers are gonna have over the next few years. So uh, enjoy this. You, you guys see this, right? They say all great stories start with a sense of wonder. And what if bringing those stories to life wasn't limited by our resources, but only by our imagination? Welcome to Wonder Studio, where making movies with CGI is as simple as selecting your actor and assigning a character. The system uses AI to track the actor's performance across cuts and automatically animates, lights, and composes the CG character directly into the scene. Whether it's one shot or a full sequence, Wonder Studio analyzes and captures everything from body motion, lighting, compositing, camera motion, and it even tracks the actor's facial performance. All the artist needs is a camera. Filmmaking is a medium of creativity and collaboration between artists. There's no AI that can replace that. Wonder Studio was built to empower those artists while still keeping the existing 3D process in mind. Alongside the rendered results, Wonder Studio gives you the ability to export the individual layers you need to deliver your final visual effects shot. Whether it's lighting, camera, or animation, you can maintain full control and make detailed adjustments in 3D space. From the paintbrush, to the typewriter, to the camera, tools have always been an extension of the artist, a means to help our voices be heard. With Wonder Studio, we hope the world hears yours. Now, I don't know if that's at the kind of resolution that, um, that Martin, you're used to, but I have to tell you, it looked pretty fly on my screen. And it's a product that has 28 bucks a month. And of course, you know, you're gonna spend render tokens like crazy, but if you're making a film, it's, it's I mean, Martin, how much, how much would it cost a studio to do something like that? To, do, to, do, to take one of those shots, the robot, the guy running out, running out of there and turning into a robot. I mean, it's all, it's only recently out of beta, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's definitely a technology that's um, being pushed on by major Hollywood players. Um, you know, it, it has its pluses and minuses, but um, yeah, I think it, their duration, the resolution are the big bottlenecks at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing to keep in mind, do you notice how they dragged synths over? They drag people over, they drag robots over. Well, guess what? Those are digital models. So imagine your scan. So keep in mind, uh, I personally am not as worried about the AMPTP. People go, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the independent filmmakers. I think that if they fall in line with the AMPTP, uh, hopefully they'll stay with our contracts. But it's the guy who's trying to make a little movie that, that could also be exploiting people's digital identity, even though it's a SAG signatory project. And I think we need to track it because it would be great if with consent, you were able to drive my model in there, throw my model in there, re replace it, and pay me for it. I'd take that. And that's not far away. Um, I wanna thank you, Martin. I'm so grateful to you. I'm so grateful to Remington. I'm so grateful to Jackie Barnbrook. I wanna get her on. She, uh, she's not only a dear friend, but she's a visual effects producer and she runs, as you do, Martin, entire teams of people. Uh, and she will have plenty to say on that. <sighs>
I heard one thing that I do want to say uh, that I liked. I heard this from Susan Spano, uh, who is my strike buddy, by the way, whom I deeply appreciate. Uh, what is Team Smart Actors? That was one. Um, and I got another one. Um, where is it? Ag. Oh. Team Human, the content division. And I, I, the one I actually sag after Team AI. Uh, feel free to email me. Uh, I'm going to, uh, again, it's pasoja.eric at gmail.com. Good night and God bless. Good night.